and I am ready to die defending Nigeria in whatever way. When it is God's time for us to go, it is you not my to God. You are ready to defend my <laughs> I get I'm you. Coming. <laughs> no, Please. I'm coming. What I'm saying defending Nigerians is this. I, I gave him my time and he's using it to defend me. <laughs> no, sorry. Alexi. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alexi. Alexi. This is not just about religion, ethnicity, or even who you know that's talking about um, having a godfather. How do you think we can overcome this? Thank you very much. Anybody is thinking the way you are thinking you should vote for one, as you vote for uh, Obidat Kate. He's only man can unite the country. Anything outside it, you are dividing the country the more. Write it down, Jim Tokwe. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a passing message. At 94, how many of my age are alive? But we must warn you people. You can't have a united country where you discriminate against a section of the country. If you want us to separate, let us separate in peace. You can't say we are together and you discriminate against that. Oh, people get there and discriminate. We know all the force of what we will see. All the claims that we are alleging against Obi as an evil and all that. Many of them were allegations before Obi himself was born. I am in a position to know that. But that is not the issue now. All those are things of the past. The man who can hold the country today forward in unity. Let's be there. That is running man there, fantastic fellow, intelligent, hardworking, progressive. It's not a question whether it's like or not. You look at their criteria, their category. There are not people who pay money by the lack of a government contracts. We go, we go there when we get to the election. Or oh, be the man to unite the country. Or be the man to say, you are either you are evil or outside, it doesn't matter. What is matter is that the stress of Nigeria. And if anybody listens to me, unfortunately, how many of you are remaining? The type of Nigeria that we fought for is the only bill that can carry it out and, and, and it's running mate. They can see into the future. All the past business and all that, forget it. We want to move forward. Obi's administration is not only changing the personnel, we want to change the system. We are the talking that being a governor without being a millionaire. Tim Noka, imagine what this country is. As any of those principal parties, if you are not a billionaire, how can you be a president? If you are not a billionaire, how can you be a governor? When you say somebody wants to be a governor, a graduate, well, they come up with 100 million. Even to be a counselor, those are the systems that we want to change. Those are the systems we are supporting him to change. So that it will be easy for the people, which are intelligent and all that, to become the president of this country without being a millionaire. It is for your intelligence and your ability. That's what we are fighting for. If they say they want a change of government, just tell them, we like to be polite, but shut up your mouth. Welcome to the show. My name is Rudolph Okunkwo. It's Saturday, November the 5th, 2022. Welcome to another episode of Have Your Say 247. Uh, today, our topics are many, and uh, as always, we are going to bring our audience who are already here to join us. And uh, we welcome Wayne Bassi. Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, more cafe, welcome to the show. John Abba, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Rudy. Kenny, welcome to the show. Kenny, can you hear me? Okay. Kenny is frozen. All right. So it's an interesting week in politics in Nigeria, uh, even in, in Africa. You know, looking at Africa, we noticed that um, our own Olusegun Obasanjo and the president of, uh, former president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, they all um, negotiated a peace deal in Ethiopia between the Ethiopian government and the rebels in Tigray. So that's an interesting thing that happened um, this week uh, in, up, up there in Ethiopia. In Nigeria, we have several things going on. Of course, the campaign for president is still ongoing. We have uh, some interesting developments. One of them is the K. Paramado. Uh, he is, um, his case has been moved to next year in the UK. But an uh, interesting thing is that EFCC came after him. <laughs> interesting. Uh, they came after him um, uh, this week uh, about his properties and his case, the case he had, or had with them. They are moving on to seize his uh, 40 different building houses he has in Nigeria, in America, in the UK, which is interesting. Also, we have uh, President Muhammad Buhari speaking in an interview where he said basically that nobody should be hungry in Nigeria. If you are hungry, you should go and farm. Uh, which is interesting. It raises the question, are we the present we want and the present we desire, deserve? I think there's a difference. And I think we want to talk about that because I think there's people don't really, um, whatever we do, we determine what happens. Let's let's just bring in the conversation and uh, start from the beginning. And of course, down the road, we may talk about um, about uh, the video and and the son that passed away you know maybe there's lessons there for people to learn so let me start and uh, welcome when basi when basi welcome to the show you're, you're yep. muted okay thank, thank you uh rudy um yeah. <laughs> It's, so, so uh, let's, let's start this way. This is a new okay. week, you know, okay. a new yeah. week. What, 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 start, what did you hear this week that is of interest to you? Oh, well, uh, like you said, the uh, uh, presidential campaign is uh, still in force. I yeah. think the most interesting uh, take this week was um, how uh, uh, Tinibu uh, uh, divided the uh, Afani Ferry. <laughs> the uh, Yoruba uh, 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 political group, or I, I, I think socio-political group, um, after after um, APC had, um, uh, in, in many ways, um, what's the word, um, um, uh, dismissed them. When they first came out, uh, uh, in support or endorsing Peter Obi's uh, uh, candidacy, uh, APC and Tinibu dismissed them like, "Oh, there are no, no no people. They they don't you know they don't matter." And then they mattered enough for him to go and I'm going to say it, pay the former shifting of the party to now say that it's, it's not the, the former shifting that is in fact the the leader of the uh, of the uh, group. Uh, and and got his endorsement, splitting the 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 group. Um, I, I think that was uh, a low ball, and that's how low uh, Tinibu and his uh, cohort uh, would go. You know, to grab power in Nigeria. That really uh, was a low ball for me. Okay, very good. Um, more cafe. Oh, oh, he's coming out of his car. Um, <laughs> all right. Are you are you, you want us to give you time to get settled down where you're going? Or you can talk. Uh, you are muted. Are you? Oh, sorry. Yeah, can okay, you hear good. me? Yeah, yeah let me just get you. upstairs. Just give me a few minutes, like two minutes. Uh, uh, all right, all right, all right. John Abba, you're next. Yeah. What 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 stand out for you this this um, this year? This I said this year, this week in politics. Everything. Um... 
the way we <clears throat> it's not about the leadership of nigerian but the way all of us rationalize things sometimes um we quickly come into judgment but um, when the politics of nigeria your, your president says you are hungry we go to the front come into judgment. so um, when the politics there is a it's a it's a way that uh I'm trying to tell you that we should become independent country the it's the dream of our forefathers that to become a nation issue so is you feed yourself so I mean, that is, is his word, but I don't think he mean it in a negative way, the way we may put it in the political How, what way. Does he mean, what does he mean? Explain it to us. We have, the, uh, we have what it takes to, to feed ourselves. And uh, in those days, I'm from a polygamous home. Wherever we eat in our home, we produce it in the farm. And now everybody, what is the government that will come and feed you in your house? If we are talking about no, no, no unemployment, infrastructure, and all of that, it's one thing for you. I mean, people are hungry. But, 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 Geneva, Geneva, you are from Benue, and you know that people in Benue, they go to their farms, they killed by, by. So what do you, what do you say? How could a, a president of a country where, He's aware that farmers are having difficulties getting to their farm and telling then people we, to go. Then, then that is the question we should say. How, what the federal government do to help the farmers? Then we talk about that. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, can, can I welcome to the show? Good morning, Dr. Damages. Good morning, everyone. Right. Nice to see you. Thank you. So what's, what's, uh, what are you looking at? What, what stood out for you this week? Uh, it has always been about uh, um, this guy in uh, Asorok with his careless utterances. Um, you are telling your subjects that when they are hungry, they should go to the farm. And I begin to wonder, um, how do we go to our farms when our farms are not secured? When, whenever we go to the farm, we get killed by your own people. You are people that you deliberately send out to go and massacre our people and take up their farmlands. I'm surprised to hear uh, my senior brother, John Abba, saying that uh, that wasn't in a negative way. No, it is. Very negative way. Because it's a, it's a deliberate and uh, conscious act that you will open up your mouth and say that your children that are hungry should go to the farm. Which farm? When they go to the farm, they get killed. Um, on, a, on a broader scale, um, I want Buhari to go and learn. I don't know. You know, some people can't learn. They, they will never learn. Um, if you want to provide food for your people, there are different ways of doing it. In America, for example, the government subsidizes loans. They create programs that subsidize loans that ensure crops which one have you done? You've not done any one. Recently, in a southeast, part of South Sea East and South South, um, they are witnessing a flood disaster over those uh, places. And these are the areas where the crops, you know, do come out from. These are where we have farmers, even part of Benue, in short, part of Benue Taraba are being faced with these uh, um, flood disaster as well. So which program have you set aside to help farmers in case of disaster? You have none. So Buhari has failed in every ramification. And whatever that he's doing today is deliberate. Um, just a few days ago, the minister of, uh, I don't even know what she called herself, opened up her mouth and said that the disaster in uh, Jigawa is worse than every other place. Are we comparing where the disaster affects most? We should be talking about how to help these people. They are homeless. They don't have a place to sleep. They don't have food to eat. And these are our farmers. These are the people that you know um, produce the, the, the food that we eat in that nation. You've not done anything and just see. I always get angry when I'm talking about this guy because um, to me, 
I know that it is better for me to have a dog to guide Nigeria than to have Buhari. Dog can secure Nigeria perfectly well than Buhari and his likes there. All right. So, All right. Thank you. Or, or more cafe, you are next. Unmute yourself, please. So what stood out for me? Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, depend on what part of the world you are joining us from. And thank you, um, Dr. Damages, for having me here. So what stood out for me were a couple of things. Um, like can I just uh, mentioned, uh, Mr. President talking about Nigerians going back to the farm and if they're hungry, they should go and farm. And first and foremost, if we are going to go to the farm, you would have provided everything we need that, that would make us be comfortable enough to be safe and secure enough to go to the farm. So just like everything you know that this government and this president has represented in the last um, going to eight years now is uh, I hate to say he's clueless but um, he seemed not to still know what he's about and what he's doing so that I'm not going to talk too much on and the other thing is um, this is just an aside we're going to talk to uh, we're going to get to it like you said uh, Dr. Damages um people peddling that uh, unfortunately the baby that died davido's child is alive and i begin to wonder why are nigerians like this why do you always wish against you know the unfortunate and tragic incident happened the family st the family is still trying to process and you are going about saying different things even pastors coming out and saying hey bring the child here he's gonna he's not dead blah 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 yeah that stood out for me then here in america what stood out for me is uh the guy who was 45 before says he'll probably run again and i don't know <laughs> that's something to talk about <laughs> yes i thought i thought about that topic but i um yeah. i don't i don't think we have yeah. enough time <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. well thank you thank you so yeah. much yeah. uh james welcome to the show uh yes thank you very much uh, so we're starting by getting yeah. the opinion of people what stood out for yes, them i this understand week? i understand i will yeah. just press on two little things um Buhari should find time to read uh, the wealth of nations, if he has the ability to understand the book. It's a book written by wow. Adam Smith. Mm -hmm. We live in an interdependent world. I don't need to be a farmer to feed myself. If I specialize in my area of I mean, interest, other, farmer, other people like the farmers, they specialize in their interest, we trade. And that is what is keeping the world going today. That's the economy we are running in the world today. If he has the ability to understand the book, it will be fine. However, what is of interest to me is the quarrel between Yaya Bello of Kogi State and Natasha um, Akboti um, Ugraga. It, um, I just hope we will find time to discuss the matter. It shows clearly beyond all reasonable doubt that this is the time for us to be thinking of post-Nigerian republics. The country is irreparably ruined. Nobody can repair the country. If you get to know the details of what that woman revealed to Arise News and um, um, I mean, Arise News and this popular channel, uh, Channel TV, I think Channel TV. If you get to know the details, you know that Nigeria is beyond repair. We should not find ourselves in the situation Southern Sudan is grappling with. This is a time for interest groups to work out the modalities of how the people will be governed after Nigeria's you know, final demise. So that is it. All right, thank you. Uh, Hecho, welcome to the show. Thank you, my brothers. Good morning from here. Yes, yes, last week you were on fire and i've been getting requests for someone said we should make you a subject of a show and um we are thinking about that but what's that looking at what happened in the last one week what what do you think uh what is um three things stand you... up three things okay stand okay. out mm. but before i start i want us to understand one thing 
Can you can you pour that for me, please? Okay. As I three things stand oh. out. Yeah, go ahead. And before I proceed into the three things, I want us to understand one fact: that Nigerians we are orphans. And what do I mean by that? We not get papa. We not get mama. As far as Buhari is concerned, he not dead there. He just be figurehead. So if you can't not get papa, when you not get mama, he go learn advice and way forward. When he see that, I'm more picking when you get papa, when you get mama. So Nigeria, we have to begin to see ourselves as that from this very moment. So that we, when we know that we are orphans, when I mean orphans, we are talking about the oppressed populations of Nigeria. They are orphans. I am one of them. So I see myself as an orphan, as a Nigerian. Therefore, I take my lead from countries that have leaders and I listen to them to better myself in preparation of the journey of a new Nigeria. Those of us that are glamouring for cessation as a result of the solution. That is not true. Why did I say so? All of us are the problem of Nigeria, one way or the other. So if we, human beings, because when I look at the map of Nigeria, since we don't they shout, 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 the map never changed shape. The only people when it changed, now we. Some of us when they this abroad, now we be their agent of laundry the money of when the TIFO, if they take on the front line. Some of us, now our credential that they buy house, and we there yet they blame them. So we are part of the problem. I use we, so that I would not say, I know they take myself out, nor all of us. Now I cause the problem of Nigeria. So if you want to solve the problem of Nigeria, now all of us will make up our mind. Say these things when we don't learn for this Western world, we make all of us the power for this thing, we go implement that for home. Even all of us when we day here, are we not problem ourselves? Some of us carry the baggages of our wickedness. We see bringer come here. That is why some of us, when it comes those days, now we they report our fellow brother for deportation because we know say they not get it back. So what do we do with the Indian for here? Having said that, back to the three main things I said about. Uh, Baba said me we go far. Now correct you know, even though we they take them in a negative way. Now correct him. because when I they grow up, I read for history. Of God, not pyramid for not cocoa for for west and coal from Enugu. That was what brought us to limelight. That was what made our money to be greater than the dollar. The moment we discover oh yeah, oh yeah, can't become cost to us. We can't forget all that. Everybody wants to wear white collar job. So now we're going to do the farm. Even the person when he goes to go study agriculture, he won't work for bank. So now go do the farm. And here for this Western world, when you study agriculture, everything you will do is related to agriculture. You will put that knowledge into production in the farm. Now they food they plenty all season round. So we get to go back to agriculture, whether we like it or not, if we must survive. Then I give her to my sister, Akoti, Mrs. Akoti. She be strong woman. Now those kind of women, now they, now I like, now I won't work with. So that we go let some men know, say, 
Being a woman does not make us a non-entity. In fact, those of us who get better wife, what do you people don't know is this. There is, a, there is a relationship between women and God. Whether it will happen in years to pass, if you understand your wife very well, she goes sabi. There is an instinct in her that will tell her that this, all the business you want to go into, mm -mm, all this relationship, but men not to understand. That got this she they control. But in a long run, men they only know when the thing don't happen. Some of you now when don't marry, you now understand. Now go know what you now talk. So people like Akoti, that we won't put them for those being of non-entity. But she stood her ground and she said, No, I am born for a purpose. Even though I am from Kogi and I marry outside Kogi, that does not make me a, not a Kogi daughter. So I give her kudos and she will continue to win and bring a change to his place of birth here in Kongsla. Because say she don't marry, no may say she not be Kogi. Uh -huh. Let me be told one. I don't know the three finish. Oh. Uh, I don't finish. <laughs> we'll come back to you. Don't worry. <laughs> the Blackstone, your name. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Um, good day, everybody. Um, I'm happy to be here again. Anyway, there are some, there were many things that um, uh, took my interest this week. And one of those things was uh, the the Zoom uh, broadcast of uh, Peter Obi, whereby he, he spoke with all the all the obedient people. Obedient people, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, mostly the 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 group leaders as well and so forth, right? Which which took place on Saturday. It was quite interesting and it was quite educative, and um, that was one of the very important things that um, I believe that um, took my attention, right? And um, at least for you to create time to spend about two hours answering different questions from every uh, group who are, who are you, uh, supporting him, right? And um, then expressing their opinion and everything was for me a very interesting thing that I believe is at least one of the principle of a leader, right? You listen to people, you learn from people, and then uh, try to put what uh, their views into consideration. Uh, for me, that was very interesting. The second thing about what Boris talked about, um, saying that if you are hungry, go to the farm, right? I know that these days, um, if you look around the world, the farmers are at least, let me say, in, in every nation are less than 10% of the population, right? So everybody can go to the farm because there are no land for everybody to farm. So at least we should understand one thing that Buari is just, in fact, he doesn't have that leadership quality. And uh, we, we know it's an um, accident, right? From the time he was a military leader. So he doesn't have that clue of how to rule a country, how to speak and how to give and how to be able to encourage people that is why i never made any statement even with the with the flooding right and so we should not expect any good things from him any good statement from him he can expect some good statement from his um, media advisors or media people but not directly from the president actually because um if you don't give me the paper to read i think um, it's going to mess up everything so um, we don't shouldn't expect anything good from Buhari, right apart from that yeah everything yeah that is all for now Thank All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Man of uh, prestige. Yeah, good morning, Rudolph. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's morning here, uh, probably uh, close to afternoon where you are in the east, and the afternoon or evening in Nigeria and UK. Thank you, everybody, for being on this platform. Um, there's several things that, you know, that stood up with me this um, this week, maybe three to four, but I'm going to start with Tinambu. Um one of them is the friction he has caused between the Anifa referees, thereby creating a faction. And all that has to do for, for you know, for political capital. I mean, there's no doubt about it, because um, the other guy has already retired for more than a year ago. He, ha he hasn't been the leader. Adebayo was the leader. 
but you know how to do good play his game or all for political capital you know he want to bring the guy to come out and cause friction right now now but now we have two factions so it's a well respected um social culture or uh, maybe it's not social culture maybe they call it social political so it's the political you know social political right now so it's the what he did he's doing what he does you know give us you know manipulation and everything all for political capital but that's to move for you the next thing concerned about Tulumbu too, for him going to campaign in the East, it's not because he don't, you know, he don't have a right, you know, he can campaign any part of Nigeria, but he decided, I think he's tried to make a statement, I don't know what that is, he decided to go there on Monday when they have seat at home, I don't know how prevalent the seat at home is right now, whether it has a, it's a little bit, I know it's a little bit died down, but I don't know how many people are observing it right now, they probably do, but he decided to pick Monday, going to Iman and Anambra, so, you're still reading to that. There's no doubt, you know, he's making a statement, but I don't know what kind of statement, but we, you know, we find out he's going there on Monday. Um, the third thing um, that coming to my mind this week was um, the redesigning of um, Naira. I mean, I know it happened about a week ago. So, but the part of it that is going on right now was the hoarding of Naira, you know, by the governors and everybody. So everybody's proud. I mean, about three of the governors, I think we can... But at um, the county kind of governor and some other guys, you know, they say they haul a lot of money in their book. So I don't know what's going to come out of that. I mean, in the Nigerian space, none of them, you know, I mean, has happened several times. Probably not going to come with any indictment. But the last thing I'm going to say before we proceed, there's something I notice. If I'm if I'm wrong, let people let me know. Because it seems like most of the politi politicians, because all of them, they are corrupt. There's no doubt. But it seems like the people from the South, South and Southeast, are the one being prosecuted, of course, you know, doesn't have any outcome. None of them has, has spent a, a day in prison. But it seems like most, most of them is the South South and South East. So if I'm wrong, you know, you can give me more detail about the Northerners that have been pro prosecuted to effort to balance, you know, to balance it. But it seems they pick more, you know, more of the East and the South South. So that's my opinion. So we can deliberate on some of this later. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, CM, you're next. Okay, um, good afternoon everybody from here. Good afternoon, Rudolph, and good afternoon our viewers, wherever you may be. One thing, okay, two things here actually that stood out for me this week was uh, number one, Governor Wicke's idea of uh, stomach infrastructure. You know, initially during the interview, he said he recruited uh, 50,000 people just to, to be a uh, is it a, a personal assistant to the governor at the pulling boot? We should note that personal assistant, no no office, just at the pulling boot. Now from there he doubled it to hundred thousand. Now we are talking of two hundred thousand, and he inaugurated them. You see what, what he's trying. Wait, to hold on, hold on. What what is what venue did he use to inaugurate them? What, what venue? Uh, to, at, to the, at the stadium. <laughs> 200,000, you must, <laughs> you can't inaugurate them in the room. And that's what he said. He said everybody should stand up to be inaugurated and they all stood up. He said, you are here by, you know, say, put it in your CV that you were once a, a personal assistant to the, gov to the governor of River State, but this time at the pulling booth. So, which means he's trying to checkmate um, probably the Atiku gang or whoever. So, you know, such things, it's a, you, the way, whichever way you slice it, you find out that really Nigerian, Nigerian politicians, they are, really, they are really not that disciplined. They may, they may seem enlightened if you look at it the other way, but they are not that disciplined. You see, because we can know this with raise eyebrow, he said, this is river state money, using river state money to employ river state indigents. So you can't you can fault him. That's what he's trying to say. So that really stood out for me because being, being a novel idea, I know subsequently other states will uh, adopt that method. If you want to give a job to maybe to all these talks, who knows if Tinubu is still uh, in power in Lagos, he will, this is the type of thing he will do. Tell the, tell the Agberus that you are now the uh, personal assistant to the governor at the bus stop. You know, you can say your office is at the bus stop just to make sure that, uh, you know, you are bringing returns. So such things, such things you can, anything is possible with our politicians. Then the next one is uh, the interview, the director general of P2B's campaign, Labour Party, uh, Dr. Doyo Kupe. The interview he granted uh, 
on a hard, hard copy, Channel's TV hard copy. He said a lot of things that if really Niger that man is, should be a very honest Nigerian. He said it. He said his peers, those he went to school with, called him, said, look, we don't care what you say or whatever. Tinu, we are Yoruba. Tinubu is Yoruba. I don't care about the quality. I'm voting for him. But he said he won't do that. He said because equity demands that when it is the turn of uh, the Southeast to produce a president and then uh, you are trying to say maybe to deny them. After all, they helped uh, when it was the time for the Southwest. And he said a lot of things. So that really stood out for me that a man like this is still being honest, playing honest politics, even defending without even looking back. In fact, all the logic he presented there is it's only somebody who is a diehard bigot or a tribalist that we fought it because all what he was saying is trying to tell them that, look, I'm saying, I know what is good. I'm doing this out of conviction, both moral and morally convinced that the road I'm taking is good. And then when you put the candidate in terms of merit, P2B is far, far, far ahead of the rest. So why wouldn't he support him? And then he felt that when he goes home to sleep, irrespective of the outcome, he will be happy that he played a good role to usher in somebody like that to be president. So those two things, in terms of look at week on the extreme, the way we can reasons on the extreme, just to counter Atiku effect in River State, and who knows, to put himself in the shopping window in case this 200,000, you know what it means, or there is 200,000 votes already, even before the kickoff. Then uh, look at what Do Yokupe is also saying on the on the on the other hand, being very very altruistic and then trying to tell people that look, let us leave everything, uh, may leave all that our normal uh, ethnic and the uh, religious cleavages on the wayside and then face the reality that is the merit case for P2B. That's where I, let me yield the floor for now. Thank you. All right, um, Brian, you're next. Uh, I'm told of this. Uh, can you allow me so that I'm just coming in? I don't have much to say for now. Maybe okay, okay, sure. okay, good. Okay, thank you. All right, so so let's pick one topic and then go from there. Um, I, I want us to talk about uh Buhari and the farm thing because a lot of people you can see that people have different ideas of what um what it meant and whether he was right or wrong. Um, it, it, and, and that goes to our bigger topic, which is the present that we need and the one that we deserve. Um, I think, and it's about this understanding. Most people, I think Adele Farotimi said it last week, it's about what the nation, we the people, what we want and what we desire. And, and if we don't understand that, we are not going to make the proper choice. Uh, I, I wasn't surprised that Buhari reasons this way, and nobody should be surprised that he's understanding. Now, if you don't understand, if you think that farming today, in today's world, requires everybody to carry a hoe and go out there and farm, that's how you feed your country, then you are not, you don't understand farming. Um, I studied agricultural engineering, and that, that was a long time ago, and, and we should have been in a different, uh, different era in Nigeria, not where everybody will go out there and farm. Um, that's not how you feed your, your country. And even at that, you know, the people who are farming to feed themselves, uh, they are not able to do that because of circumstances that the government has not been able to um, deal with. So let me come to you, uh, Omo Cafe, uh, in terms of uh, uh, Buhari and his statement about um, hunger. And, and it's, a, it's, it's the same thing with everything. If you think about when the issue of farmers and headsmen started, he was thinking about the old ancient um um what do you call it roots um what did he call it um, um ancient something grazing roots that was there grazing routes the, yeah grazing uh, routes yeah. during the during the um <laughs> colonial era you know, the, during lugard during lugard yeah yeah. So, yeah exactly so he has not actually uh transitioned he remained where he was and modern things are, so so that thing is important to to weigh for our, our citizens who are going to vote because they are going to make a choice again. And if you yes. choose people, I know when Jonathan was saying analog and uh, digital and analog, we were laughing, but there's truth to that. Um, if you go about and choose somebody again who is lost in the past, the thinking will not change. Go ahead. So thank you very much. Um, 
the thing, the truth about um, what uh, General Buhari said is um, the application of it is not bad. Who, who is that country or who is that nation that can feed its people or our people? So going by what he said, the thing is, you'd have to have created that wherewithal for people to be able to farm. And coming from your experience and background, Dr. Damages, I don't know if I should call you Dr. Damages here or Dr. Okoko. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> so, matter. you know, you know, you know, we're Nigerians, we like titles. Mm. So, you know, um, going from your background, agriculture and agricultural science has moved on from that analog time to this era. You know, it's so sad that we're still having to deal with, you know, um, the headsmen and all of that, moving their cattle from one part of the country to another. Why should we in the 21st century have cows on the streets of Abuja or Lagos or Enugu? Come on. We, have, we should have gone past that. Buhari says the things he says because one, he is not informed. Two, he is not educated. Three, he is not just with the times. Because if you are telling us that we should go back to the farm, it is only pertinent for you to provide for us those things that is going to make us stay in the farms and farm. Are we mechanized enough locally for us to be able to put our crops together? Do we have this, the, the requisite ho uh, animal husbandry to keep our animals healthy and all of that for us to be able to farm them, nurse them, and send it to the markets or to whoever is going to sell? We don't have all those. Right now, we are dealing with floods in and around Nigeria. And you think this is the best time for you to tell us to go back to the farm. There's a disconnect. And unfortunately, we are, we are going to see something. We are going to see a handover. I hope not. But the way it is, we are going to go from one analog kind of person to another or two other kind of analog people. The thing is, what have you done in the last eight years of your administration to sustain us, you know, to, for us to have food security and sustain us, nothing. And like you rightfully said, we all don't have to go to the farm for us to feed. If that's the case, then that means everybody here in America or in Europe are farmers. But of course we know they're not. I've, apart from any, apart from reading it in newspapers, I've not met a farmer before one-on-one -on -one here in America. But the waste in America is monumental. You understand? So until we're able to have a government in place that can truly and are willing to provide those factors that will sustain us, that will make people stay in the farms to do that farm business, we cannot go forward. We will take one step forward and 200 steps back because... The farmers, even though they want to be in the farms, they are frustrated by, you know, moving their goods from one place to another, by not having electricity, by not having the, 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 farm, uh, uh, the farm equipment to work with, by not having access to grants and loans for them to be able to purchase those things that is required for them to produce. So many things is wrong. And the only people that have access to all this bank of industry or bank of agriculture, whatever loans, are their own people. You have to know somebody who knows somebody for you to have or get grants for you to be able to do proper farming. In the whole of the middle belt, you cannot say there are 10 standard farms. And that belt, that middle belt, is supposed to be the food basket of the country. It's very arable. You understand? But they don't have it. You have peaks and pockets of farms here and there. 
and these people are either ex-generals, one former governor or one former commissioner or one former minister who has access to money to run his farm. But the greater people who need to actually be in the farms to do their jobs are not getting the requisite the requisite um, support and help they deserve. So Mr. President, coming from his uh, comfort in Asorok, telling us to go back to farm if we are hungry, doesn't understand the, the mechanisms of even being in the farm in the first place. Mm -hmm. So for right. me, yeah, that in, in closing, for me, going forward, we, are, we, we have the opportunity of, uh, uh, of changing our leaders next year. Nigerians have to demand from whoever is going to be president. What plans do you have for us to be able to sustain the farms? I will okay. end it there. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Right. So let me say that uh, we want to uh, get um, people, you know, everybody a chance to speak, uh, but we have to stagger things a little bit. So for instance, this topic, we are not going to um, let everybody weigh in on this. And I will try to modify the conversation so that it won't be repeating the same thing and as we go along. And I will say, make it less than two minutes. I don't want to use the bell at this point, you know. So can I, I know you mentioned the last time you spoke, you mentioned that um, they haven't done anything to support the pharmacists, uh, you know, if, if you're actually interested in, in people farming. They have actually done a lot. If you listen to the central bank governor, <laughs> he said that they spent trillion, not not billion, of naira to the loans they gave to farmers, and that farmers are not paying back the loans. We don't know what the central bank governor what they are doing there. They just give out money to anybody, and they are not accountable to anybody. Anyway, but he talks about trillion in loans to farmers. And remember what they, the show they put up, farm um, rice pyramid they built for us. And we don't know whether the pyramids are still there or they are gone. Nobody knows. Nobody follows up. But they put up a show that the money they gave to farmers, you know, this is the product, trillions. And the farmers are not paying back. So they have done something, maybe, whether it's on paper or not. They've spent money you know, in terms of trying to do that. But it has, it has not worked so much. And the fact that the president doesn't understand famine, modern famine, and his talk in the past. I want you to look at this because we are about to make another, another choice of another president. If Buhari had subjected himself to interviews, uh, debates, this would have come out. People would have been able to see that, oh, this guy is thinking in the old ways. I, I remember I'm looking at the comments and I'm seeing Kolata was saying that we don't have any analog, analog candidates this time. <coughs> I, I don't think so. I mean, it depends on the subject. You know, you can say that I'm okay with somebody who do not know and accept that I don't know anything about this and I'm willing to learn. But if you have someone who do not know and is talking as if he's sure of what he's talking about, like the way Buhari is talking about, it worries me. So can I take it from there? Yes, um, I think I will, I will I support, I agree with uh, Kolata. Um, but I don't really know what he meant by not having analog candidate this cycle. Um, I don't know if he's talking about this, the, the current presidential candidate or, or something else. However, it, this is what I'm- talking about the candidates we have. The yeah, I think, the, yeah, the, on, on that note, I disagree with him. We, we still have analog and I can, I can name them and give reasons why I classify them as analog. Now, um, going by what you asked me, um, I think Buhari, um, most of us have seen Buhari as someone who is not educated, who doesn't know what mechanized system of farming is, um, or modern model of uh, um, agriculture is. But I think is uh, we're having a wrong notion here. Buhari knows all these things. Just that Buhari is a wicked person with a different agenda from what we, the Niger we Nigerians, um, you know, need for ourselves. And this is why I say this. His son last time had an accident and he was flew ab um, abroad for proper medical attention, right? So um, Buhari's, um, uh, what they call it, um, um, health deteriorates every day and he always fly out to go receive proper medical attention. So does it mean that Buhari doesn't know that his Nigerian, you know, his subject deserve to have um, good um, um, hospitals deserve to also benefit from modern system of healthcare delivery. 
he knows all these things just that he, he has a different agenda now you're talking about the program that the federal uh federal government um set for you know to support in um, agriculture right um we've heard of fadama one fadama two fadama three these are the projects that was set to support farmers however we the masses are seeing it as um as, as um, uh, a kind of a subsidy from the federal government to farmers but who are the farmers who are really benefiting from these subsidies who are really benefiting from these trillions billions that federal government dole out every day now this is it <clears throat> if they claim that they have given loans to farmers and the farmers are not paying back what measure have you set to you know um control that what measure have you set to um, you know, a kind of a, a deter them from doing something time and time and time uh, without paying back. Now, this is what they are doing. They will write out this money, distribute it to themselves, come to the television and tell us the Nigerians that, oh, we've given farmers this money, we've given this, uh, farmers this subsidy. They don't give anything. Last time, the um, trader money guy was telling us that uh, um, they spent trillions or billions of naira feeding um, students. We have schools in Anambra State. We've never seen any feeding uh, um, uh, uh, program to, to any of these schools, but they are claiming that they have given it. During COVID, uh, uh, maybe we've, so, we've forgotten so soon, during COVID, the minister came out and claimed that they have given each and every Nigerian I think uh, it was 10,000 Naira or 5,000 Naira as a COVID uh, um, support or whatever. Palliative. Palliative. I have my people back home. None got that, you know, um, got that money. <clears throat> if I was in Nigeria, I don't mind. Even if it's one Naira, I would go and take it. Right? But nobody got that money. And they claim that they spend the money. So these are a cycle of criminals. They'll sit down, dole out this money, share it, share it among themselves, and come out and boldly deceive the world, claiming that they actually are helping their people when they are not. We know the truth. Just that, just like um, as the topic said, the, the president that we need versus the president that we deserve. We need a president that understands that we need a better Nigeria. We need a president that understands that we need a better standard of living. A government that understands that if we cannot be able to feed ourselves uh, uh, we can we will not be able to reason well as human beings. A president that need that understand that <clears throat> our children are dying of malaria every day, that we need to wage war against mosquito, we need to wage, wage war against bad water supply. Where we, where do we even start? There are tremendous problems that has never been treated, has never been even been discussed to be handled. Yet we always come on the they always come on the TV and tell us that they've they've handled this, they've handled that, they've fulfilled all the promises, campaign promises that they that they made to, to, to Nigerians prior to um assuming office. We know that they are lying. Just that okay. we we ourselves are not telling ourselves the truth. Look at what the Affinifers, for example, are doing, right? Um the 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 Ade Banjo. Um, uh, mm, okay, and can I can I let's now go? We we'll go to that topic. Okay, we we'll get to that. Thank you. All right, uh, James, James, let me. Uh, someone, uh, I think her name is Nick, was said something very important. He said, uh, Dr. Rudolph, I'm not a doctor anyway, but that's okay. Can we use the precious time to talk about values than uh, invalid, uh, invalid Buhari? So, so in, in trying to expand this conversation, the Minister for Education. Uh, Adamu Adamu just came out to say that he, even though he's the longest serving minister for education in Nigerian history, that he failed. So uh, this is, uh, it's, it's not very common to have a minister accept that he failed. So the question is, what, what should he do? I mean, he already failed. Shouldn't he resign? And, and connecting it to the way we expect things to happen. You know, this is the president saying this, this is the minister saying this. Are there no consequences? What do you think about, about this in terms of this minister coming out? Which is not, I don't think I've had any minister in Nigeria come out to say I failed. 
he essentially said that he felt and, and he was there for a long time he had all the chances to to make it work and and felt so what is your take what should we do to him james <laughs> yeah yeah it was a pause i didn't get what you were saying oh so oh okay Yes. No, I'm saying that the Minister for Education said that he failed. Yes. So we, we have someone finally acknowledging that, okay, okay. I, 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 I screwed up. Now, mm. now you know, if people get, uh, if people deserve the government they have chosen, but they do not always deserve what they get, but they deserve what they choose to be. This man has agreed that he failed. The normal thing is for Nigerians to tell him to step aside. Since you've agreed that you have failed, nobody is telling him to step aside. Some people are even applauding him. Oh, but this man is truthful. He told us that he has failed. Nobody has ever done it. He has done what no man has ever done. If you have failed, what are you looking for there? You just have to go. That is my solution to the problem. There's no, there's no need beating about the booth. We don't have room for failures because we have enough competent people in the country. So if you agree that you have failed, so be it. Thank you very much for admitting. Step aside. All right. Thank you. Uh, H.O. So, so the APC, one of the, the vice presidential candidates for APC, he said this week that, this is the way he put it, that in six months, they will deal with Boko Haram. In six months, they will deal with Boko Haram. They have the solution. So, do you think that um what do you think a voter should should do listening to that knowing that they, they are part of the government that is in power and they can actually pass across whatever the solution is to this government and in six months the government will deal with the the problem what, what do you think you know they can't take care of security and to nobody tell us, say, he won't follow after what Buhari don't do for grant. I may not be a campaign message with that. And so it's right to say that now. They just they tell us, say, we are coming to continue the suffering, the insecurity. Because as our mentor has done, so we are coming to do. That is simple English. But you see, Hey, all those are our yeah, yeah mothers. I call them yeah, yeah and foolish. And our yeah, yeah papa. And our idiotic youth. When see they dance, disgrace dance, they follow them. Hmm? I beg you now. For how many times they go to fool you now? They put on our children, light or lecturer, they made them go to school. Now they don't they dance, dance for them. No payment. They not give the agreement. And the same people, they give on a pin note. 2005. They make on a come, they dance, disgraceful dance. They don't have to support them. Now not be idiots. I'm sorry to use those language, oh. But for how long? I'm not surprised, though. You know why? In 2018, 2019, when I was talking to our father in heaven, say, Papa, I beg, do not allow these people that are looting our money to come into power. He now told me, it is not only your money they looted. I said, what else did they loot? He said, they looted our brain. I said, how? He said, it is only looted brain that four years ago they promised you they will do this, they will do that. They gave you two thousand grand, not all your pepper and salt and onion. You collect them, you vote for them. They take and finish. They forget you. All those things when they promise, they don't do anyone. Then they can come back in 2018, 19. They can they do the same thing. And now they collect those things and now they vote for them. He said, No, they loot their brain. I did one. I go say, Papa, I need to know how did they loot our brain? He said, All those things they give to you people that you collect, 
that they've taken it to an evil altar and they make a decree that when you people collect it from there, you will do their bid. You now ask me, my daughter, is that not what happened in 2018 and 19? Of course. And the same thing is going to happen again. So all of you that is going to vote for APC and PDP, all you they campaign for them, you are a looted brain. And go to MF and all these your Kefiri churches, and that churches. Go and deliver your brain. Then, all right. in conclusion, I do not like MF, but you do well. You do well, Baba. I give you hand for changing the color of our money. So all the people went up got that for house when they want to give during bribing and corruption of voting. By the time they don't change the color, I won't see where to I won't take money to. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah we can go. Now now I can pay stop uh, uh, civil servant. One and not repay their money. When I won't come pay their cash now. See, for some of them, not collect the money from their hand. May they pay in the normal way. Where did they pay? Now, I'm going to carry the money go back now. So that you go tell us where I'm get money from. Papa, I'm going to punish you now. I'm not going to chop the money. They're here, people. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's watch this video. Incompetent will be praising them and say that, oh, terrorism is happening. Jonathan is doing nothing. Well done, Jonathan. Are we supposed to do that? We are in opposition. Our job is to look at even good things that they are doing and say they are not doing it well. That is the job of opposition. So we have no apologies for pointing out to, uh, to Nigerians that this government is incompetent and has failed to provide security. If you say we are politicizing it, fix the problem so that we can't politicize it. Okay? Are we politicizing breathing of air? Every Nigerian can breathe air. We can't politicize it because there is no problem there. But if you fail to supply petroleum products and we say you are you are failing, you say we are politicizing it. Fix the problem so that we don't politicize it. If you say that uh, there is terrorism, we are politicizing it. Eliminate terrorism. Five years ago, nobody is talking about terrorism in Nigeria. Under Jonathan, it has become an industry. And we, we should not take advantage of their failings so that we secure the votes of Nigerians in the next elections. There must, there must be something wrong with them. We have, tried, we have made suggestions to the government on how to improve security. They have ignored it. They have set up five different committees that have given them recommendations how to address this problem of terrorism in the last three years. They have not implemented one. They are incompetent. Yes, that was um, Erofi before he got into office. You know, he had all the solutions. Today's front page news was uh, Erofi begging the federal government to deal with uh, Boko Haram and uh, bandits. All the documents that they gave to Jonathan, apparently they couldn't use it. Um, Blackstone, you're next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Yeah, what I want to say is that um, when we are outside, when we are outside the government, we seem to have every solution to the problem in the government. But when you get there, you find out that um, it's not as easy as we think. Listening to Erofi at that time, the time of Jonathan, and listening to him now, we can see that he has totally failed. He has totally failed because he could not even provide security in his own state, right? Even his party cannot even provide security. The minimal, the best security they could not provide. So this, was, this tells us that when we ask the government, we should not make too much noise. We should try and try to understand the situation that is going on. Because at that time, APC was heard some fighting Jonathan that they could not provide security, they could not fight Boko Haram, they could not do this. And everybody thought that Buhari, as a military general, has all the solution. But now we see that it's worse than Jonathan. It was it's worse than the situation at this time was more, much more worse than at that time. So we should understand one thing that 
Uh, there's a saying in my language that a house you have not been to is where you find all the riches, all the solutions. So um, I don't blame Aerofine because he has seen it that it's a total failure and there's nothing he can do. And he's building the, the, now the, the president, which I call a robot because Buhari does not do anything. It's only when you charge the battery, that's when he comes to talk. When the batteries are strung down, you don't see him, you don't hear from him. So I can he provide a solution to the insecurity in Nigeria. There's nothing they can do actually. They have no solution. They have no idea of what is going on. And going a little bit further, actually, if you look deep down, deep into the issue of the security, right? We see that there's a big cabal actually giving the support to all this. Uh, the X-Men, the Fulanin, and also and so forth within the government. Because uh, about, I think uh, it was um, late Abacha that said, no, not uh, I think Abacha said that um, if the security persists more than one week, you know that there's, there's an insider in the government that is actually sponsoring these things. And we know that is, these people have been sponsored by the people in government, but have interest in who are within the government, but nobody comes out. Uh, last time, uh, Dubai provided a list of, of, um, to, of sponsors in Nigeria. The companies and the individuals are sponsoring uh, all this insecurity, this SMA, this bandits, and who are sponsoring them. Uh, the minister agreed they received the list. He said they are going to release the list. They are going to talk, but nobody talk about it. Nothing. Until now, we don't heard anything. We don't know the people. We don't know the companies as well and so forth. So, this is Nigeria for you because since that the people involved in the insecurity who are sponsoring these um, Boko Haram, the SME as well and so forth, they know themselves and they are a part of the government. Just like as Peter will be said that you have the NIN, you register in NIN, you link to your mobile phone. So how can they be calling for ransom? You can't even trace them. So it is a total failure of the government, total failure of whatever they did. And uh, so I think um, um, the next person coming as a president should be able to, should begin now to make his own plan, his own strategy, how to fight this insecurity because i think um, it's going to persist and i pray that um, nigeria should not turn to the second afghanistan in africa thank you all right thank you so much i, I just wanted to uh, remind everybody that um on the show tomorrow 90 minutes africa we are going to speak with um major mustafa uh hamza uh, mustafa he's running for president we are going to ask him this uh, Thing that you pointed out now, um, the Blackstone, the, the statement made by Abacha about um, insecurity. Um, so if you can join us, we welcome you to um, to join us tomorrow when we talk with, with uh, Mustafa. Mm -hmm. All right, um, man of prestige, you're next. So how, how do enough. you, the, for voters now, how do they make a, a choice, you know, knowing that politicians will come out and say things when they don't have any idea how to do it, whether they can do it when they get in there? How are voters going to be able to decide who, who to vote for? Mm, um, thank you, Rudolph. Um, I'm going to start to say, it's going to be, I think it's up to Nigerians. Um, I hate to say this, but I've, long time ago and right now I've classified Nigeria as a, as a first state. No doubt about it, it's a first state because a first state is classifying where nothing is working. And that's the typical where Nigeria is as of today. I mean, Nigeria has 23 years uninterrupted democracy. What have we achieved? The only, you know, blink of hope was doing of Basan Jorogi, you know, that he tried his best. I mean, that has been the only offspring when it comes to Nigerian democracy. I mean, 23 years. But after that, everything has been disintegrating. I mean, from Jonathan up to the present regime we have right now, you know, I mean, of course, the present regime we have right now is the worst ever in my lifetime. So um, it's going to be very difficult. I mean, the question you asked, you know, um, Nigeria, you, you said something about deserve and need. I mean, that's it's kind of homogeneous, you know, they're interchangeable in that regard. 
Um, Nigeria is in a chaos situation. I don't know how they can come out of this. Talking about the people, you know, to vote and everything, they have to make that decision. They have to be wise. I mean, we in the diaphragm has to preach to them, you know, what's right. But of course, we have a lot of educated people here who are still living in the dark ages. You know, they are playing us sectionalism. I don't want to use the word tribe. You know, it's my, my own, my own, my people. You know, and we look all this kind of stuff. You know, and that's not going to help Nigeria. I mean, Nigeria needs to be educated. What is right? How democracy process is wrong? It's not about taking money. I mean, they bribe you with ten thousand today or one hundred thousand. I mean, look at the naira right now. How many days that's going to last you? I mean, that's that's part of the stomach infrastructure. You know, it's not going to last you long. So they need to work up, you know, and think about the future, you know, of the of the people. Maybe the parents too need to educate the kids about what's going on. But of course, our parents they're probably the one worse. You know, they're they're the one this stomach infrastructure is pretty much going with right now. The the younger ones maybe are because of the internet and everything, they are more informed. So it's going to be a very difficult task, even at all the president that come in. It's not going to be easy, but like you said, you know, we need a leader that's going to change the whole, and we need a shift in paradigm, no, but no doubt about it. So if you want to talk about the kind of leader we need, I mean, I mean, we need a, a we need a president who understands the people, you know, the public action, the utterance, you know, is unquestionable. So I mean, the government, you know, the kind of president we need that can reflect the mood of the nation because the mood of the nation is right now in a chaos situation. We need a leadership that is very sympathetic, patriotic, that can come and mobilize regardless of where you come from. That's what we need. It's not any kind of section where we are on Nigeria. So we definitely have to achieve one goal. So in my opinion, you know, we need a leader, you know, that has all those things that I just read. That's the only way we can move to the next level. But it's going to take a while. I mean, just um, the four years is not going to do anything, but we need a change, a paradigm shift. I mean, quick, not just something, you know. So hopefully we can, it can be a better Nigeria, but all, all we can do, do is to hope, okay? Thank you very much. Mm. All right. Thank you. Okay, CM. I have no question for you. Take it up from anywhere. Okay, yeah. I think uh, <clears throat> it's about uh, the, the president we need versus the president we deserve actually mm -hmm. somebody will somebody will always go for the president we need because with every need with every choice you make you satisfy your need but bringing it home what really do nigerians need i think or what really do they deserve they deserve whatever they get because of the voting pattern of the people sometimes i wonder if suffering that i hope let me not let me you know, decide of uh, sympathy. I think uh, 2023 election will hold a lot of promise for Nigeria insofar as uh, they decided, they've decided to elect to be. I say this because what Nigerians has, Nigeria has been a country raped by its politicians. If the people should set aside ethnicity and tribalism like uh, Doyo Kukwe preached when he was a uh, um, fielding questions on the hard copy, um, this thing with more well of uh, channels. If they should set aside the ethnicity and tribalism, they have to find that they they will realize that it doesn't pay. If you vote for somebody who is capable, your life will change. And part of the problem we have in terms of the political leadership in Nigeria is not really that the person might not. It's a means. It's, it's a common problem of looting. Somebody may what virtually worth a million naira but by the time he stays there for two three years he's talking in billions and you cannot eat you cannot eat your cake and still ask where is my cake we are talking of pipe bomb water is not there electricity is not there no good road so what do you expect where do you expect this money to come from because as we have to when we when we discuss a Kuremadu's case you find out why the aningri local government where he come where he comes from he is still as wretched as anything could be. Yet this is a chap from the only houses that America do, but everywhere you can think of, those that we know. So when you look at this, you said, is it the leadership we deserve? But that is not the leadership we need. So but it's the leadership we deserve because rightly or wrongly, we made the choice, whether by impulsion or maybe we are forced or we collected bribe to vote people in, I don't understand. So well, in, the, in the end, I only hope against hope that 
by 2023, given the level of suffering, poverty, deprivation, and then uh, everything, the people should sort of take a, um, take a stock and review the decisions they've been making since 1999. Must we continue to tow this route? Must we continue to vote the way we usually vote and expect things to change? Sometimes I wonder if Nigerians really understand what they are going into or what leadership, the leadership they are looking for is all about. But having said this, let me not be over, uh, overly optimistic because like somebody here said, I respect his opinion, James, probably it might be, it might be, it might be wise, I don't know, I may be wrong, to start uh, you know, preparing for post-Nigeria republics because we cannot continue to coexist in this type of manner. Forced marriage, yet we are not making the best out of it. The suffering is mounting by the day. A bag of rice is 45,000. Maybe today, I bet you by December 18th, you can never get it 45,000. If we put there must be something on top because we are going for Christmas. And by the time they start, and by the time they start, uh, by the time they start to change money, I know a typical Nigerian uh, behavior. By 16, 17, 18, 20, if you want to buy, they say, is it a uh, new money or old note? If you are bringing new money, maybe they will charge you the one exorbitant price. If you are bringing old note, they say, ah, you have to double it. Then petrol will tell you we are not selling until a uh, uh, new year when we have old note. You know, there are a lot of uh, schemes. There are a lot of, we sometimes, we invent hardship when there is none. We use it in our system. So if really we will continue like this and continue to lament, in which they say 2022, by the time we get to 2023 January, they say, ah, 2022 was better even. This 2023, I can't understand. Somebody will tell you that 2021 is better than 2022. 2020 was better than 2021. So uh, must we continue to live like this? If, 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 uh, if, it's, if, it's, if we can afford, if we can afford it, let, us, let our politicians take the, uh, take the lead. They prepare for post nigerian republics because the suffering, I don't see any way out unless they vote P2B. And from the look of things, the way the, the, way the impending rigging is going to pan out, this should be advanced already if you can use tribalism to scare people away and gain vote and sort of you, can, you, know, you control your area. If you can't use that, you intimidate INEC. If you can't intimidate INEC, you know, you just run a predict that uh, there will be mayhem just to scare people, scare mongering. So, must we continue living life like this? Definitely no. Something must have to give. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Let's, let's listen to this uh, video. Um. But I will try to be simple. Power generation is not rocket science. It's just <laughs> generator. So, just remember and imagine that your I better pass my neighbor in one million times its capacity, but in one place. So if you can make that size of one kilowatt, you can make a power turbine of 1,000 megawatts. That's that simple. All right. That was uh, Fashala before he became minister for power. And he quickly found out it wasn't, it was, it was, uh, Nuclear, nuclear science. All right, uh, Jonaba, there's a question here from uh, Jude Okocha. He said, what prevents the governor of Benue State to articulate serious policies to boost um, farming in his state? So we, you know, we complain about Buhari and the federal government. Um, in your state, Benue State, you have a governor, you have the fertile land, you have, um, what do you say to someone like Jude Okocha? What prevents your governor from... I know you don't like the governor, but just I'm just throwing you an easy question. <laughs> um, it's easy to answer. Whatever prevents mm. Nigerians from not moving forward is the same principalities and power that will bend it. But in the not then the serious note, um, we all can say things here because of talk is cheap. Uh, politics of Nigeria or any other place are very difficult. The people you are leading have to be willing for the change. Uh, the reason why we can't get those people we uh, we need in power is that those people are so disciplined that they will allow to be corrupt by the system. 
And once you cannot do that, you can't gain access to the power before you make any changes. Uh, for instance, a lot of waste, uh, uh, oranges, uh, mangoes, uh, uh, yam, that could have process that will reach millions of Nigeria. Uh, when it terms of the farming, how do we preserve food uh, instead of just in rotting on the road, carrying uh, raw orange, raw mangoes, guava, uh, yam, they get rotting because we don't have a good way to preserve it. And these are the things that we all lack. And it is all because of no enforcement, no uh, punishment for even uh, taking bribe. For instance, I have a person that left this uh, US thinking that what he have learned here or what he have uh, uh, learned from here, he would take it back home. And they deny him common, uh, he has to bribe and bribe and bribe and bribe and bribe and he couldn't afford it. And he came back to the US because the NAVDAC, is that they call it NAVDAC, I think, couldn't give him the uh, the the certificate to use to to process this uh, uh, raw material. So these are the problem we have, and we can talk about Buhari, talk about the governors and all of that. Uh, it's not going to change anything in Nigeria. If you like, let Jesus Christ walk on the street in Nigeria, where we are, where there is no consequences for those that have a bad behavior. And we also in abroad, we are no different from the people back home. The only difference is that we we are we cannot do what we do back home because the law will catch up with us. We end up in prison, then and then we don't want to do that. So the notion that uh, we think Nigeria will be a better Nigeria under any leadership without the judiciary system in place, so that people have to face the consequences of their wrongdoing rather than being worshipped, rather than being bowed to. And to my beloved sister that says that uh, uh, Father told uh, uh, we pray to the Father, he told him, uh, I don't think he didn't have to, Father need to tell us that uh, we don't need to go that far to know that we are bankrupt already. And even in, if you go to the, to God right now, he's still going to tell you the same story he told you in you know, uh, 2018, that we are not going anywhere. So good luck to all of us. I pray that um, one day, uh, it's a long walk to freedom, but hopefully one day as we all put our mouth to it, we tell ourselves the truth. Where is the beginning? Because we are not, where do we start from? Nigerian problem? Is it from the judiciary system? Is it the mentality of ordinary Nigerians on the road? Is it in the church? Is it in the mosque? Is it in our town square? Uh, and what is the message that we carrying across? The normal message that my parents told me that do unto others, do unto others you want to be done to you? Or is this sentiment a tribal sentiment or political funny talking point and destroy us and divide us and control us? Or are we going to hold this system accountable? And how do we hold accountable? When you cannot walk on the street with a nice phone today in Nigeria, except you are a son of a billionaire that they are afraid of you. I cannot send a good phone to my own younger brother in Nigeria because the police will go after them or FCC will go after them. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, John Abba, thank you so much. Uh, you're a pastor. You should give us hope. But it sounds as if you are... Uh... You don't have any solution. Okay, uh, Rohan, you're next. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. and the panelists. See, this is what Janaba causes. He just brought down the spirit of Rohan. Rohan was about to be. Fired. Oh, there is hope. Not my pastor, Abba. You there see? is hope. I guess there is hope. Our you problem. See? We have so many problems, surmountable problems. If not religious, tribal. If it is not your man that is there, the other man will castigate. If it is the other man that is there, the other man will castigate. Where are we heading to in this country? 
where we say we don't even want to partake in politics. The crooks have taken over the political arena. Ordinary man can't go and buy form to contest. If you have the good heart to do something good, like uh, John Harbour just said, you can't because you, you don't have the resources to go in there. And you, don't, you, you wouldn't want to behave like, like them. And if you don't want to behave like them, they've taken the atmosphere. Now they've selected uh, what we call it, the presidential candidates. We don't have choice. They gave all these candidates. So what do we do? We are just like a beggars in our own country. If you, if, oh my goodness. Let me just start from uh, Ogawike, Mr. Uh, Stomach Infrastructure. Now you can see that this is the attitude of our politicians. They cannot take outside the box for the masses, but they can do that for themselves. These are some, these are the things that they should have established earlier when they came in power, but they are doing it when it is time for election. Virtually, that is the attitude across the country. Some of the did say, okay, we want to employ uh, youth now. The server is open. Use it for political gains. So how do you want the mentality of the citizens to look like? Of course, it will tilt to another direction. And as long as, uh, uh, for the time frame that is left for them to come for the next uh, round of elections, their mentality have already changed. Their manner, their attitude have already changed. It's also been in a crookish way. If they have the opportunity, they might even do worse than what these people are doing. The only difference is that maybe their thoughts, like the way we are here in the diaspora, we have different ways, creative ways of uh, trying to ameliorate things. But if we are not much, how can you network to improve? Because all these crooks are everywhere. Well, the issue of, uh, I don't know what's, how our politicians think. If you want to establish, for example, let me still go back to John Abba. If you want to build a factory for the processing of uh, mangoes, uh, uh, oranges, and what have you, they can spend billions because they think that, oh, it's just a very orange. Why can you process? Why will you process orange for billions? You can just cut them, slice them, and, and take them. But one, creating industry uh, 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 infrastructures that will stand the test of time, will be able to generate a lot of money for a very long time. It will also be able to create a job opportunity for people. It will be able to raise uh, our standard of living, and so so many other things. But we don't do that. I don't know what's going on. Well, I don't have much to say now. I will, I will use the floor to allow others to make their contributions. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rohan. Uh, blessing, welcome to the show. Good evening, Doc. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. After Blessing, we are going to have um, a rant. So you prepare for your rant. Uh, blessing. How is, um, where are you in Nigeria? I'm in Enugu now. Enugu, okay. So what are people talking about today in Enugu? What do they care about? What's going on? Basically, everybody's focused on the Naira redesign. So I think there's a lot of There's a lot of misinformation to start with. I, I think I've encountered like two people who told me that uh, they are printing 5,000 Naira notes. I don't know where they got that from. They said it's one video like that. I'm like, anybody can do video now. I said, hey, I thought they are bringing 5,000 Naira notes. I said, where did you hear this one from? Don't you people watch news? Don't you? So aside from that, there's a lot of, I, aside the, the you know, uh, the Naira has, it's now up to 900 naira. It's 900 per dollar now in some black yes. market. So we are really feeling the crunch here. It's it's that bad. 
it's 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 really bad. People are beginning to do panic buying, small small panic buying. And if it's this Bu bad, buying, man, I don't buying know. what? What are, what are they buying? Food stuff. Food stock. There's a lot of panic buying now. Things are just going crazy, and they have. The, I think everybody is trying to get rid of as much cash as they can. Yeah, they are trying to get rid of as much cash as they can, and basically a lot of misinformation about the whole exercise. I think um, whoever is in charge needs to do more. Somebody even told me that it is this November that they are bringing the new currency. I said, ah, "Is in December now? Fifteenth of December." I don't know. I, I can only speak to the ones I can speak to. There's generally a lot of misinformation concerning the whole thing. Mm. So are you afraid that one of the things I think will happen is that sometime next year, people will start rejecting the old Naira, even though <laughs> the time frame has not come. You know, They will say essentially that this money might be stuck in my hands. So I won't take the old Naira. Well, knowing our people the way they are, as soon as they see the new notes, nobody's going to collect the old notes again. And that is my fear. We're going to have a lot of stampede at the banks because once the new notes are introduced, most people, especially these market women, this mama, them inside market, they will not agree to collect it. They will not agree. They will start rejecting the old notes and it will, it, it will make people desperate to get rid of the old notes they have. A lot of things could go wrong. That's my major worry. I wish there was more time to phase it out gradually. There okay. would have been better. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, we are going to do the round, but let me. Someone said that he was at Peter B's uh, event on Saturday. Who was that? Black Sunny? Was that you or Man of Prestige? Yeah, it, um, it was me. I was at the event, that, uh, but I watched the video from um, Voice TV and have a full length video. Okay, so what, what was your impression? Someone who watched it told me that he looked tired. Um, from my impression, one thing I see from him is that um, he has to try to answer the questions very well, right? And uh, sometimes um, the people doesn't finish their question before he jump in to give answers. So, and um, also about the the party, it doesn't know so much of what is going on within the party, within the Labour Party, right? That's why there are so many questions we are asking about the organization, like um, the support groups, you know, trying to get some information. Like, for example, one of the support group accounts have been, have been blocked, uh, so they have their account in um, in Sky Bank, or something the like Keystone that. Keystone Bank. Yeah, Keystone Bank and the, the account have been blocked, right? And then, um, and the bank refunded all the donor, the the money back to, to, to the to the donors, right? And it's like that. So he doesn't even know what he said. He heard it from the news, and they heard it actually, but he doesn't know what to do about it, and it's like that. So there's so many questions from the support group, right? What they are doing and uh, what they need, and so on and so forth. But he could not provide answers. But say we, uh, those questions, we pass it down to the to the party leaders and they should respond to them and uh, try to find a solution but i think and um, from what i see from the um from that um uh interaction labor parties have to do a lot they have a lot to do right they have I'd, let me say they're not even started actually that's the truth they still have a lot to do because um they have not been able to cover most part of Oh, they are not able to cover most of the interior part of Nigeria. The support group are not being even like some of the support are not even being known by the party, and then um, so they don't have a, a central um, uh, network means of communication. You do not know who to talk to in the party. They want they have issues. They have questions. They don't know who to, who to contact. Because if you go to the even Labour Party website, you don't even see an email address, you don't see who to contact, as well and so forth. You have, you have a general email address for contact, you know, but you should be able to have a, a platform whereby can be able to, everybody who's working with them can be able to channel their, their problem towards that platform and the party um, officials or the, the PCC, the uh, the campaign group and everybody can be able to pick up these issues. And uh, actually, the 
the support groups, they, they are quite, they are very enthusiastic, they are very willing to do even without getting money and so, so on and so forth. But I don't, the party is not doing enough actually. So they still need to do a lot. That's from okay. my that's observation from that um, interaction. Okay. All yeah. right. Thank you. Yeah, sir. let me add a little to what uh, Mr. Okay, Blatt can I, said. Did, did, you, did you watch it, can I? Yes, I watched the program and uh, okay. I was happy that uh, some of us from this panel are part of the uh, support group. So I'm happy seeing um, those people. I'm not calling out names. So, but this is what I, I this is my thoughts, right? You know, um, when the ob um, obedient movement started, um, it was made public. The youths were, you know, um, kind of were on the street, you know, identifying with P2B. And I think that was when INEC, because as whether you like it or not, INEC and the uh, incumbent uh, government are working together. And that was when INEC now started re-strategizing on how to rig the election. And that was why today in the Southeast, um, more than 40% of the registered voters were annulled. They kind of, I don't know the, the right time to use for that. They they canceled the um, voters' uh, registration, more than 40% from the Southeast, because I think INEC found out that, oh, um, the support base um, for P2B are mostly from the Southeast. So they kind of trying to use that as a strategy. But this is what I understood um, concerning um, P2B's fatigue. I think he uh, wasn't about fatigue. It, he was alone. He was taking down questions, writing down, trying to answer one after the other. So he wasn't really tired. I, I watched the program and um, for me, the program shouldn't be made public. It's a, it's a meeting for um, uh, between the principal and the support groups trying to strategize on how to win the election or how to campaign for the um, for the um, election. So, is it something that should be that shouldn't be in public? That is my understanding. It shouldn't be in public, but they made it public. So I don't know because you are making this public and you are enemies or you are. Um, um, open it, uh, strategizing, mm -hmm. you know, trying to find mm -hmm. another way to attack you. Um, like mm -hmm. what he said, um, most of Nigerian banks are really, I don't know if they are scared of Buhari or they are working for Buhari and APC. Um, they are closing down the banks, the bank account of the, of the support groups. Right, and yeah. one bank that was mentioned there is Key, Keystone Bank. And I don't see, I don't know why banks should be getting involved in politics. So, um, yeah, to me, it shouldn't be public. According to, according to them, said that they had um, a letter from from from, from, from uh, at least the upper room, you know. Yes. That 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 are and, 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 and that's part of their um, yes. um, strategy to go against P two B and APC party. So, um, all right, know, they shouldn't be public, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thank you. I think that meeting should not be public, actually, like you said, you know, but, you know, some of these uh, other um, platform on you know, YouTube who, who were part of it, they just recorded it and then throw it into the, play, you know, throw it into the open. All right. And, All right. Let's, let's, let's do the rants and, and so that we can let new people join us, you know, people to come in and uh, we can discuss other topics like the video, Aquarium Mado and so many others. So let's start with Techo. One minute, everybody, for the rant. Number, you go first. number one, it breaks my heart when we look so hopeless and helpless. With all the knowledge, with all the understanding we've gotten. And as a social worker, we have solution. The first thing is for us to identify our problem and be able to appro approach all these problems from a holistic approach. So a situation we look hopeless, then what do the people at home do? We are supposed to be their strength and their hope. But when we now talk hopelessly, it just sad in my heart. Just because we are sitting and we are eating, nothing is happening to us. We think it doesn't matter. Let us wake up and take back our destiny. Then two. I like them as they change the money. I go so get account number for and I'm go charity. 
charitable organization. Make them drop all their money when they're not fit spent for them. We go use that they build facility for all the children when they're put for sleep by force by fire. Now, yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. all right. Thank you so much. That's uh, that's a good one from uh, HO. James, you're next. One minute. Rant. You have to mute yourself, James. James, you cannot mute yourself, no? Oh, you have nothing to rant about. Go ahead. No, no, okay. You may continue. Don't worry. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, where do I go? Uh, the Blackstone. Go ahead. One minute. Okay. Um, I want to say something about the the proposed the change of the of the currency, the new design of the currency. For me, why this as anxiety, the problem now is um, going on because I, to my own understanding, or to, for what I think, I think um, the governor of Central Bank made a very big mistake. It is right, it's okay to change the currency, but I don't think it is was right for you to put it in, in, into the public domain to come out and announce that they have to redesign the currency because many countries do change their currency they don't announce it nobody knows about it you know it comes in they begin to withdraw the old ones out of the circulation and begin to bring in the, the new ones you know i wish he did it like that all these issues would not have been there all these issues would not have been there so everybody would not understand what is happening you know all right thank you blackson man of prestige you're next thank you um everybody has has spoken pro, you know in the area we're going to speak you know the nara design you know but i'm gonna I'm deviate from there i'm gonna speak about um, political correct corrective you know correctiveness um I'm, I'm here to debunk a little bit about um Bolatinumbu, Saga City, or you know, credential like people make it to be like he's all that intelligent. And I'm here telling everybody, I mean, he may be intelligent, you know, but all those people claiming that he's all that, you know, when it comes to Astute or Saga City, you know, no, he's not all that, you know, he may have come to Nigeria and use the country the way he wants. I mean, he went to, for crying out loud, this man went to Chicago State University. I mean, I'm talking about a school, the average, the, the average graduation rate is 17.6. Go look at it. So it's not even a high class school to begin with. In the Midwest, the school rank 126 out of, I think 126 out of 116. So it's a very, very low class. Anybody from Nigeria can obtain a first degree. So don't let people fool you. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, I'm, I don't have anything against him, but I'm, I'm just against people here professing that he's all that class too. No, he's not. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. I, I like that statistic. I didn't know that um, it's 17% graduation yeah. rates in that school. That's a good point to, to look at. Um, CM, you're next. <clears throat> well, my own rant is to bring home the novel idea of uh, Governor Wicke's uh, stomach infrastructure. You know, using 200,000, <laughs> using 200,000 youths to be the, uh, what is it called? <laughs> um, a personal assistant to the governor at the pulling booth. People are not taking note of that at the pulling. So their office is at the pulling booth. So, eh, so what that, what he's trying to tell you is that, and he's saying uh, people are still even asking him that they can't do the job alone. It's too much. They need more people. You may, you may end up appointing up to a million between and February. All he knows is that every pulling booth will be one by three because that is your office. The most important thing is he will pay them. And like he said, he will use river state money to pay river state people. What is wrong in that? So, so, so EFCC should not trouble him. <laughs> Very good point. Um, so did you hear that someone someone was saying that why he's doing this is to show that um, that he kept some money to run for president, and there, there's a lot of money out there, and he needed to dispose of them because they are cash, and he can't carry them back to the bank. So. So he's hiring people now to give them the no. money. Anyway, he's, we don't know. <laughs> he's also willing to tell Atiku. He's to, he's to tell Atiku that, look, now, now who is who? You know, he says, we shall know who is who. Mm -hmm. So that, mm. that's what...
Uh, all right, Janaba, you are next. One minute. Oh, one minute for me now. Okay, let's let's roll. Um, there yeah. is no more if to round. The, uh, if we run to leave the platform, then my question. This is not taken out of my tongue. <laughs> I said it long ago. Okay, let me. No, reset I'm it. asking one, you a question. Uh, no, I'm asking oh, you okay. answer my question. If you <laughs> write, once, 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 no, no, you don't. Uh, yeah, want people to leave, so that new people will come in. You know, we encourage people to leave. You know, new somebody should run people. at the end of the show. So this is not out of my own time. So you have to let them know that I want you to run. So if you can excuse other, but me, I'm a voice of the northern, so I don't think I should leave if I want to stay. <laughs> It's not a big marginalized. Rohan, Rohan is a northern. You are from uh, Benway State. You brother, are, you are I, grow, I, make, I, I grow up. My ask my children here now. I ask my uh, my daughter, where do you come from? He say I'm from America. I say where do your father come from? He say from Nigeria. So you are American and your father is in Nigeria. So I'm I'm from Medogri. Okay. All right. Okay. Rant. One minute. Rant now, oh, the, madam. Oh, 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 you are done. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> I had no idea. Okay, Rohan, you're next. <laughs> Rohan, you're next. Okay, I have nothing to rant about now. I just only pray that Nigeria will be better than what we have at the moment. Mm. Okay, that's that's good. That's good. Blessing, you're next. Well. I just want to say this um that um businesses should learn how, how um where to draw the line and who their allegiance should be to is it to the government of the day or to the greater populace who are their customers. This is not the first time we see the government using um the banks to frustrate efforts at holding them accountable. They did it during NSAS. And now they are doing it now that people are trying to raise money for a campaign. I just want to say, you are doing your business, no wahala. But know that the government you are siding against the people will leave. And what if your customers decide to also leave you after you must have frustrated their effort just because you want to please the government of the day? They should choose their fights carefully. That's just what I want to say. Very good. I like the structure of that. I think the impunity of, of certain things they do in Nigeria is getting out of hand. And mm -hmm. that more good charitable organization will be taking a class suit against most of this bank on behalf of our people. Thank you. Wow. Is, okay. Sorry, is, I wanted to ask, can everybody confirm to me, is it even legal for them to refund the monies to these donors? That is why are, we will they, be are they permitted to, be, to do that kind of we thing? We will be taking a class suit against them because it is against the constitutional right of the people. So let's go. This has gone on for far too long. long. It's just disappointing. Very disappointing. We do something. Bless it. Okay. Okay. Very disappointing. I hope they are customers. Right. I, I wish I had an account in Keystone. I would have boycotted them. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Kenny, you're next. Okay. Ranting, right? So yeah. um, we overheard uh, Erofai making claims that he has the template or he knows how to get rid of uh, 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 terrorism. Um, Buhari made the same claim during the campaign that um, he literally said, what is terrorism that he can, that they can, they, that the government can get rid of in two days. Now, I want to tell Buhari and Erofai that they have um, a different agenda and that agenda i call it uh, double dealing so the agenda is to um make sure that fulani takes over the north and even the south in short that fulani takes over nigeria that is their primary agenda and that is why they will never provide solution to this terrorism activity in nigeria now come to uh, first subsidy these people, they know the solution to our problem. Let us, let us stop deceiving ourselves that these people are clueless. They are not clueless. They know what they are doing. If they are able to build refineries in Nigeria, then the subsidy stuff will be uh, end of story. So there will not be any means for them to embezzle money. They cannot build good roads because they want you to be dying every day. They want, they want to be getting contracts for road construction all the time. They will never build uh, provide electricity supply because when they do that, 
you will be informed there will be television right in the village we are old men old men the illiterate will listen and know what is happening so they don't want you to be informed they don't want you to enjoy the same luxury that their own children are enjoying they cannot put a strong electoral laws because they want rigging to continue they want after the election um agree uh, candidates who appeal and then the lawyers the barristers will be um, um uh, bribed then the case will continue this is exactly how they design or how they want nigeria to function so that they will be yeah, they will keep you know um um making their pocket fat you know fattening their their, their bank account all the time so they know what they're doing they know the solution but they will never if you are looking at them to, if you are waiting for them to provide solution you are just wasting your time and that is why you have to come out now with all sincerity and support peter b so that all this nonsense will come to an end all right thank you thank you so much uh for the rant uh i will we'll take a small break uh i want to play a video of uh two people from zambia talking about their own issues in Zambia, which is similar to what we do here. And I think it's uh, an eye-opener that we're not alone. It's, this is an African-wide issue. Why we do that, I also plead with some of our guests. Maybe you can join us in another one hour or two. Let's bring in new people who are interested in joining us. All right, so let me play this video. We'll be right back. Corruption this, corruption that, corruption there, corruption here, corruption, what about it? Show me corruption and I'll show you the culprits. Yes, they're corrupt, but who do they corrupt? Yes, they're corrupt, but who corrupts them? Well, corruption is not only practiced by the politicians and the businessmen. Ah, well. It is also the culture of almost every Zambian. In fact, on behalf of all the youths, whom our elders claim to be the future leaders of our country, it's time to take a radical approach towards the transformation of all Zambians in order to deal with this pandemic called corruption. It is important for every Zambian to understand that we cannot take this country to the next level until we make a deliberate decision to destroy all the corrupt and anti-progressive practices in our various fields of work. We call upon each and every one of us to run an introspection about our daily lives. How many of us can be comfortable and transparent enough to disclose the source of our success? Mm -hmm. How did you win that contract? How did you get that job? How did you acquire your driver's license? How did you get that promotion? How did you get those high grades at college? And how do you always find yourself at the front of every long queue? Every successful corruption practitioner started their grooming from somewhere. The home, the church, the mosque, the community, the college, the school, the NGOs. So to claim that government is corrupt, it is proof of how corrupt the citizens are. Yes, the leadership of the country is the reflection of the people. Meaning that if you want to know how corrupt a leadership is, just take a look at what the citizens are doing. Yes, take a look at yourself also. You, you, Yes, you. You are probably contributing to the destruction of Mother Zambia. So beat it. Beat it. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Take a look at yourself and your contribution. Welcome back to this third hour. We're getting into the third hour of our show. And we want to uh, welcome new people on the show. I, I thought there'll be more people that we give room for, <laughs> for new people to join us. Um, all right, uh, who are the new people here? Welcome, um, Dr. Deep, welcome to the show. Mike, welcome to the show. We wanted to make room for new people to join us. And uh, there are people who are interested in joining mm -hmm. us. And I'm, I'm seeing, <laughs> we can also, I mean, you guys can come back, you know, um, in the next hour and, and we'll continue the conversation. Um, CM, you can stay because I want CM to, um, I have to 
take a break, I think, in a, a short while to talk to our guest for tomorrow. So when, when the guest comes on uh, on another studio, CM, I want you to anchor the show while I talk to him and I'll come back. Um, yeah, welcome, uh, Dr. Deep. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Damages. I don't know if my uh, microphone is fine today. Yeah, it's fine today. Uh, Mike, Mike, welcome to the show. Welcome, Dr. Um, thank you, Dr. And, and, and Des, mm -hmm. welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Dr. Damages. Thank yeah, you, Dr. I see you are, you are driving. Are you okay? We don't pay for accident insurance. We don't have insurance and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> All right. So, so for this this segment, I want us to start with uh, Equaramado, the plight of Ike Equaramado. There, there was a change uh, this week. One of the things that changed was that they moved the case to, I think, sometime next year. I think it was something like May. I'm not sure the exact date. Yeah, May next year. May, so May. it looks like he will be locked up until May, which is <laughs> must be difficult. At this point, it's difficult for a former senator. Um, I mean... <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I'm not laughing at him, but it's, it's something that, and, and to make the situation worse for him, even his uh, government is, is he not in APC now? Where is he? What party is he now? Did he move or not? Anyway, um, the, <laughs> his friends could not, his friends in senators who went to uh, UK to go and, um, and support him. They are basically watching as uh, the Nigerian government, the EFCC, is moving on to seize his um, houses, 40 of them. Um, so, CM, let me start with you. What do you think is going on? Uh, well, um, you see, the, you know, the Eparamadu case is, uh, anyway, 10 houses are in Abuja, federal capital. Three houses in the U.S. Maybe Jonaba may know. I think some in Texas. You may find out. <laughs> two, two, two in the U.K. Yes, no, yeah. Uh, I'm being honest. Two in the U.K. I will take no. I will take care of that to see locate it where it may be and feedback. One in Lagos. Who is in Lagos here? Then nine in Dubai. Blessing should look after the fifteen in any. <laughs> should be able to. Since you are in Enugu, you should find out. You see, when you add all this up, it gives 40 houses. And there's a particular street in Enugu. Blessing should be able to know that. It says it's uh, off Portacourt uh, at Independence Layout. One of the longest streets in Enugu is called the Kekweremada Avenue. Sorry, I know uh, his house in Enugu. When I when I heard it mentioned in the properties, I hold. Uh -huh. So, so you see this. You see the way these people secure their future. If not that, the daughter needed a kidney transplant in UK, and then a sort of putting a, a sort of a temporary, you know, um, a hitches. Otherwise, he's in the. He want to contest the Enugu state governorship in 2023. He must have maybe if he sell one in Texas, and then maybe sell another one in two in Dubai. He should be able to cover the cost. Then when he goes in, he will get another one. You see, though, the, though we, are, we are laughing, but this is the tragedy of <clears throat> the Nigerian political system. These are thieves. There is no, there is no two way to say it. And this reminds me of one broadcast Nan De Kanu made. At the, uh, when, uh, I think in 2018, when uh, Kweremad was beaten somewhere in, New, in Nuremberg, Germany, in which uh, he ran for his dear life. So they were accusing the th indigenous people of Biafra of masterminding it. Now they kind of came on air to say that he's lucky. He's going to do a New Year festival in, uh, in in Germany. When that was the Saturday, they are burying a priest that was kidnapped and killed by bandits in a Kweremadu senatorial district. So now they kind of said, before people should blame IPOB, they should ask a Kweremadu the money that was appropriated for Enugu Portacote Expressway and then Enugu on the Expressway, they should ask Ekweremado where the money is. So when something like this are panning out, you may be putting two and two together as if maybe you don't know. But in all said and done, how can a politician tell me, as at 1999, Ekweremado was nobody. 
he quickly became a senator, maybe the part budget for constituency project. If you go to his local government, Enugu West, I mean local government Aningri, his village Impu, there is no good health care facility there. Yet, by my rough estimate, all these houses will be running into billions of naira. So if we the way you are looking at him, he's already a billionaire. He can be richer than anything. That's why Peter B is saying wealth without enterprise. Ekweremadi is a billionaire, not because he had industry, not because he's been in business like uh, Ibeto, or maybe, um, uh, what is it called? Maybe Dangote, at least. Let's just say Dangote is not a politician. He's in business. You can see his trailer carrying load here and there, even if it's for a whatever. So Ekweremadi is already a billionaire by sitting in an air-conditioned air office in Abuja, as simple as that. These are thieves. Let's just get it clear. These are tips. That's why he wants to finance to become a governor. And when he becomes a governor, God help Enugu State. He will start from where Chimaro came to and stopped. So, in a way, I'm not, I don't have any sympathy for him as a human being. I do not. Because the people of his constituency are suffering. Yet, you are acquiring all these houses. Nine in Dubai. What are you going to do with nine houses in Dubai? Fifteen in Enugu alone. Ten in Abuja. Three in the United States. What are you doing with all this? Two in UK here where I am, and then one in Lagos. And Lagos cannot be a Jebule. It might be somewhere in Lekki or somewhere in Ikoi. This is this what you see. This is just reckless abandon. Owning properties everywhere. When you are a thief and you say you are representing your people. So I don't see the reason why people should be venerating politicians or gallanting them anymore. Because Equiremadu's case has shown that. All they go there to do is to pra practice, according to Dino Melai, gridocracy. Greed. Just be stealing money, accumulating, accumulating, packing all these things. But your community that sent you there, you give them 2,000 or 5,500 5, naira and suffer them for nothing. So all these things, I don't have any... In fact, EFCC should go... Should, when they recover this money, they should, because it's a senator representing Enugu West, they should call the people of Enugu West, not just not even calling them. If it's to give them a, a befitting hospital that will cost about 10 billion to build, because they could we this all these things we are checking here should be more than 10 billion. It amount like 10 billion and build a nice hospital in, in about two or three local governments in Enugu West. That will be more beneficial. Build a modern market for them. That will be more, more beneficial. Renovate the primary schools so that. The primary schools you will see in Enugu West will be similar to the one you see in the UK. That is the type of thing the people will benefit. But living a Kweremad with all this money, I don't see the need because if eventually he passes away, who knows? Uh, he's not a head of state. They may not repatriate anything. And mind you, this is a property. We are not talking of cash that he must have lodged somewhere. We are not talking of the dollar. The, uh, the pound, because he will have an account in the UK, he will have an account in the US, he will have an account in Dubai, because he cannot be carrying money each time he's going. He will have an account where again, in, in, everywhere, anywhere you can think of. So when you add everything, I'm sure that his total worth as a human being, a Kuremada cannot be less than 50 billion naira human being. 50, it might, it might, it might be up to 100, because you don't know the extent, but definitely it will be this much, and these are the money belonging to his constituency. So I urge the federal government, if they are listening, seize all these things, auction them, use the money, and if you keep they can go there to use it to develop the area, what he failed to do, people will now see that at least they are benefiting. Because all this money belongs to them. A Kuremadi is just another thief. If they call a, right. what is it? If they call an Ninia a thief, that is, that is the one that is a practitioner. But a Kuremadi is a disguised thief in a human skin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I will go to um, Blessing because because uh, she's staying at Equarimado's uh, hometown uh, of Enugu. So, <laughs> Blessing, do, do, this story, does it, um, is it something that people are talking about in, in your... It's not new in, to us. Almost in every Enugu indigenous knows that the man has crazy properties inside Enugu town. And I'm talking about choice areas in Enugu choice areas, not anyhow areas. So it's not news. The N one is not really news to us. It's the one in Dubai that is busting my head. Nine properties in Dubai. And Dubai properties, from what I've been reading, do not come cheap. What is he doing with it? 
heart. Uh, it's not useful to most of us here. But the problem I have is, Doc, I don't know if you remember when he was arrested in the UK. And I said I do not feel any ounce of sympathy from him, for him. I'm from the same local government as he is. And I do not feel a single sympathy for Koremado. Anybody that you hear singing his praise from my side is benefiting from him directly. The rest have nothing good to say about the man. And even the so-called EK or her foundation that they always flaunt, they be like, eh, boy, he's empowering people. People have, ooh, I have not met a single person that has been a beneficiary of the EK or her foundation. If anybody knows anybody, let them point me to the person. So who are those who have been, who, what has he been doing with the money all this while? The Enugu Portacot Expressway is a death trap. On my way to, I'll send you the video, on my way to Benin, we got stuck in the middle inside the muddy water and we had this huge fuel tanker drive right by and brushed our bus. All of us inside the bus had to dismantle and I was just cursing every single politician from my side. That road is like it's like it's a, it's, it's like their money bag. I cannot recall how many times in the last few years parts of it has been constructed and reconstructed. What they do is they take a portion of it, plaster it because I won't I won't call that tarring road. Plaster it, do whatever they want, and then close off the other side. So you are forced to use one lane. And then that lane goes bad entirely and you are forced to use another lane. So that one goes bad. So what they do is they alternate. They open up this lane. Everybody uses it. It goes bad. They close it. They, they'll close it off and start working on it. Everybody starts using the other one. They never walk the two lanes at the same time. And this is a man, and this is a man somebody wants me to pay for. I was glad that he's missing three milestones. I was telling my friend that it's God no wonder for he's missing three milestones. They are going to design the, redesign the Naira. All the money he stashed somewhere is going to go to waste because he cannot trust his cronies enough to tell them where the major ones are hidden because he can't trust people that fully. They are the ones that he needs to remember himself. He can't trust people to go into those secret, secret places and remove the money because they can use it against him. So he's going to miss the redesigning of the Naira and he's going to make a huge hit because don't think all the stashed money will come out. He's going to miss the election, which we have interfered with, because we know he'll be rooting for uh, Oga Dubai bomb shot man. And he's going to miss the swearing in. I, for one, I am very happy. It's a common sentiment here. The only people that are sad on his behalf are people who are directly for him. The whole properties in Enugu is not new to, new to us, but the rest, uh, it is news to my ears, especially that Dubai one. All right, thank you, Blessing. Neka, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you, everyone. Um, I just want to piggyback in what uh, Blessing said, because I myself, when Ekoremado's case came out, I did not feel any sympathy for him at all. But one thing that I've always echoed in this platform whenever I come in, is that each and every one of us as a human being must look at ourselves. And the video you just played from the uh, Zambian, uh, um, Uganda, am I right? Z Namibia. Nam 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 Namibia, Namibia, Zambia. Okay. Yeah, yeah, one of them. I yeah. think those two young ladies just took the words out of my mouth, of which, if you go back to from the moment that I joined this, your platform, I've always echoed that. We each must look at ourselves in any capacity that we're in because corruption is not just the leaders. You can't just vote somebody because maybe that person is your uncle. You can't vote somebody because the person is your brother. If your brother is not doing the right thing, do not employ them. As far as I'm concerned, I have one son in this world. If he is not doing the right thing as a good citizen, he knows. I personally will not vote him. Not, not, neither will I campaign for him. And I think all of us as a human being, because I just put in the chat, I said some of these politicians, when they come to United States, when they come abroad, is it not the same all of us here? 
that will clap for them. Pick them up at the airport. Bring them into a party and stand up and clap for them. What are we doing? What are we doing? We always need to look at ourselves. Because if we continue to jar them up, we are also committing the same crime, period. And my, own, my whole prayer is that it doesn't matter if we are in the diaspora or wherever we are. We need to look at people, look at the history, obtain data about them, and then vote for them and also support them. We can't be saying that Obi doesn't have a structure. Well, why don't we just bring up our own structure and add to what he has and stop criticizing him because he's not the person who destroyed Nigeria. And I really want, I, I want us to support the right person and stop saying that, or oh, maybe he didn't speak well, or maybe he's tired. Who wouldn't be tired for crying out loud? He's not the only one. I believe that each and every one of us, whether we are in diaspora, whether we are in Nigeria, we need to bring something good to the table and give our full support to see that Nigeria will rise up again. And I really, I really disapprove when people come to this platform every time and keep spewing out negativity all the time. Nigeria will never be good. Nigeria is dead. Well, then it's like me saying that my father's house is dead. So then what option do I have to contribute to Nigeria not being dead? We cannot lose hope. We have to so Neka, Neka, Neka let, me, let me ask you, um, what is using your knowledge of Eastern religion and belief and uh, the kind of um, life people from the Eastern part of the world live, what is responsible for this um, desire by our people, because it's not only uh, Ike Kwaramada that we're talking about. If you go to all the past Senate presidents, all the past governors, you may find out that they all have houses everywhere in Dubai, in America, in London, in, you know, they acquire property the same way, you know. So what, what is responsible for this? Why, why do we have this um, desire to have 40 houses? What, what is going on? What, what don't we get? Rudolph, thank you for asking me that question. But again, you of all people will remember that every time I come on this platform, I've always said humanistic principle. And what I, and one time you asked me to explain it further. And what I'm trying to explain to people is that you we again we all need to look into ourselves. If I have opted to serve the country, I need to then serve the country. And don't just go there to enrich my pocket. As if I'm a senate person, if I'm on the platform to do something for the public, I will make sure I've taken a vow that this is what I'm going to do. And I will make sure that I will do it. Not just people uh, being afraid of me, like I, I have power that other people don't have. All of us are human beings. And so when you say to me, what is making them? It boils down to people not really getting into their fundamental human revolution. We need to look into our fundamental human revolution. We don't just acquire a position. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professor in a university and I teach students. My ultimate uh, motive is that the students are going to do well. Whenever I see, a, whenever I come into the classroom, the very first thing that I say to students is that everybody has a potential to do well. Nobody is a dummy. Everybody has a potential to do well. And you need to bring something to the table. And so by saying that to them, I'm trying to say to them, nobody was created in this world to be a failure. At the same time, nobody is created to be just the leader. We all have something to contribute. And please, let's not be fooled. Oh, you cannot do this. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And so for me, bringing it back to what you just asked me, I don't have to go to uh, a platform or a, a leadership position 
and then begin to acquire this, acquire that. Because at the end of my life, I don't know where all the things are going to be. So why do we care for so much material thing? And then I watch somebody else suffering. Like again, as I said, I teach. Sometimes students, I tutor them even on my off day. And I don't care whether I get paid or I don't get paid. Because what I'm looking for from my students is that I pass on the baton to them. Let them do better. I'm not going to be in this position forever. And if we all have such a mindset, we are going to see things begin to change. All I'm asking everybody that comes on this platform, they complain, they complain, they complain. So then what is the solution? What is the solution? Nigeria cannot be dead. I've all, I'm not, there was another thing that I said, the lotus flower grows from the mud. Okay, Nigeria is in the pit but we can rise again. We can. And we all have to have that faith and walk towards that vision that Nigeria will be good. By supporting mm. the right person, we need to support the right person. Again, all the people that have been jeering this Equator model with all his travel and everything that he was doing. So what are they now saying to me? You know? And all these houses in uh, Dubai, we have to kiss it goodbye because the Emirates, they're going to kiss it anyway. They're going to seize it. And so we're going to lose that chunk of money. So that's basically what I have to say. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nick. Rudy, uh, Rudy I got to go. Yeah. Uh, okay. John Abba, the only reason yeah. I'm coming to you is that... Um, when Ike Kormad was first arrested over these um, the, the houses, he he got freed um, on bail. And you know what he did next? He brought 40 pastors, bishops, prophets, people like you. And they came to his house and they prayed for him. And after the prayers, EFCC backed off until now when he's um, in trouble again in the UK. So... I want you to speak from the perspective of pastors who were praying for him um, so that the problem would go away. And for a short time, he went away until he got in trouble in the UK. Go ahead, Janaba. Uh, first and foremost, that's why I'm on your show. If I'm that type of pastor, I will not be here. I think I should be in a... <laughs> I wish... <laughs> so... <laughs> Stop laughing, CM. So that's why I'm on your show. If I'm that type of pastor, I won't be here. Uh, we also enjoy the luxury. And apart from that, there are many politicians and many other people that have, have used to run business with, but I choose not to do that for my own clean conscience as best as I can. So I I don't know. The people do whatever they can do for their own personal uh uh personal for personal for, for their own personal gain so mm. i can't speak to the pastor that went there uh, it is the only way you lodge nigeria and you colonize their mind is to tell them in the name of spirituality or god said because if you think now like i said to ho on your show i said you don't have to pray for god to tell you that nigeria we are suffering like that so the same thing I can say, you do not have to close your eyes to see Nigerian problem, nor to pray and open your eyes and see it. But like I said, I'm on your show because I am not that type of pastor. But I'll soon leave you to go and prepare a message for tomorrow anyway. Uh, so uh, then come before I leave now, uh, let, me t let me speak to some, some of those things. Somebody criticizing you, like Erufai said in his past, I'm going to leave now, so let me give it. Erufai was right then. It's left for the other politicians now to use it against the, the present uh, 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 government or the outgoing government that you two do not secure like you promised the security of Nigeria and you have made Nigeria more poorer, whatever they can criticize, that is policy. So Erufai was right on point when he criticized the outgoing government. When it comes to this issue of um, uh, why do people should not give a chance to somebody or if you are that principled and you think that 
where the direction Nigerian is going, and somebody say Nigerian, nobody said there is no hope for Nigeria. And that let's make it that clear. I never hear anybody say there is no hope. We only express the hopelessness based on the leadership and what the structure we have in place. But Jesus died. They acknowledge his death for three days, according to the Christianity. So for you not to accept the situation of the failure of Nigeria where it is now, it's a denier. You are living in a denier. Nigeria we have right now, nothing is working. So if we say that and we speak directly to the current situation of Nigeria, it's not a hopelessness issue. It's about we are finding, we are looking for a solution. When, who, and where do we start from? then we can talk but for us not to criticize the situation where millions of our nigerian citizens are suffering dying on the road on the on the road a bad road dying for hunger joblessness of of millions of nigerian youth graduated from university and we said nigerian is working then we are living in it's a denier but what we want nigerians are saying is that where do we start from from. Is it the judiciary system that is not holding people accountable, that people are doing whatever they want to do? Okay, equal matter if it's in Nigeria, it will be saluted, it will be welcomed, you will be protected by the most powerful security in the world. This thing is happening because they arrested him, or for political in uh, where he has political affiliation, whether if you are APC, your sins are forgiven, and if it uh, if it's APC is in power, and if you are PDP, your sins are forgiven if it's PDP in power. That is not the way to go. That is what we are speaking to. We are speaking to system that everybody is known of it, and we are saying that as far as this thing is in place, there is no hope for anyone even if you bring jesus jesus christ the millions of the eastern and the western and go to church every day did they come and become different all those people they go to mosque or they go to church so those uh, holistic uh, uh, approach to it will make it better uh, to, be, uh, but more, to be more honest i'm a pastor but then uh, science is more real you see so we are seeing the failures of our leadership and we cannot speak to it that you are saying it's hopelessness i think we must rise above being a thin skin and become tough and accept our fault i fail in all, many areas in my life i'm not going to justify it that oh okay i'm not a failure if you criticize me of my wife or so my wife my co-partner my loved one like rudolf now we cut me off because he think i'm not speaking good english doesn't mean that it's, he hates me. It, that is his own view. And I should respect it. CM can greet me in the afternoon while he's sitting in the London in the evening. God bless you all. Thank you. thank you so much. You have a way of okay. going out everywhere. All right. I appreciate your time. Um, you Emma, welcome to the show. All right. Emma, welcome to the show. Can you unmute yourself? Emma, we can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? Oh, no. The audio is not very clear. It's not loud. Do you have earpiece or you're speaking directly to the computer? Where are you, Emma? Okay, we'll come back to you, Emma. We'll come back to you in a few. Let, let's go to Dr. Deep. Dr. Deep, welcome to the show. Emma, you are still, your audio is not good yet. Um, maybe you can you can leave and join us again. Is that it, Doctor Deep? Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, uh, Doctor Danaji. Like I said, I'm using a another phone. Uh, uh, you know, my second phone. In case my voice is not clear, just let me know. Uh, then I will. Okay. will not be yeah, it's clear here. today. We can hear. We can hear okay. you today. Um, okay. So. Where do you want me to take it from? What do you want me to say? Where do you have to listen? Uh, Equaramado, Equaramado, um, Equaramado, and, and your take on, on what he's going through. Okay. Uh, Equaramado, as a matter of fact, just one out of a million of arm robbers and criminals that we have in Nigeria. Uh, if and uh, the little property that has been publicized, that, that is what he has. It's just one tenth of what we have because this is what the one they saw. 
nobody uh, we should be talking about what about the ones that he must have uh, registered with the brothers, the daughters, the sisters, the uncles' names all over the world. And uh, his case is, is just to tell you how many, if you times how many senators and the honorables, the so called honorables we have in Nigeria, presidents and governors, uh, and times exactly what the very one they have seen. Imagine that each and every one of them have the same thing. You will know that we are just. We are in a in a very big hole that Nigerians don't know when they will come out of this hole, because the evil has been allowed for a long time to to to, uh, to lead Nigerian Nigeria as a country, and people are copying or emulating from bad leadership, bad behavior, bad character. Uh, to be honest with you, I I. Uh, 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 there are things you do in Nigeria that you, you want to do as a person who lives in the Western world. And people will begin to run around you and be telling you, why are you doing it for free? Why not? Uh, you know, they will push you until you, you, you abandon doing it for free and begin to do it for recognition. You know, so we, we, our problem is so wide that when we look at it, now that a, a, a Premado is case is there. Somebody should be asking all the while that he has been deputy senate president, senator and whatever why we are they unable to uh, uh, unfold these problems? Why did they allow him to end up in UK before they, they came for him? And then the answer will be very simple. The answer will be like why is it that it's only a butcher that has looted our money and our, and uh, he did it in uh, his land in New York, in London and all the rest of them. Why is it only a butcher? Uh -huh. Because Abacha is there. As soon as our IBB goes now, they will begin to tell you the ones he has been he has hidden. As soon as Abu uh, Salam Abu Abaka or Abasanjo goes, you begin to hear his own. So we have living thieves, living thieves in Nigeria, handling our affairs. And once in a while, the thieves will bring out one of uh, one of their enemy, and then we we'll begin to celebrate that person. Oh, that uh, or say things against that person. He's a thief. He's a rogue. He's this. He's that. These people have 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 turned our common wealth to their personal pocket and in, and and their family affair. So, if Emadu's case is 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 just one out of out of a million, and then when a CFCC is going against him now, sometimes that is why we say that one Nigeria is difficult to build. Uh -huh. People will come up with, I don't blame people who will say it. Why is a Premado, uh, uh, or even uh, what do you call it, even a uh, uh, week, whom all of us have heard that there are three governors. Sorry, I'm deviating, Dr. Damage. I'm just trying to, you know, make my point to look, you know, uh, easier. Why is, is it that they bring in like a, 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 a governor, um, governor of River State, that is among those that they have seen stack money and whatever, whatever. All the whole governors in Nigeria, they all have trailer loads and wells where they have built to dock this their naira that they are ready to share, and they share it day in, day out. You know? And then, when once they do certain things, they will bring out somebody from one part of the, the country, and then we, we will begin to talk. Uh -huh. If you come to people who are too corrupt, we, we know that the most corrupt people in Nigeria are from the north that have been in power for all these years. They have been looting this country to death. We have, and they have trained cronies in Southeast uh, here that are joining them, doing the same thing. But they are very few in the, in, in, in the Southeast, more than they are in the North. But once in a while, look at Gandhi, the dollar man, with all the money he, he hid in his uh, Babaliga, he today nobody talks about it. So we are just in a mess. The Primados, whichever property they have seen, it's a shame the property will go like somebody, I don't know if blessing or somebody is saying that the one in Dubai will be gone. Of course it will be gone. A few minutes before I joined your program, I was watching a video somebody sent to me how Dubai and all the cities, the citizens of Dubai, how they, when they are born, how much they are given. Everything is free. Land is free. School is free. University is free. Treatment in a hospital in Dubai that cannot handle your illness and they, they fly you to New York or to England. That one is free. You go there, you come back free. If you carry Nigerian money, 200 billion US dollars to go and invest in Dubai, you cannot get this, this uh, exemption, this amenity, because you are always a foreigner. And coupled with, you are a black. Those people in Dubai, they see you as a slave, no matter how much money you have. 
you are still a black. You cannot float the way you float in Nigeria. So these people has killed us. What about the one I think I think I back had in Dubai? Uh, his buildings was shown all over in Dubai. Estates, all of them are competing. The few, these are few properties they just exposed in Dubai. If a matter has more than that in Dubai, he has more than that. Like blessing, he say you go to his local government, you will see anything. I happen to have been trapped in his local government last time I went to Nigeria, where the, I I I, I shot out the vehicle and they went there to dump me. You go there, you will look like a monkey because the environment is not like very very dirty environment that he could not be able to build even. I don't know. I don't know. It's very, very disheartening. All right. So, All right. Thank you know, you. Let, Thank them, you. Let, let them go ahead and get the other criminals. Those that are prosecuting them are criminals as well. They are holding Nigerians in a, on, on, on their neck and we can breathe. Thank you, uh, Dr. Right. Uh, David. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Deep. Uh, Mike, welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. Yeah, Mike, welcome to the show. Where are you joining us from? I'm, I'm calling from New York. New, New York. I thought you were somewhere far away, and I was being, I didn't know you're in New York. All right, so uh, you've, been, you've been following the conversation. Yes, I've been following the conversation. I, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, what do you think? My just problem is a whole lot. Like, also, it's a whole lot, including us as well. And the most annoying thing about Nigerians are just their term memory, you know? And our greedy and selfish leaders. When I mean short term memory, I, I, it baffles me that when something, something huge, something drastic, something something that we shouldn't even forget when it happens we nigerians have this ability to just forget everybody here i know everybody here or maybe five percent of us when they kidnap the yeah your connection is not very good uh mike i don't know and you're, you're in new york uh, i think Hold on, I'm I'm a okay, i yeah, may yeah. have to report it to the governor okay go ahead yeah Okay, it was on the table, so probably it was echoing. Okay, okay, good. So what I say, like, um, um, our short-term memory in Nigeria, uh, everybody can remember when they kidnapped the Chibok girls, right? Everybody here posted back our girls. Even celebrities in different countries, uh, Michelle Obama, everybody posted. And that's something we shouldn't forget, right? But somehow, Nigerians, we just forgot. And the governor of that state, who let the girls get kidnapped is a vice president to be. And everybody is like, Tinubu is a kingmaker. If Tinubu is a kingmaker, right, and he's such a good kingmaker, can, can Tinubu tell me that the millions of Northerners who are educated, who are qualified, that Shetima is the only person who can be his vice president? And this same Shatima is the same person who stood on the podium a couple of days ago and criticized um, Obi and Atiku. And I wonder what type of performance, because he was criticizing Obi's performance as a governor. And this guy should be one of the worst governors in the whole world. Because the world remembered when he let security down and he kidnapped his girls. Or should we forget the fact that he's any time we talk about Boko Haram, he's always been pointed. And now this is our vice president to be. For Eparimado and the rest of the Nigerian politicians, what's happening to them is called karma. You know? You've been in for you've been in a, a place of power for so long, and the necessary things your your fellow Nigerians you should implement or bring into the country. You understand? You don't do it. And then all of a sudden now you're in need of a kidney transplant. If if these people had foresight, you know, they will, they, will, they, they will give us the best medical facilities in Nigeria. They will pay our medical doctors. They will pay people who also, they won't be such a brain drain in Nigeria. If they had foresight, if they could see the future, if there are pastors that come and pray in their houses, could do alpha for them and tell them, ah, listen, in the future, your daughter might need this. 
these people will build the best hospitals everywhere. Tinubu is built Lagos. Tinubu is so wonderful, but Tinubu has never received healthcare in Lagos. He flies out with your money, the state's money, he flies out, goes to the best hospitals everywhere, gets treatment, and then when he's speaking um, of people and telling you, don't, don't call Funke Akinde, Funke's name, that he's just an aunt, you people are dancing and praising him. And the funny thing that most people dancing in that group haven't been paid their six month salary. But they just come there, eat, drink Martina, forget about their sorrows, jump up and dance. They say if you push a goat to the wall or anything, like even like anything, you push anything to the wall, they will react. How much close to the wall should they push Nigerians before we react? The country is flooded. When I mean flooded, like some people just go about their day like as if it doesn't even exist. Half of the country is flooded. And it's not just flooded, it's still there. It's not even receding. You have dead bodies floating from the um, sea. Sewage is all filled up. And nobody's even talking about like, oh, when this water recedes, the medical, like, um, the medical fatality we're gonna, we're gonna have, because there's gonna be an outbreak of cholera, there's gonna be tons of stuff, and nobody's speaking about it. And how close should we push Nigerians, or these politicians push Nigerians, that they come out and say, listen, it's enough. We don't want this. We don't want a governor who won't care for us. We don't want a president who won't care for us. And we just forget. Tomorrow, they're going to make skits, post it on Instagram. They're going to go to parties. And then that's it. And then I was in a life the other day. A medical doctor was saying some things. And I said to him, like, if that's where we all come in. If we all love that country so much as we think we do, we should, we should be on a flight back home to go fight for that country. You know what I'm saying? Look at Ukraine. When they started the war, most Ukrainians in every part of the world quit their jobs and went to go fight for their country. You understand? Like I said, we love Nigeria, but we don't love Nigeria so much. Like some of us here now, if you ask somebody to buy a flight ticket now to go to Nigeria, they will say, ah, how, far, how far for kidnapping ransom money? Buying a flight ticket is not a problem. You got to buy a flight ticket. You got to buy a ransom. You got to keep your ransom money. And then you got to keep your ransom money to outbid the baba. You know, when they kidnap you, you have to ask the kidnappers, are you a body part kidnapper or are you just a regular kidnapper? So you know how you be, how you outbid the baba that wants your head or your private part. You understand? So Nigeria is just, it's mind blowing, you know, how at this time and this age of suffering that we've gone through, that we still need to convince some individuals, hey, listen, we have three prominent people, vote this person or don't vote this person. You're an adult. You understand? If if you wouldn't let a former criminal or for someone who has siphoned the state's money to work in your company, why do you want him to lead the whole people? You understand? So mm. my first problem is just like we just forget. That's the thing. I think we have short-term memory. We forget a lot. And most Nigerians don't know any other form of governance. You understand? Okay, Mike. Mike, thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, when I come back to you, I'll, I'll have some follow-up questions for you. But let's let's welcome Adeni, who just joined us. I think he's in a car. Adeni, welcome to the show. Yeah. Th thank you very much. I I traveled. I'm just driving back into Abuja, so I said, let me join up. And, okay, uh, you are from so, where are you driving to Abuja? From uh, Kaduna. So the road is, is 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 safe, or because you are uh, an officer, you, you it's, it's not. Uh, it's just that one. If you are lucky, on the day that you are driving, you will not get an issue. But if you are unlucky, you drive into the hands of uh, the bandits. So everything in Nigeria now is locked. So no, those bandits, is, they, don't, this, they don't care. They attack anybody. Yeah. If you drive, in, if you drive so, into them. You know, people like us who are abroad, like Mike, just um, make yeah. statements. And um, sometimes we know we don't forget that people don't have options. You know, sometimes mm. you don't have options. 
because a typical person that came from uh, outside the country might say, I won't drive from Kaduna to Abuja because it's dangerous. But when you don't have option, you have to go to where you need to go. And, and people will take that step. Yeah. You just put right. your life in the hands of God. That's just it. You can drive successfully without any issue. At times you drive and drive into the hands of the, of, of the, of the bandits. So mm. it's, uh, it's in the hands of God. That's mm. where I look at it. Yeah. All right. So uh, we've been talking about several issues. I don't know if you followed us. Um, we, we talked about, um, we started with Buhari, uh, telling Nigerians to go back to the farm. We talked about Kweramado and uh, EFCC that is after his uh, 40 houses. Uh, you can take it from anywhere. What, uh, what is your concern today? What's going on in, in the country? What, what is in the news that you had? Yes, the issue of going to the farm. You see, I don't know why we are not really talking with, uh, we are not talking objectively. Like you people in the United States, I, go, I got to, 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 to do some uh, research work. The percentage of farmers in the United States today, they are less than 2%. two percent. But if you come to Nigeria, the percentage of farmers to the populace is more than 50%. With that, we are not producing much compared to what you people do in the United States. You see, farming is a profession. You cannot force everybody to go and farm. For example, a medical doctor now that I've gone to hospital to work from morning till night, then maybe the next day is off, that is supposed to rest and all this. You have, we want him to go to farm and still go and uh, be stressing himself. Or somebody like a, a civil servant that has worked from morning till evening, that's supposed to rest in the evening and go to work the next day, will go to farm again and be working. You don't treat people like that. There are some prof uh, people who want farming as a profession. And there are some people who have gone to school to learn agriculture. Those are the people we should identify and empower them to do the farming and produce food in large quantity for others who are not interested in farming. You cannot force people to go and farm. It's a profession that, like me, like a military man like me now, I've gone to, to, to do my job, train soldiers in the bush and everything. I will see go again and go and farm. It, you know, it, it's, it's absurd. It's, it's laughable. That is that about that. But I don't know. It's only in Nigeria that we talk about things like that. In other places, you, you, you provide for the professionals who want to go into farming. That's all. The other one about... Uh, yeah, what do you talk about again? I think about uh, Ike uh, Kuramado and the FCC. Ike Kuramado. Yes, and the FCC. Well, I don't have sympathy for any politician in Nigeria. Those who have been in power since 1999, I don't have any sympathy for them because they are just opportunists. They've come, they have seen the loopholes in the system, and they have gone to benefit from it. Instead of fighting to block those loopholes, so that Nigeria will be the one benefiting. They, they, they exploited the loopholes and they, 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 they benefited. And now, Kama is coming. I just pray that all of them will be in that shoes later. They should all be probed and all the properties they've acquired illegally to be recovered. Nigerians are suffering from all these things that they have benefited. That's why I took time to come up with that constitution that I came up with. To, 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 to limit the powers of all these politicians and then create room for the country to benefit, not just few individuals who are opportunists. They will go out there, read the election, come into office, and then the next thing, they are trying to recoup all the money they spend through election. They, they, they get more than that. They buy property, things that government supposed to do for the people. They will stop it from government uh, institutions and be the one to render service to people. In the process, they abuse the office, they, they make money out of it. All of them have contractors who they use to, 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 to do the job, that job is supposed to be done by Minister of Works. So all these things are, 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 are the things that the country is bleeding from. And if we don't change it, we will just be deceiving ourselves that we are looking for the right person to come and lead Nigeria. I, I, I'm, I, I, I see that, in fact, People like uh, Obi that want to go and do the right thing if they come to power. 
he will not succeed. He cannot succeed because the system has been doomed to fail. He will just go there and at the end of the day, he will continue to lament that he wants to do this, want to do this, but the governors that will be under him, they will not listen to him because governors are not under him. They will tell him that they are independent. So if he wants education now to be carried out freely in Nigeria, if governor can say, no, this is where I want the education to be done in my state, there's nothing he can do. If you talk of health care, the governor will say, no, this is how I want it in my state, and there's nothing he can do. The only thing he can do is, has to do with anything that has to do with national uh, assets and maybe federal roads, federal hospitals and the rest. But all the other ones that have to do with basic amenities for the people. There's nothing the president can do about it. So unless we change this system that is is corrupt, that is uh, killing the country, any any attempt that we want to do to change the individuals, we are just making mistakes. That's my, 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 my position and my contribution to all this uh, uh, change that is going on in Nigeria. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adeni. Uh, Des, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Dr. Damages. Um, I, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead. What? I'm gonna go make ahead. it go ahead. short because uh, kind of busy. So you know about the Corambado, Um It's it's kind of uh, I have to imagine like someone like someone like a Coromado that on a low key we don't even know he's that. He's that, you know, he has that much asset on a low key. You know, nobody's talking about him, hasn't so mu too much money. If you're not comparing it to some people that we know, like Tinibu or Atiku, you can now imagine the sense of, you know, how much these people has, has drained Nigeria. You can now imagine it coming from that perspective, you know, when you're when you're talking about Jagaba, when you're talking about Atik, when you're talking about all these all these rich people, political people that you know that are actually rich, you know, compared to a Koremado, that's when you begin to you know realize that we are we are fucked when it comes when it comes to Nigerian system. We are really fucked. And politicians don't care about us. They really don't. I'll I'll show I'll show you an example of a politician in Nigeria. Just like, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have probably experienced this, you know, going to Nigeria. You're, you're on the road and you're on traffic. You know, there's a, a crazy traffic, just like uh, last December when I was uh, going towards that Enugu, Enugu road that Blessing talked about. There was crazy traffic. I mean, I was there for like almost three hours, you know. So what happened, what you see is a lot of siren, you know, coming from behind, police, you know, politicians that are trying to pass through the road, you know, clearing the road just to make the way for themselves. You know, once they make the way for themselves, they don't care about the road. You know, that is the, that is the example, a perfect example of Nigerian political system. They don't care about the people. Once they leave that, you know, blocked road, the road is blocked, whatever the people does is their business. So it's, it's basically what we are trying to change, you know. It's basically what we are trying to clamor for when it comes to supporting P2B. Let's change all this scenario that, you know, politicians are just using us to, to play games. You know, we are, like, we are like the pawns in the chess. And it doesn't make sense. You know, how can someone have so much properties and we don't even know? What we are talking about is, is a poor man. And, and at this point, at this point, I don't know if... Um, United people, United people in United Kingdom, I beg, tell us so if United Kingdom, Kingdom is now corrupt, because I don't know how this, this case is taking so long. Let them in, let them get him somewhere, I don't know, send, sentence him to some jail, I don't fucking care. You know, it's becoming, it's, it's taking too long. With I'm, I always think that it's, it's a Nigerian system that all this, you know, prolonging court case happens, but now it's, I'm like, what's going on? Let them, let them get him inside the prison and let's know that he's there let, let him spend spend some years there so he will realize that all he's been doing has been fucked up um uh, that's just what i have to say dr damages i don't have much all right thank you so much i appreciate that uh can i uh okay the mic i think we had from you let me hear from kenny and then we change topic to that video on thank his, you uh, his son. go ahead kenny about uh ek for mother right yeah. Road that, road that I'm, I'm not um, talking. Oh, uh, in as much, okay, sorry. Yeah, in as much as I don't really 
support the activities of our Igbo politicians, the likes of Ike Poromado, who has been there in the seat of power. All they know how to do best is to embezzle money, to steal money and invest for themselves and for their children. Um, I really am one person that don't support them and I would never do. However, in this very case now, uh, we all know that uh, this is a kind of a wish hunt against the Southeastern politicians. Um, recently, we saw what happened to Agavlev of Imo State, um, where EFCC invaded the house of uh, um, Rosha's Akorosha um, because, um, because of maybe where he's coming from. And today um, is the turn of uh, Ike Kuramado. Uh, but a uh, few months ago, the governor of Zamfara State, um, he FCC brought up his case, and the case has died down. Nobody is saying anything about that. Um, um, what's his name? Ganduja of Kano State. We all saw when the guy was playing with dollars, and Ganduja has never been question, uh, questioned, maybe because he's still the governor of uh, the state. Um, the likes of uh, the owner of Mikano, Atiku, um, nobody's saying anything about his case. So basically, the northern politicians are free to do whatever they want to do, steal the, steal the, the, the country to stupor, and no EFCC will knock on their door. But uh, they are always after the southeastern uh, um, politicians. Um, we know what Tinibu is doing with um, Lagos State revenue, and nobody has ever questioned Tinibu. So um, for Ikwe, Ike Kuramado, I don't support him. He's a criminal. Uh, on the other hand, the Nigerian politicians are sectional when it comes to the uh, to the fight um, against uh, corruption. That's all I have to say about this. Can I let me ask you? Th there were two governors that were freed recently. They were pardoned, I believe. Uh, they were in jail. Who were they? Um, one governor that I remembered was uh, was it jailed or detained? Oh no, the um the former governor of uh, Taraba State, right? I know, that, I know that Plateau State. Plateau State. Yes, uh, Plateau State, yes. And, you know, they were, they were uh, it's because of politics. They were free because of political affiliation as well. In short, their prosecution was because of uh, political affiliation. And their release also was because of uh, political backing. So we all know that. And today, these governors are fighting for APC. Uh, they, are, they are working for APC making sure that APC win election in Plateau State and Taraba State. Um, so it's, it's about if you can't beat us, just join us. If you join us, you are sent. But as far as you are against us, we come for you. And that is what EFCC is meant for, which hunting political opponent and um, for tribal bigotry. So Nigeria, like I said, you know, last time, um, some of us are openly, boldly um, uh, attesting that they, would die, they can die for Nigeria. We are not telling ourselves the truth. You you know within yourself you can't die for Nigeria. You can only do your best to change the evil, corrupt activities going on in Nigeria. But you know within yourself you can't die for Nigeria. If you really think that you can die for Nigeria, go and join Nigerian army, and they, you'll be posted to Sambisa Forest with one with one karachin and maybe non bullets, so that you fight Boko Haram without bullets. Um, you are here claiming that you can die for Nigeria. Mister, you can't die for Nigeria. Forget it. You're just talking. Uh, I can only die right. for my children. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Mike, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Yes. I was another angle for this for, uh, for seizure of his property, right? You know, there's never been a time Nigerian politicians do anything that will benefit Nigerians. If they tell you they want to redesign the money, is the reason that the cost of the, the design of the money is going to be billions and billions. They tell you they want to do this, it's going to be billions and billions. What of this angle? What if Aquaramado and his cronies already know that, listen, if the way this case is going, UK government might seize some of my properties, you understand? Uh, please, can you call that EFCC boy? He's in my properties. So they won't touch me. When I come out here, I get my properties back. And that's another angle. You know, the Nigerians will tell you, the, the Nigerian government will tell you we're seizing this for us. All the loot, Abacha's loot that have been brought back, 
it's enough to pay us to go back to school, um, to go back to classes, and we don't see it. They see Abacha is Nigerian's sugar daddy. Even at his death, he's still servicing us. You understand? Still giving us pocket money here and there. And that pocket money, that somebody gets it and somebody eats it. We know that Nigerian government, there's there's always a motive. There's no, there's no time Nigerian government wants to do something for you and me that will benefit us if it's not them and their people. That's what I'm saying. All right. All right. A Blackstone. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't forget you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Yeah, talking about um, the issue with uh, Epiremando, right? Uh, let me, I want to take it in a, a different perspective because I know that I always say that it's, it is only in Nigeria that any person that holds a political office and when he's living, becomes a billionaire. It only happens in Nigeria. But all these things happen simply because we allowed it to happen. I believe that uh, I want to say what is the what is the 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 influence of the citizens or how does the citizens support these politicians to do what they are doing to be corrupt? Because I remember when I was growing up, right, there was that dignity that every every person in politics or in the government have one thing that they have to serve the government with all their heart right they go home with their paycheck and everything but these days the people is a part of the problem that is that is being perpetrated by the politicians right for example when uh, the former governor of um data state odili when he was re released from the prison in the UK, came back to Nigeria. It, they gave him a very warm welcome. They were welcoming as a king. Nobody talked about his crime. Nobody talked how he, ble um, he bleeded the, the state to be very, to that extent of becoming one of the most richest person. But they still followed him. So what, what I'm trying to say is that all this thing that is happening in Nigeria with the corruption, the politics and everything, the citizens, part of the citizens are a part of it. Last time, I think I shared a video with, uh, with CM when they were listing all Tunubu's assets, how it took the state assets and converted it to its own properties. That video is there. But it's one of the, one of the, the people praise, the people followed People still talk is talk about him that is the is the one that made Lagos. But they're not saying that Lagos, Lagos State made Tunubu, but they say it's made Lagos. So at the end of the day, we all have issues. Everybody, most of the citizens have issues. And they are contributing to the predicament in Nigeria. Because they support it, they praise these politicians, they see the atrocity they see their corruption they see what they are doing but they still support them they still praise them because of the penalty they are getting from them uh sometimes i also think okay let me say even some of us some of the those that left from diaspora to go and join politics what did they do they were they were, they were some of them were even more corrupt than, than the nigerian politicians so this is to be a Nigerian problem, you know, in the mindset of the Nigerian people. And which I think that for us to be able to resolve this issue, to be able to come out of this predicament, this corruption syndrome that is eating, that are eating deep into the mindset of Nigeria, is to try to re-engineer the Nigerian mindset, try to, to change the Nigerian mindset. Because all this thing does not just happen in a solution. Because everybody contributes in one way or the other, right? You see what is bad, we praise it. And we see what is good, we condemn it. Because we are not, we feel or they feel that they are not going to, they're not going to benefit from it. You know? Uh, so, the Black Song, how are we going to change, how are we going to change the mindset of Nigerians? The changing mindset of Nigerians, um, one, 
I believe that Nigerians, first of all, respect their, their traditional leaders, right? They, res they respect their kings, kingmakers. Also, they respect the religious leaders. <laughs> don't, don't make me laugh, <laughs> but, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true? Because if you if, if you believe that, you know. So so are you saying that um, the religious um, leaders have not been doing enough to tell people not to steal? They've not no, been doing not... enough to say don't still uh, destroy your country. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Mr. Rudolph, I can tell you plain that the, this issue of prosperity started from, from the religious leaders. They are the ones that started preaching prosperity in their churches. And when they were preaching it, they were telling people you can get rich, you can be prosper without working. You know, they were giving them, them this, this belief that they can, they, can, they can be rich, they can prosper, but not telling them how they will, the right way. I, mm. I grew up in Nigeria. I spent some time in Nigeria. I know right from child I was going to the church. I know at that time what you are preaching, what they are preaching now. I don't tell my friends mm. that if you are preaching so good, why are we having so many problems? You know, because so why, why why should we go why should we go to them to to help change the mindset of people if we know they, they are not preaching the right thing anymore? Mr. Rudolph, you know that <laughs> if the words was are very are very powerful. We have those that are what they call this the the self help. You know, people that try to protect people how to how to improve on their life, how to you give seminars, Mo motiv motivational life. speakers. Yes, motivational speakers, right? Mm -hmm. The pastors are also motivational speakers. You can give seminars and say this is how. You can make your are we wait wait are we going to bribe them to to say the right and start saying the right thing to the people you don't, need to, you don't need to bribe them of course you don't need to bribe them. they want to bribe them to say because they even some of the preachers are also corrupt that's, that's what we're saying i'm saying you pointed at preachers and traditional uh leaders yes. as people that will that we help to change the mindset I'm, I'm trying to find out from you Traditional leaders, they are the people giving these people that steal money, awards, titles. How are they going to change it? Anyway, no, I, it's not, I, I don't, I'm not expecting that you have the answer. I'm just, I'm just pointing out something. In what yes, of course, definitely. But no, definitely, we have to start doing something because the mindset is what matters a lot. Because anybody mm. that's All corrupt, right. they have a mindset of corruption. That is why, yeah. even though they are present, they also have the mindset of corruption because they start to get something from the corrupt money they are getting. Mm. All right, thank you. Forefathers, welcome to the show. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, this is Rudolph, and um, greetings to everyone on the panel and the chat and the viewers. I don't know. Um, you are, you do have questions for them, so I don't know. You know, I joined at a time when I don't know what questions are. How many of you? Oh, we're thinking that you. Yeah, property. I thought you. Yeah, the, the, the models pro houses, they are floating all over the world. Oh, the uh, models are in, in, in the UK. Give, I mean, let me give a mm. load down. Ten in Abuja, yeah, we have the list. The pictures America, are coming out. Two, two in the UK, one in Lagos, nine in Dubai, fifteen in Enugu. How many of them did you help him to? You know, Hi, nine in Dubai. Wow, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, are some pictures. Let me let me show some pictures. You know, um, these are some of the pictures that EFCC they are releasing pictures of the property. Maybe it's near where you live here. Um, for fathers, <laughs> check very well. Um, wow. <laughs> Uh, and for those in Nigeria, really, you know, if you live near any of these houses, there might be someone just posted on on the comment that inside the soccer way, is that what they call it in Nigeria? Yeah, and they're changing and money. There, so... might be, there might be money there. There might be money buried there, you know. Mm. So, um, yeah. So I, I don't all of them dodgy. Um, you know, I don't know where <laughs> all of them with their millions upon millions that they have from Tinubu to Wiki to all of them. Where did they all get all that money? You know, so um, the entire thing is um, is a show of, uh, I guess, some they always have people that they make an example of. So maybe that's what's going on here. And um, I guess I have to take yes for an answer, you know, better than they see somebody that has stolen, mo uh, stolen money that not sees it from him. So after all, it's going to belong to Nigeria now. Question is uh, whether it's not going to be stolen again. Um, so yeah, who is tracking what is being recovered? Uh, personally, the way I look at these things is um, 
I don't have too much um, uh, focus on those things because I, I feel like the federal government, there's something going on right now. It's like there's a battle at the top um, because of maybe the political changes that are going to be coming on online. Um, you notice that by already doing things without consulting his finance minister and they are releasing statements of people stealing um, crude oil. FCCT, FCCT is um, arresting people. EFCC, I mean, uh, is arresting uh, people. And um, there is also the issue of uh, Naira change. And, you know, without consulting anybody, there's something going on there. They are trying to either some people, some people feel like, you know, things need to be a little bit better and um, the country needs to maybe do better while others just maybe want the status quo and maybe it turns out that people like a, a Kuremado doesn't fit into any of the this thing and he just got swallowed uh, because from what i gather the president was the one that authorized it for this to happen so god knows what's happening and some people say that oh the northerners don't get arrested and it's only southerners that this stuff happens to actually it does happen to northerners when i was checking this morning i was surprised the, the former governor of taraba was released from prison recently and there is one of these guy in the north i think Kanu, that was jailed too for 13 years and i think it was no it was for i think 13 years or so then he was reduced to seven years or something or five years so they do get people get jailed in nigeria and the question is, uh, does that even, is it for corruption's sake, real corruption? Because people own those pipelines. Nobody is getting arrested. People are funding terrorists. I've not seen anybody get convicted for that. So there's a lot of things going on that seems like they are just using it to um, compete against each other. So from that point of view, I, I just, you know, I, just, I don't feel a little bit, Nigeria shouldn't feel too, um as if things are being fixed uh just by that uh it might mean that maybe peter will be my win the next election um because some of the movement that i see in the in the in the elite is like it's as if there's a, a, a division after all tinubu belongs to the elite um Atiku belongs to the elite but you can see clearly that um uh, this is uh, what's the name ipb doesn't support him them um uh, obasanjo doesn't support them so it tells you that there's something going on at the top where they feel like these old guards cannot be allowed to carry on. They need to hand over to a newer generation, maybe change things slightly for the better. Um, for me, anyway, you, I think somebody was saying what, you know, earlier on in the show I was on when they said um, something about that affected the, you know, that happened last week. For me, what popped out last week um, that is quite significant that most Nigerians may not necessarily pay attention to is um, that Obasanjo led a team that found that you know reached a peace deal between the warring factions in Ethiopia. Even a limping Nigeria, and this meeting was held in South Africa. Even a limping Nigeria was still able to lead a team, even in the document, the declaration. It was said Nigeria led this team to reach this peace deal. And this is what I mean by Nigeria is one of those countries that it belongs to a class of countries that if it does well, its power is greatly magnified because of the position we occupy in Africa itself. And Africa is a massive continent. And when we, not th we don't take ourselves seriously, um, I don't know how others should take us seriously. And even if we don't even take ourselves, look at what we talk about ourselves all the time. And yet, they are still expecting us to lead the way on the continent. Sometimes I wonder why they even bother. Because if you hear the way some Nigerians talk about Nigeria, you think Nigeria is some totally useless country that should not stand for anything. Egypt didn't lead that mission. Not Kenya, not anybody else. It was Nigeria they chose to do that. So we should take ourselves a bit more seriously. And I heard uh, what Ekene said something about um, uh, uh, whether people that were saying that they are going to die for their country. But in the end, he went on to say that he was going to die for his children. Most people die for their children too. That's why they die for their country. Sometimes to die for your children means dying for your country. It doesn't necessarily mean they are both mutually exclusive. If you, if your children's future, why, why are you destitute in the West now? You are destitute in the West because your nation is not doing very well. You are destitute in the West because your, your children can't come to Nigeria and feel free because your nation is not doing well.
if something is going to if something can fix that and that means that you need to go and fight to do that you will prevent them from having that chance isn't that a little bit strange that a man will not do anything to keep where their children should feel safe their original home where their children should feel safe a man that will not do that i'm not even sure you are ready to defend your children because you are just saying you're going to defend them maybe if an arm robber comes in and all the rest i don't know because you have to think, you, you can't always think about, oh, they, they, somebody's about to attack them physically. You have to lay a path for them so that tomorrow they can go on to live a, a good life, a productive life, and they can have children and their children's children, and they will be secure. You, you could succeed right. your own, but your children's, how about your own children's future? You don't think ahead beyond that. Thank you, anyway. Um, All right, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Forfaras. Can I, uh -huh. Mr. Forfaras, yeah, mm -hmm. let me let me put it straight here, right? Maybe you're misunderstanding me, right? Um, a lot of people. Let me go back to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, according to Christians, died for all of us, right? And we are still doing the same thing that led to his death. Nothing has changed. In short, matter of fact, we are doing worse than it was then. Um. And then coming back to Nigeria, a lot has laid their lives for Nigeria. During the Biafra Nigerian War, more than 3 million of my people died for that country. And nothing has changed. Rather, it's still getting worse. Why will you not tell me that I would still come out and say that, oh, I'm going to die for Nigeria when I've, I'm already dead? I died already, so I can't die twice for, 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 for that Nigeria. Maybe you may not have really, really understand how Nigeria is structured. A bit, see, you, you were saying something and you say that uh, some of us are, uh, the way we ridicule Nigeria as a useless country. As it is right now, under Buhari's regime, Nigeria is worse than being useless. A country that cannot defend its citizens, a country that allow invaders, foreigners, to come in and boldly keep slaughtering, killing its people every day. A country that actually sponsored these invaders to come in, they pay them to kill its people. The likes of Shetima, that is well known to have been the one that invited um, terrorists, uh, uh, terrorists in, 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 in that country to keep killing its people. A country that would deliberately send out their army to go and fight terrorists and the same leaders will go behind and tell the, the terrorists that the, our soldiers are coming at this time so ambush them so so place and the army the soldiers will be ambushed and killed is it the same country you now telling me that i that i i can should go die for i'm not crazy what i'm telling you that i can die for my children is as i'm living in my house and you invade my house I have I'm legal. I'm, I have a legal career. I will kill you straight. I don't care if you invade my my house as a criminal or as a uh, bandit. I'm going to shoot you. That is what. I, that is where my power. That is the limitation of my power. I don't have such power to protect everybody in Nigeria. So therefore, I cannot risk my life to die for that country. If an entire army should be sabotaged and killed. Uh, 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 talk less of me, Kenechuku, to go in, in, in put my life in danger. That, that, hey, see, Oga, um, Father, sir, it's very simple. If you think you can die for Nigeria, I don't have a problem with that. Go and enlist yourself in the army and defend that country. You yourself, while I'm telling you this, I don't want to expose everything or my background, where I'm coming from, but as to, from what I know, you see that country, I cannot. I cannot. I can only try my possible best as a human to try to make things work better. But asking me, even um, Good Lord Jonathan said it. He said that his life, the blood of Nigerians, his own blood, is worth more than the policies of that country. It's a useless country. Sorry, as it is now under Buhari, the country is very useless. A country that cannot feed its its, its people that cannot protect his people, that cannot do any, everything is going on reverse gear and nothing has been done about it. The Akantan general was caught with billions of naira. What has been done? Nothing. And women, the sick, are dying in the hospital every day. Children are dying. You go to maternity home. 
in a country where they only have 24,000 medical doctors, only 24,000 out of 200 plus million people, as small as New Jersey, the state of New Jersey has more than 31,000 medical doctors. California has over 100,000 medical doctors. And Nigeria can only boast of just 24,000 medical doctors, one patient to more than 8,000, uh, one doctor to more than uh, 8,000 uh, patients. And you're saying that that country is functioning, that country is, is, the, is not as bad as being useless? Sorry, I'm right. using this ash word, but Nigeria is counterproductive. Um, and anything that is counterproductive is useless. That's why it is. Okay, they fix that country. Mr. Rudolph, can let I me hold on? Yeah. Mr. Duff, please, please, no, no, hold on, hold on. Uh, no, no, uh, uh -huh. no. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Mr. Kenan. Sir. Go ahead. How old is, how old is America? America, I don't, I don't know. The day America, the day I know America is the day I know America. America is as old as I am. No, how old is America? Democracy. America. Is it? America is as old as Nigeria. Mr. Mm Tenem, -hmm. what, what, is, what is happening in Nigeria? Most countries mm -hmm. of the world today are passed through that stage. They have gone through that stage. Try and read the history of most successful countries of the world today. They have passed that stage. Now, yeah, even, even me, America. Let me yeah, finish. Even America, let even let America me. is now. Let I live me. in America. I'm a citizen of this country. My children are citizens of this country. Let I think people cannot die for America because let America kills its citizens within its country let and we keep, keep killing other people. Oh, 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 let's die for a killer. I'm, wait, we are not saying should die for we're not saying should die for Nigeria. I'm not saying should die for Nigeria. And you are telling you in, in, in history, there are precedents. You understand me? Most countries have gone. Go and read the history of Europe, read the history of America. You understand me? It is, it, 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 it is a process. It's a progress. Every process cannot be the same. If we are failed, you understand me? Maybe the next time you come, we don't fail. You understand me? So we should not just rule out things like that. I live in Germany. I know what, what happened in the world. I know what happened before, even before the war. I know what changed Germany. I know, I know how the citizens rose up to, this, to kill all their, all, all, their, all their chiefs, all their traditional rulers. Exactly. Oh, so oh, if oh, you are oh, telling me to do oh, that right now, oh, I can actually volunteer myself. Let's go and kill these people, all of them, all those useless oh, politicians that is that are busy killing Nigeria. I can oh, go. I can do that, but not telling me that I would. Wait, okay, I hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on, uh, hold on, guys. Uh, Mike, what do you want to say? Yeah, like I said, I said earlier, we all we all are hypocritical. And when we come, when we start saying, ah, we love Nigeria so much, this, that, and the comforts of our home, in my basement, you understand? And with my lovely wife and kids upstairs, you can open your mouth that you used to eat yam and edi and say you love Nigeria. If you love Nigeria so much, right, most of us in these international countries go home like so what they did. So what he couldn't take the atrocities happening in Nigeria, he kissed his family goodbye and went to Nigeria. That is what someone who loves or wants better for his country to do, can do. So what he has been held back in that country, has been persecuted. So what he spent time in jail. So what he hasn't seen his family. That is, if so what he is here telling me he would die for Nigeria, I would say, ah, Sean, sir. I know. But if you are here and you're telling me you will die from Nigeria and the comfort of your home with health insurance and everything, you're not ready to die for Nigeria. You're just insinuating that you will die for uh, Nigeria. Uh, all right. Thank, thank you, Mike. Paul, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, doctor, and good morning. Yeah, it so looks doctor, like you're on the road. Uh, yeah. Doctor, so I want to talk a little bit about forefather, my very good friend, who told me, let me take it a little bit personal, who told me that he's working online, he works remotely. And he talks all these things about Nigeria. If you work remotely, my brother, Nigeria is that good. You can work remotely from Nigeria while you have a job in the UK, which many people do. The beginning of last month, First Bank and GT Bank, they came out and said, they said they are losing most, most of the tech guys. Because these guys are resigning. They are getting jobs in UK and in Germany. They did, these are guys who didn't move Japan. They are in Nigeria making all this money. Forefather, 
if you love your country so much, don't come and be Jehovah's Witness on this platform. <laughs> My brother, go Nigeria, go fight. <laughs> they make it, you know, so for you to go. <laughs> this one of the things what is going on in Nigeria. If you don't want to fight as military, go fight as fire service. Go and help people in the flood. Since you love your country so much, if you don't know how to use arms, I know you are in the UK, you don't carry arms like us. Go help people on the flood. It's emergency. And you say you work remotely, you go be big boy. If you are paying £1,500 a month for your rent, my brother, £100 a month, you live in a good apartment with £100 a month. Go to Nigeria. Don't come here, they can't do this job weakness thing. That cannot borrow me a fashion pill. You want to be more holier than the Pope? My brother, I bet borrow your sense. We get sense, no borrow your sense. Borrow yourself the remaining one where you get. If you don't want to use it, borrow right. yourself so that you can right. back forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, who, uh, James, you wanted to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, thank you James. very much. Yeah, I just want to repeat a question I asked some time ago while this topic was being discussed. In the United States, the Nigerian High Commissioner to the U.S. is the representative of the Nigerian government and people. Assuming the embassy compound is on fire as a result of gas explosion, and the man is trapped inside the building, how many of us here today will enter the building to rescue him, risk his life to pull him out of the fire? I'm asking this because when I was living in Israel, in the city of Elat, the Israelis will even do more than that. They will rescue the man and even try to rescue documents inside the building. How many Nigerians can do that? If you really love Nigeria, you are ready to die for Nigeria. All right. Um, let me let me come to you, Blackstone. There's something you said that yeah, I want to... Answer it. Somebody should answer it, please, if you don't mind. Um, I think you raised this question the other time. I will not. I, I, I cannot enter there to save him. Um, in 2011, I was in the New York uh, consulate office to renew my passport. My passport was stolen right from my room. I reported to police. Police came and gave me police extract. So I called them, um, let them know what happened. They told me how to reapply. I did. I paid everything. Before going to, I had an appointment with them. Before, then I was in Minnesota. Before flying from Minnesota to um, New York, I called them over the phone. I say, hey, I'm coming. So is there any other payment that I have to do? They said, no, that so far I've made my payment online. I went there. All of a sudden, they and I started asking me that I must pay $400. I said, for what? They said, because my passport was stolen. I said, I have police extract. And I called you guys. This is what you say. Thank God, because I know that I was dealing with criminals. I recorded my, conversa my conversation with them. Now, the then... Um, is it the consular general or whatever they call themselves, the leader there? That was on Friday. These people refused to attend to me. I had to lose it for them. I stopped the operations. They said they were going to call police for me. I said 911 will be faster. Call 911. The man wanted to go for mocks. I stopped him. I blocked him. I said, you are not going anywhere. You must attend to me. And they did attend to me. So at that time, if, if, if the embassy would have caught fire, I would even make the fire become worse if there is a if, if i have petrol I will, I, will, I will flame it up so i cannot save such people sorry i can't i can't risk my life all right all right thank you uh blackson i want to you mentioned something and i hear that when we talk about nigeria people raise that issue all the time which is how old is america how old is nigeria how old is uh, it, are you saying that development is uh, advancement is a question of the age of the country because there are some old countries that have not worked that have not functioned well don't you think they are more than that it's not just about how old a country is yeah so think uh, south korea nigeria is older than south korea with five good years you understand singapore is there america does not have any standard why they were growing as a country Nigeria, we have standard. You understand? So it's easy for us. We have standard. That's how it is. You know, the person would develop iPhone 14, probably did not develop iPhone 1. You understand? But the model of iPhone 1 can make it easy for him to develop iPhone 14. That's how things roll. 
So people cannot be saying all those things. How old is Singapore? How old is South Korea as a country? Before they are talking about America of a 246 years old. Uh, Somebody Trump, asked how old is sorry, Dubai. Sorry, sorry, uh, Paul. Uh, let, me, let me say something. Uh, let me just, no, let hold, me, on, hold on, Black, Blackson, hold on, Blackson, hold on, hold on. Blackson, hold on. Uh, Mike, Mike, go ahead. Mike, go ahead. All right. People, when people make that type of, uh, gives that type of excuse, I ask, right? <clears throat> America is that old. They've made the mistakes. Why should we copy their mistakes? We should learn from their mistakes. You understand? Know, just because Nigeria is a young country, doesn't mean <clears throat> doesn't mean we should say okay because it's a young country let's just keep messing things up till we get to 300 years that america is now before we fix things if you give that excuse you're saying oh there's no learning from people's past experience america just like this man said the person that built the model of iphone whatever is not the person that built the current iphone 14 but the model for iphone one made it possible for the people to build this one if you go into an exam hall and you're copying from somebody and you see that this person is making a mistake, will you still keep copying from him? I will leave the other person. I will leave the person making a mistake. No, you are copying from someone. I will the person making a mistake. I will stop from copying from him. No, oh. let, me, let me tell you how he's making a mistake. My brother, if you, you, okay, if you, okay. you, no, hold on, hold on. Hold on, if you, he's making a mistake. Sir, I want to tell you, I don't use Egypt. Hold on. Egypt is because they also use Egypt. Hold on. Hold on, let me show you how he's making a mistake. <coughs> Mr. Blackstone, let's say you're an exam hall. Mr. Blackstone, let's say you're an exam hall. You're sitting next to Ekene and you're sitting next to a daisy. You're copying from Ekene and Ekene has finished his, his test. And you, you are finished from copying from him. And Ekene looks at the test and says, listen, I think I failed this. He crumples his paper and gets a new paper. And you, Nigeria, you say, listen, okay, Ekene, you are American. I'm good with your past answer that you wrote, that you wrote wrong. Don't worry, I'll submit it. They will understand. While Ekene is rewriting history, you're keeping Ekene's old history. Okay, Mr. Mike, let me ask you a question. Why no, no, Blackstone, Blackstone, answer, 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 because we're moving okay. on. We can I'll, I'll, go back okay, and forth. I, I will this answer year. that, right? Yeah, answer um, everything you have to say now. I One thing I believe is this. Everything has a progression, right? We are comparing... Uh, Nigeria with countries like uh, Singapore. Remember, Singapore is a, a dictatorship. Dubai is a dictatorship, right? Most countries are keeping Nigeria, they are, they are all different system of government. One man rules, one man makes rules and regulations, right? Let's also remember that the Nigeria um, development, how many coups are we had in Nigeria? Right, so all these things does matter. But if you actually listen to Nigerian news, we have Nigerian news. There are Nigerians last last Saturday. I listened to a story boy about I think it's about twelve years old, who designed a hub for the for the blind people, and he started working down on the second version of it. He said Nigerian guys in Nigeria there. It's not in abroad. So there are still people in Nigeria who are doing great things. So we can't we can use the same brush to paint everybody in Nigeria. There are Nigerians that are having good, genuine businessmen who are making money every day. There are Nigerians that spend every day $100 to live. Can we in abroad spend $100 for ourselves every day? So even though the government is bad, but there are some people who are also doing very good, genuine business, who want the best for the country, who are still trying to make the best. They are moving on and they are living good. But you are condemning everything. You understand me? So when it comes to government, it's a progress. We said that Donald Trump destroyed. We say everybody hates Donald Trump in America because it was people say it was the rule. Well, now another one is there. Is it following the same pattern? It's not following the same pattern. It's changing. So change is a continuous thing. It's not what happens one time, and everybody begins to go. If Buhari is bad, we are praying the next one will not be bad. That's what I believe. That at least. It's a progress. Is that developed? Right. Uh, we are giving an example that I for iPhone. It's but that is so professional. It's a designer. Most Nigerians in politics are not prof are, are not politicians. They are not professional politicians. You understand me? They are just people that that came back from the street from nowhere. That 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 got they got some forefathers or some godfathers who supported them. They went to that position. And and what do you expect? They have to pay back. Their, they have to pay back their, their godfathers now, and then rule and everything. That's why we have all this all right. um, right. management and everything in the country. 
Blackson, Blackson, thank you. We are going to we are going to take a break. When we come back, we talk about the tragic story of Davidio's uh, son and the um, the constantly. Whole... Yeah, so I'm not allowed to res respond to all of them because most of them we are having a go at me. So it seems odd that I'm not responding to everything they said. All no, right, no, all right. Let's talk to me. Um, um, is, okay, respond, forefathers. Okay. Yeah. Um. I see. I don't know how we are all racing not to want to defend our home. This is really scary because um, if any other group, any other race is watching what Nigerian men are saying here, they will be shocked. Russian men, Ukrainian men, Japanese, they will be shocked. Like, is this even a conversation? <laughs> it's mind boggling. How is it that it's controversial? to say you should defend your homeland and your heritage. That's not even a controversial thing. You might, I can agree. If you want to criticize me and say, okay, you, are, you will not die for your own country. You are in the UK and all the rest. I have my reasons for being here. And I tell you okay. today, if Nigeria, Nigeria is recruiting 1 million soldiers to so take their security seriously, I will go in there. I feel bad oh, for the soldiers. What, can I just finish once? See, yeah, I, yeah, I bad I don't for know the soldiers. Speaking, please, let, let him, let him, mm. let him finish. Yeah, I really feel bad for the soldiers that are going there doing almost an impossible job. We think that this, this job they are doing is papering over damage. If they decide to pull like pull away like everybody here, here is talking about, they are not they decide that they are not going to do this job. What country are you going to have to call your own? You're not going to have any country. Other people will take it over and then your, your fate is, is decided. I don't. I, I don't understand how this is even a controversial point. You can. Yeah, I can maybe the controversial part is the, the fact that I say that I'm going to die for my own country too. But if is if that is controversial to you, then leave that aside. But can you own the fact that you are meant to defend your heritage? If you cannot do that, know that you are really odd in this world, and you present as one of the weakest set of men on the face of this earth. Are you okay? All right, thank you so much. My uh, we, my, my uh, heritage is so one village from to, Anambra State. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, the videos, uh, the tragedy in in the family, the son that that died. Um, just a minute. Gentleman will be making his network television debut. This is his most uh, recent album right here. It's called Spirit of Love. We're very pleased to welcome Majek Feshek. <laughs> Say 
say you have to laugh. They say you are brown. They say you are black. They say you are brown. Only the angels of child is white now. Only the angels of God is white. So long. Too long. So long. Too long. We've been sitting down. Africa, arise from your sleep, America. There's work to be done, Africa. So much work to be done, America. But 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 if we unite, hey hey, we will be free so long, too long, so long, too long. Dr. Davages, we can't hear sorry, you. Sorry, sorry, yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was saying that was a good segue into the story of um, that video. That was uh, Majek Fashek. So much promises, and it ended in a tragic way. All right. So um, let me show you this, and then we we'll begin the conversation on that video. Let me show you this video a little bit of. Oh. Know me Sadly, now, I'm a big fan this of was four days ago when Davido and his son Ifain was swimming in the pool. Nobody knew such a tragedy will happen after. May God give them the heart That's to. All right. In 2018, I think Devange, uh, Devange lost a child to a similar incident. Um, there are many aspects of this I want us to discuss. Uh, I want to start with you, Janaba, because the one that troubled me was um, stories of these pastors um, coming up to say that the boy did not die, that they could raise him or if they bring I, you're not pastors are not to be blamed alone it's it's also you know this is a consequence of what we talk about when we don't have uh, what they call the gatekeepers in the media so everybody now is a reporter everybody can write publish a story so you know now anybody can say anything this has always been like that people can say anything but the part, part that gatekeepers the role they used to play is that if i'm a reporter and i come to forefathers and forefathers say something outrageous I don't have to report it. I just go home and say that this man is cuckoo. But now everybody's a reporter. Anybody will report anything, and people have to discuss it. So, John Abba, are you do you do you think that pastors should have a union where people will get certificate and license to practice? Um, <laughs> because that's what they say about journalism. Yeah, but it doesn't matter anyway. They'll still bribe somebody to allow them to do it. Uh, even if they are to be licensed, there are many uh, fake uh, pastors, fake journalists, fake uh, Nigerian citizens and all of that. Uh, when it comes to that, uh, uh, I went to vacation in California with my family. My three years old, then Michael, jumped into a nine-foot water and I dive or I can swim a little bit. Of course, I was able to rescue him. 
So I know how it's easy to get drowned in the water. So he was struggling already. We look around, and before we know it, he jumped because he has no fear. I believe he enjoyed the the time they spent with the father in the water, and uh, it is what it is. He went back there, and unfortunately, uh, things happened. But then uh, it's about media attention. Any negative thing is what attracted Nigerians. Whatever, if no, even 99 years old person died in Nigeria. He said that is a witch, a time for him to die. So our mentality is beyond, is below, uh, is backward. So a child uh, escaped from the house because they enjoying what he did with the father and uh, drowned. It should be something we sympathize and we wish it never happened to anybody else. But for Nigerian, uh, and all they are saying is to gather enough followers to say, oh, it's suspicious. Oh, thank God he's a rich guy already. If not, if he's, he's a poor boy and tomorrow you get rich, they say he's a rich one he used the money for. That is the mentality of Nigeria. And uh, I wish uh, we wake up one day uh, and we learn to appreciate that we are good people, but we, we have to continue to change our way. We can't be wishing or have the answer to everything and and can't keep on demonizing people or keep on coming up with all those rubbish and pastor we say bring him to for prayer. Uh, uh Paul and Nenke's uh, senior brother died in Abuja. They took his body to the church. Did he come back to life? Of course no. So I'm not here to tell you that there is no hope for all of those things, but those things somebody is dead is dead. Uh, Jesus died uh, three days he came, but people admitted he died. So I don't know, and I've not seen anybody that died and came back. I fainted one day like that, but I think I was hungry, and I came back to life. Uh. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, John Abba. Um CM, CM, what do you think about that, that tragedy? Um, to me, I'm looking at it from the point of view of uh, health and safety. You know, I feel that uh, in the Western world, from the experience I've got, when uh, whatever they are doing, that principle is in their everyday life, particularly things like this. Even if it's an open park they want to build, they think of health and safety, anything. So if they had had that in mind, they would have known that, okay, is he healthy? What if somebody got drowned in this, uh, um, uh, what is the swimming pool? Not even to talk of a, um, uh, a child. What if somebody gets drowned? What if the water happened to be contaminated? How often do you, is there a rotor for changing the water or treating it? I'm talking in, just for an adult now. And they felt, uh, okay, is it knee level? How, de how what is the depth? How deep is it? All these things, they put them into consideration. And then you may have a notice by the side. If you are maybe of this height, do not jump in or this thing, you know, all those type of things, not to talk of kids. So in this case, there may be a, a fence around uh, something, a fence around it or a way to cover it after use, or there are more, it must be something like maybe a barrier, even if it should be open, maybe from the rest of the house, there may be a barrier, uh, a wall separating the swimming pool from the rest of the compound, whereby if you are going there, there is a need to put a door in which you ask for the key and the key will be left somewhere that only adults can access or something. So what the whole thing I'm saying is that there must be a health and safety measure because they always anticipate that something will happen. For instance, let me give this example. During the festive season in the UK like this, like in the hospital towards Christmas, all hospitals will stock more, you know, like their blood bank, where you have the units of blood for transfusion. If you normally have 10 or 15 or 20 or 30, they may tell you to increase it, stock more, particularly O negative, o negative or whatever, you know, the ones that so, some, some doctors here will understand. So what they are doing is they say, why? Because they feel that this is a festive occasion. Forget about that the economy is down now. He said, people at the end of the year, there are parties to attend. You want to give thanks. You want to drink, feel free. So many factories have closed down as from December 15 or there are about for two weeks break till January. So people are 
and this winter they stay at home and drink and do all may make merry. So there's a tendency that some people may yeah, have enter, get into violence as a result of alcohol, which wasn't intended. Then the ambulance drivers might be told, you don't need to take a holiday in December or so that we have enough people. So they always have a sense of foreboding that there could be problem in future. Not that they anticipate, but they said, let's get those to be what they call a um, um, damage limitation. So maybe some to some of us in Africa and the black, we haven't got that sense. Because I once asked somebody in my village, he said, oh, if you get to our village now, life is bubbling. Every Sunday you see people, every, you know, they give us give us a third road from the local government headquarters passing through my town, marvelous. No speed limit. He said, you cannot be driving anywhere. People, you see people drinking, making merry masquerade. And I asked them, all those fish pepper soup you are eating. Mind you, there may be um, uh, one of the bone we got stuck into your neck or an okada knock somebody down on the third road. The thing is that there is tendency that there will be a bleeding in the head. Is the neck, the community hospital we have or the nearest, do they have a, I mean, a facility to do something like a CS, I mean, a brain scan? No. Can you do CSF analysis to know if the thing is, uh, you know, the blood is bleeding? No. All they will tell you is that, oh, you are having, the head is hot or you are feeling pains. They say, yeah, take Panadol. Somebody will suggest, that, well, no, take Panadol extra. Take Panadol extra and then it will help. And if you say, say hey, take it, you're a man. After all, you knock your head down, it will be okay. Not knowing that you are bleeding. So in other words, what are, the whole thing is that we, we need, if there's anything we should learn from Davido's uh, case, is that there should be, we always think health and safety. Think of the fact that what if something happens here? What if somebody under age it happens to, you know, crisscross this area and then something happens. But you know, Nigeria, we never learn. People will laugh at it and then pray God and all this. But ideally, or they may change the regulation. If you should have a swimming pool, it will meet this requirement. But you know, we don't do it. But over here, the Western world, that is the way I see it. So let's think in terms of health and safety. It will help us for future planning and then right. to make the life better. Thank all you. right. Thank you. Let me let me go to Paul because he's driving. Let's see, maybe he will. Um, yeah, Paul. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so, doctor, I think um, we that live in the U.S. will understand these things much much better because we experience it more in the U.S. And um, I think um, uh, CM just said so many things that I want to say, so I don't really need to say much. I just think the health and safety, and like in the city of um, Phoenix where I live in Arizona, even the fire service give you things to barricade your pool for free. That's why most times they press charges on parents who lost their loved one, because they give you these things for free. You know, if you ask for it, they're going to give you for free. You know, so health and safety is very, very important. I, can, I also saw the video the other day when he was even swimming with his son, even when he was swimming with the boy, even when you swim with your son, it's not even advisable not to put a life jacket with him. You understand? Even though with him, he didn't do that. So that on his own part is negligent. Then for the other part, you would have barricaded the house. Then coming to the constituency of uh, John Harbour, the pastors and everything, these are the foolish people. These are the people that kill my mother. Where they keep giving my mother Aurora, they call it anointed oil. That's how they kill my mother. You understand? I see all the rubbish that they say. But the beauty of it, Davido is born with wealth. He has bought that house over seven years ago. So I don't understand when people bring spirituality into things like this. In his, in his weakest time, he's going through pain. We should stop these things in Nigeria. You know? We should stop it in Nigeria. So that's all I'll say for now. Okay. Uh, right. Dr. Rudolph, please, please give me a chance to talk to this guy, uh, Paul, my brother. Um... <laughs> First of all, you don't pay tight enough. That's why pastor could not keep your mother through prayer. So I don't, <laughs> I don't understand why he says that people like me. I never take tight an offering. Talk about pastor. I'm not a pastor on this show. I'm a Abba Abbas or John Abba on this show. So don't address me as a pastor here. You don't pay me tight. So, and I'm a reality talk here on Dr. Rudolph's show. So it's not people like me that kill your mother. If you go and investigate, you kill your mother. So, 
Anything pastor, Dr. Damage is call you to ask you. That's your constituency. That's why. <laughs> oh, okay. I take it like that then. Uh, good luck and uh, go to junkyard. I'm also in junkyard. I'll see you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Oh, Lord, help yeah, us. Can I uh, say James. something quickly about... The, oh, oh, James, let James go. Oh, okay, let me go to James, sir, then I'll come to you, for further. Sir, James, go ahead. James, unmute yourself, please. I said uh, I will talk after forefathers. Never mind, let him talk. After him, I will okay. go. Okay, forefathers. Yeah, Um. you see, this topic... Every I don't know why almost every topic I think to be coming out on the other side of the argument i don't I, i'm not sure why um i think our people we have become a billboard for the advertisement for the west now because if you hear what all of them say just now they are talking about how things are good here and how terrible things are at their own home and all you have to do is check online on google and you see that people children are dying in the west to the same way the same threat exists here in the west just as much as it's in the in nigeria the fault is human and it's a human thing. If you don't do your threat assessment very carefully, and I can assure you, someone like uh, David, given that he's got about eight um, house helps there, or I don't know what they describe them as, he probably thought they were very safe. From what I gather, there was just a collapse in communication. And one thought the other one was watching the child, and the other one thought the other one was, and that's it. Um, that's how accidents happen. Human beings. No matter how much money you have, when I keep saying this, uh, even when I translate to security, it's human beings you need. There is a case here where a child is inside swimming pool, other people are there, the child drowned. That's in the West I would like to talk about. It's the human beings. If you don't look out for your own, if you don't check enough, people will die. It's just as simple. Tragic events occur. And I think people should take it easy with uh, David Doe and, uh, because he never intended that to happen. If been, he left the child alone or left the child with one person, he left the child with a lot of people and still there was a collapse in communication. Tragedies like this occur until the day we have a robot that can jump into that swimming pool and monitor the swimming pool and jump in there and bring the child out 24-7. Tragedies like that are likely to occur because it's only as you'll be surprised if you put a, a, a something to block the child from getting in there the child will get jump over the, the, the this thing and then the tragedy will occur again and then we'll end up on the news and complain about it's, it, it, the whole thing is a it's a human thing and tragedies of happen and we should just leave it at that i don't think that maybe in the west um a, a child drowns a, in a swimming pool necessarily mean that the authority will just arrest the parents if they see that the parents have done their due diligence, they didn't just abandon the child at home or somewhere that is unsafe, they're not going to, because the children are, the parents are already suffering a tragedy. They are not going to just arrest the parents. They are going to look at it like, okay, this is a tragic event because they know themselves that this is what happens. You know, so I would like to leave it there. Thank you. That's why I told you that, um, even when he was swimming with his son, his son supposed to put on a life vest. Even when he was swimming with his son. These are the things that they do. That's why I told you, the, uh, my city, the fire department, they give you these things to barricade this place for free. And there's a security lock that kids will not know how to use at that time because you open it from inside, not from outside. You understand? So if there is negligence upon your own path, that's where they blame you for it. So they put all measures. You understand? For example, in the UK, they don't really have it like the way they have it here. Most houses... But that is not how the like son died. Like There's no need for you to be advertising the West constantly. You are like a I, billboard advertising for the West. This is, this is the thing we have. I have a pool in my own house. As I'm telling you, I'm one, one minute away to my own house. We have it everywhere because of the weather. In the West Coast, it's hotter than Nigeria, if you don't know. In the West Coast, where I live, it's hotter than Nigeria, if you don't know. So it's Swimming in a pool in this part of our, my world is not luxury. You understand? It's even good for your own health. It's not luxury. So because of our weather, like in the UK, they don't have it. Look, most houses in the UK don't even have ordinary AC. You understand? In my place, it's a regulation. You must have AC in every business, every home. It's standard procedure. Like they have it in the East Coast, heater in the East Coast, because it's very, very cold. So it's not luxury.
three as you may want to think because they have it so much and they have this problem. Hundreds of people, kids die every year. Negligence from cars and even no in pool. You know, during the summertime, kids die a lot. You understand? Inside cars. So you see, like for example, you see mothers when they put their, ki their kids in the back seat, they'll take their bag, they'll put it in the back. Though some of them will pull one of their shoes and put it in the bag, in their back, where they put their kids. So that when they leave the car, they will not forget their kids inside the car. Over 100 people die every year in summer. The same way kids die inside cars when parents forget, leave their kids within minutes. The same thing they happen to pool. So it's just regulation, things that they put in place. In Nigeria, how many houses have pool? They don't. You understand? So I, I want to believe to some extent they don't regulate. I'm just throwing it as a means of we use it. This place, this platform, is a platform where we use to educate ourselves. You understand? That's, that's, that's all I'm saying. So don't say in the West, in the West, in the okay. West. You wait when we praise the West and you find yourself in the West. My brother, go Nigeria now. <laughs> I think... Um, but I'm not sitting here... Yeah, I'm, not, this, I'm not yeah. a billboard for the West. You can on, deal on with this, the problem okay. without necessarily praising the West constantly. And, and in, a way, in, in a way, actually this inaccurately is, too. That is the that problem. Is, because if you are doing it accurately, it's a different thing. It's not accurate. Okay, hold on, hold on, no, guys. Hold on, guys. So I, I want to hear from. Wait, wait. I'll be very can case, right? On. I'm agreeing can, with can uh, can Mr. Paul. Can I hold on? Can I hold on? Hold on. Let's hear from James. I mentioned his name before all of you. John okay. Uh, James. Yes, um, James you, made mention of, yeah. you made mention of gatekeepers in journalism. We don't need them because it's equivalent to press censorship. Whosoever is publishing rubbish should face the consequences. The laws are there, law of libel or whatever it is, or sedition. So gatekeepers, there should be no room for them. We've suffered a lot because of press censorship in Nigeria. We are free here talking today because of freedom of the press. So gatekeepers, there should be no room for them. Secondly, the issue we are discussing here borders also on the activities of standards organization of Nigeria. There's an organization responsible for the maintenance of standards in public places in particular. They are not doing their work. This is why these things happen. So we should try to enforce our laws. Then the next issue is this uh, pastors who are saying that the boy did not die, that they should do that, that. These are 419 pastors. There's a law in Nigeria, I think section 419 of the Criminal Procedures Act, which made it illegal for anybody to obtain money through false pretexts. No pastor has been prosecuted so far. So the law, I mean, the law enforcement agents they should also look at that direction. They are not above the law. And one thing they should also realize is that in Christianity, the greatest miracle has already happened. Those who read the Bible thoroughly. That is for the death of one man to rescue the whole world, even generations of born, from their iniquities. That is the death of Jesus is the greatest miracle that has ever happened. And nothing should be expected anymore. All the wishy-washy pastors we are seeing right now, they are just nothing but hustlers. So this is what I've got to say. It's a pity the boy died, but pastors should be called to order. They've misbehaved thoroughly in the country, and as a result of their misbehavior, a lot, in fact, the hardship, they intensify the hardship in Nigeria. Pastors build churches. They build even universities, and the people attending the what's it called churches cannot afford to go to the universities. So what sort of human beings are they? We don't need them in the country. So the law should take its course as far as the activities are concerned. Thank you. All right, thank you. Can I go ahead? Yes. So um, on uh, Davido's uh, son, right? I think I mm -hmm. have two people to blame here. Um, firstly, um, the government and the parents. I totally agree with uh, what Mr. Paul said and Mr. CM. Um, where I live, in my state here, you can't just build swimming pool because you think you have money to do that. Um, you have to go for, you have to go and seek for permit from the county. Not only permit to build a swimming pool, you also have to seek for permit for barrication, you know, to put a fence on it. And then the approver, it doesn't end just on approval. When you are approved to build this, the county will also send out their agents, agents 
to come and make sure that what you build is to the standard and they always monitor it. Yes, accidents do happen. Do happens times with that number, it happens which we don't have control over, right? But however, these measures, um, these regulations are kind of proactive measures to limit you know, um, occurrence of such uh, events. Now, in Nigeria, you're a big man, you have money, you can build whatever you want to build. The urban and regional development agency, whatever they call themselves, will only come for you to settle them. Um, recently, I was handling a project in Nigeria and they came and my people wanted to fight them. I said, no, don't fight them. Give them money, they will go. They're just useless like that. You know, they gave them money and they left. So that is the government in Nigeria. They don't function. They don't put any anything into um, uh, uh, into control. You have right. money, you can build, you can even build swimming pool right in your Nigeria. living room in Nigeria, right? You can build swimming pool. Um, the bank's child that died last time, the swimming pool was right inside the living room. That is how Nigeria operates. You can build whatever you want to build. So the government, I blame them. And for the parents, I think they could do more. Um, you know, um, when, when you are single, you can live life recklessly the way you want. But whenever you start having children, you have to be cautious. You have to limit your excesses. So um, this thing that happened, I think, is deeper than what we think. Um, so it's up to them. I feel sorry for what happened, and I condole with the uh, Adelike's family. However, um, government is to be blamed, and we, the parents, we should always try to do better in securing our children. Yes, uh, Mr. Forefather. Yes, we always use the West because they have a template. It's working for them. So we that are still trying to put things in place, we, we should also try to use those templates in order to fix our country. Nobody is bashing on Nigeria. Nobody hates Nigeria. We are just saying the truth, and we are just trying to make Use Nigeria function better. It's inaccurate. Yeah. The way you are using it was inaccurate. That's the problem. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, the black song. <laughs> yes. I'll, 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 I'm one more thing. Lastly, lastly. Yeah. One, one more thing. Lastly, I am uh, talking about the pastors, right? I don't know, because it is only... Sorry, I must use this word. It's only somebody that doesn't have brain, functioning brain, that will be listening to these people, right? Um, there is this guy in Nigeria called Matthias Ezak. He, he, I think he, he anchored one Igbo Love Themselves a group, right? He, this guy has challenged them times with that number. If you think you can pray for the dead to wake up, well, let's go to the mortuary. Let me pray for dead people. Pray on them. Let them wake up. If you think you can place your hand, you know, place your hands on the sick and they will get healed, or pour uh, anointing oil, uh, which is actually um, um, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. So if you think you can pour it on them for them to get, um, get well, please come, let's challenge you, do it. But none of them turn up. The one lady that came last time, she failed. Lastly, um, lastly. It, um, it can I, before you, before <laughs> you, throw, you throw this out, it's not, it's not actually true. Onye is a yeah. Jesus wanted to go to uh, a morgue to do that miracle, and the government of Anambra State stopped him. They said, You can't, we are not. No, going to yes, they yes, they yes, actually because, said, No, they yeah. said that any hospital that will let him come there, they will lose their, yeah. lose their license. Yeah, because, because <laughs> so the why government, is the government afraid? <laughs> yeah, the government, the government and, the, and these pastors, they, they work together, they collude. So they know that this is time to expose them, and um, Onye is a Jesus shouldn't be the one. To do that, you know, so they have to caution him, they have to hold him back. Is that they, they want to expose them because these people are the ones that will go to church and kneel down for pastor or bishop or father to pray for them and prophesy that they are going to win the likes of uh, Fadi Coyote, they are going to be the president of the country, right? So, making the populace to believe that they actually have the anointing to do all those things, so they walk hand in hand, and that is why church is a place where they go for campaign. So, like I said, it is only a non, you know, a non-thinking person that will be listening to these people. Yes, yeah, miracle but... happened. Miracle has happened in my life, but not from these riffraffs and uh, uh, hustlers right. looking for money left, right, right, and center. But when they okay. when they come to your house for for inspecting the house, instead of you following the right thing as a man to say I'm not giving bribery, they do their job and go. You no. them. No, 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 Mr. Mr. John, Mr. John, Mr. John before, before I started, I got my plan from this country. I sent it to Nigeria. I did everything intact, right? 
So if I was if I was in Nigeria, hold on, hold on. If I was in Nigeria, I would take it up on that, right? I would I would do that. But because somebody else is there doing it for me, so I don't know how this person can go. I've taken I've taken Nepal to court. Nigeria no. Nepal, I've taken them to court. No. So no, no, no. Uh, taking a lot of them to me is Mr. is very Kandan. easy. I know how to handle them. Mr. Kandan, no yeah. excuse. You gave bribe. No excuse. You gave bribe. The bribe is a bribe. No, 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 no. I didn't give bribe. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's not a bribe. Oh, hold there. on, hold on. No, in my community, for example, in my community, if you want to build anything in my community, you must settle the community. I don't know what they call it. You must settle them, right? Hold on. You did say community. You said the no, no, I'm, I, no, no, I'm going back. So when they came, hold on. So when they came with their boys and all that, they wanted to cause problem, and I was called. I was like, you know what? Just settle them, let them go. It's not a bribe. If I was there. I know how to undo this people. Not a bribe, just to avoid problem. I so I'm not bribing anybody. Because I hope everything is, is intact. Everything is to it is the standard. Mm -hmm. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Uh, Blackson, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Concerning um, the widow uh, incidents, I sympathize with the family first of all for it's a, tra it's a tragic death, right? Uh, let me uh, tell our people, those who are in America, who are trying to put American law into Nigerian law. I want to ask you, how many children does in the swimming pool in Nigeria in a year? Before, be, before any country start putting laws into actions, uh, they will have the reason for it. There might be several incidents that happen, right? Before those laws, before they come in those laws, and before they start to make those regulations. So how many children have died in the private swimming pools in Nigeria? That's what I have to look into. So cause coming to the actual, the, the main topic, right? I guess that you say she blamed the government and the family. No, she's not blaming the government. She blamed the family. One question I would, I would like to ask, how does that child left the main house to the swimming pool? Because that's a very big house. They said, the other doors are always being locked. So how did that child left the house? How did he go out of the of the main building to walk down to the swimming pool? That's a question we should try to pass an answer to. You understand me? Because that child is always playing inside the city room, inside the house, right? At this, on that day, how did he leave the, the, the apartment? Also, there was another, another video that came out that that child died in. He said he has two swimming pool, one for the child. And on that child swimming pool, there's a, there's a balloon where, for where the child can, can go inside and then play inside that water. And the child was trying to enter that balloon, but he could not. And he turned and he fell into the water. He was trying to, to, uh, to, try to rescue himself to go into the into the balloon that he could know that that was on, on no that video i've seen that video two years ago that's it's not uh, the video oh. sounds video okay so that was there so i don't know so but actually i think there was a good legitimate from the from the house app who could not find out that that child had left the the main building yes go out of the uh, the main building right so i want to say um the family did something wrong because they have at least to have about seven or nine house help who are there helping them. At least that church should be should have at least that security. They should be secured, and then the blame should be on the house help, right? And then for them to not to find out. I don't know how many minutes it took, how many hours it took that they could not find the child before he walked down to the swimming pool and jumped to the swimming pool. And two, because every child learns, every child learns from, from the parents as long as. The parents have always be swimming with the child in that swimming pool. Whenever he goes up out, that is where his, his, his attention will be because he has been, he, he has always been playing with his parents in that swimming pool. He also think that he can do what the parents are using him to do inside the swimming pool, right? So I have to, most of the blame will go to the parents and also the house app and I know nothing have to do with the government. So Nigeria has their rules and regulations. We can't pick every rules and regulation from, from America, from foreign countries. So it's, it's your personal house. You have to have your personal house. You have to put anything you have to put in your personal house. So I don't think uh, you should be denied uh, what you have to do in your house or what you have to put in your house, what you have, what you have to build in your house. But All right. there should be safety and there should be security, at least as a child. You know, what they would have done Probably to fence the swimming pool around and to prevent the child from going there. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Mike? Um, I sympathize with the family. And the death of a child is not what the parent would want to go through. You understand? Everyone in my place, sometimes when a younger person is dead, an older person would not come for the funeral. So, um, but I blame his caregivers. This individual um, is rich enough to have nine people working in his house. And these are not just probably nine friends. These are nine staff people that are staff members that get paid. You understand? So that's where that's where I blame people that take up positions that you don't take serious. You understand? If the master was home, if the owner of the house was home, you would see everybody loving up on that child. Ah, come, kiss, hold, touch. But now he's not around. You tell me that you have a toddler in the house and you don't know where, and you just have one job. The nanny's job, that is just one job. Take care of this kid. It's not like your job is to cook food. I know they have a chef there that if you say this boy is hungry, his food is prepared. You understand? If you say this boy needs to take a shower, things are there and you just drop the ball. You have one single job, take care of a child and you get paid for it. You understand? Nine people in that house, that's why it's, it's like, I don't like it when I have friends who will tell me the truth or I have people who who act good towards me because of what they will benefit. You understand? That nanny probably would have been the best nanny because our guy is always at home. Madame is always at home. Now our guy is not around. You let a child wander away from you. Like a, a, when I don't know if you, any of you have kids. If I don't hear my kids in the next, in the next, what do you call it? Two minutes, there's gonna be a problem. You know, so now I'm in the basement, I can hear them stomping around and I know my wife is upset. If it's quiet, when you have children, if it's quiet, there's trouble. And you have- All right, to all right. All right, thank you, Mike. I, I, want, to, I want to mention, uh, there's something that Nika wrote on the comments that um, she thinks that we should wait to gather more information before discussing this topic. You know, that more information is still coming out. What we are discussing now should be general safety and issues. So there's a point in terms of not knowing exactly what happened, the details, you know, and um, it's easy to blame people. And, and of course, you can also say that this nanny is the They've been there for, for how long? The, the child is three, three, you know, they've been around, they've done their job for all those periods. And, you know, so anyway, but that's that's on the side. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, Simba, welcome to the show. Can you Sorry unmute yourself? That. Hello, can you hear me? Excellent, good. Yeah, we nice. can hear you. Um, welcome to the show. I think this is generally smoke and mirrors, I think. No, hold on, hold on, Sim hold on, Simba. First of all, tell us where oh, are you joining us um, from? From um, Switzerland. I've been watching your show. Thank you for having me. Oh, okay. Um, I've okay, been nice listening to, to you at the background. I just said, okay, I'm going to start participating. Um, okay. Generally, I think there's just smoke and mirrors. Um, if we're talking about Davido's case specifically, of course, it's sad what happened to him. I don't know. Is the child really dead? I believe they said the child was in a coma or something like that. I'm not sure on the details. But um, regardless, it's not what happened to him. But putting the blames on um, the staff, I don't know. I think that's just pushing, pushing it too hard. These guys are, you have a point. When the old guy is there, they probably will work a bit harder. And that's such a general feel in Nigeria. I think people are a little bit lazy or they don't take their job so seriously. And um, I mean, it's sad what happened to him. But putting the blame and saying, oh, the parents are at fault, the government is at fault, why does he have a swimming pool and everything? I mean, uh, I don't know. It's, it's not my point to say. I can't. I don't have the facts, so I can't say who is to blame. Was there a lifeguard there? Swimming pool, there are regulations around it. Can you just put a swimming pool on your rooftop and say that's a pool? You know, there are different things there. So we, I think this is almost an impossible question to answer. So 
I have not much Thank to you. say in that part. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the, the point that I think we should all think about is laws come about as a result of accidents, situations like this. So the question is, do we have the laws in place? Uh, we are building a, a wider middle class that will eventually have more people having swimming pools. What are the guidelines? You know, uh, if you look at the other societies, it's not just Western society, laws come into place because something happened and somebody thinks, okay, this is what we're going to do to prevent that from happening. It doesn't mean it to stop happening at all. So, and then the, the general issue of um, healthcare, safety, you know, like C CPR, ordinary CPR in Nigeria. Uh, think about when you were growing up. In my high school, I never heard about CPR. You know, if somebody is, you know, just a small accident, nobody knows what to do. You know, there is no basic first aid in, in any, up to now, in your local secondary school, wherever you went to school, there might not be just basic first aid for people. The one that I think we should all think about is when you see a scene of an accident in Nigeria, see a video from a scene of an accident, you see people who are still alive, they are struggling, but people are basically watching them, calling God, taking pictures, and they are dying. You know, there is nothing like the most important thing is to take this person to the hospital. There is nothing like when you get to the hospital that somebody will attend to this person. There is nothing, you know, so that's what we should be thinking about. And, and society is changed as a result of incidents like this, as tragic as they are. Yeah. Uh, even even right. if even right. if you, you, you are willing to take the patient to the hospital, Mike. there is no ambulance. Right. There is no ambulance to do that for you. You have to look for bicycle or, or bike. You know, uh, see. Dr. Damages, I grew up in mm. Aba, Abia mm. State. And personally, every, the way I look at my life, I look at my life like that I'm living on borrowed time. When I grew up, I, I wouldn't say I suffered, you understand? I grew up, my father did well, my grandfather did well. So we were members of the Aba Sports Club. If anybody know, grew up in Aba. So a basketball club has like a golf course and has and a swimming pool. You understand? Um, you know, the funny thing is kids died in that swimming pool all the time. And there was no regulation or anything. Okay, after maybe a couple of kids died, drowned in that pool, they didn't say, okay, let's put a fence around or something. They will probably hire like a lifeguard who doesn't even know how to swim. So the day I drowned, right? <laughs> I drowned like this international standards with who I drowned in like the deep, deep end. I drowned and it was just over for me. And then this thing, Dr. Damage said that he never heard about CPR. Do you know that for some reason on that day, somebody that knew how to do CPR in about of all places was there? Where this person came from, I don't know. They fished me out, my lifeless body, I was on the floor there, and this person commenced CPR. And that's how I came back. Blood vessels all blown. Like if you ever seen somebody drown before, blood vessels in your eyes blow up and everything. Your eyes will be red for like months. That's how this person commenced CPR and didn't even wait for me to thank the person. Because when I came out of the choking, just like if you ever seen a car hit somebody, when the person falls, the person stands up and starts running. Just like I came up, I started running. They they had to chase me down and calm me down. Like, hey, stop, stop. Here's your cloak and everything. I packed my stuff, went home. I was hugging my brothers and sisters. They didn't even know what was happening. And the advice my mother kept telling me, don't go to that pool. Go and play long tennis. You don't know how to swim. You understand? Know when I was drowning, these things were splashing, but I was just like, ah, this is how I finished. This is, I was just, I went down, just like an engine block, went down, and that was it. After struggling to breathe and everything, and somebody performed CPR. So th that's the thing. Like I said, Nigerians, we forget a lot. After this, next to the next thing, nobody's going to create laws. Our, our, um, 
our, our lawmakers, they're not creating any laws. They're creating laws to marry young girls. You understand? Nobody's creating any law to benefit the country. You understand? So that's we that's that change is something we would have to create ourselves. Or even if you have a friend who is influential, who is rich, you understand? Don't be scared to tell them, hey, oh boy, you need friends for here. You understand? Some people wouldn't have so many people wanted to tell probably tell him this, but they know they might lose the benefit what they get from him. Because once you say that, they will say, Ah, are you wishing me bad luck? You understand? You have to have friends that you can tell things to, no matter the context. That's why that's why that's why we don't need to wait for friends. We need the law that will force everybody to do something, you know. Go ahead, uh, James. James, go ahead. James, I said, James, go ahead. You are hearing me? Are you hearing me? Bro? Are you hearing me? Okay, good. Um, the laws are already in place in Nigeria because at independence, I think there, 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 there's an organization they call Standards Organization of Nigeria. Okay, we James, hold on, hold on, hold on, James, James, hold on, hold on. I don't want to stop you when you when you said that before. I wanted to stop you. As far as I know, the standard organization of Nigeria is looking at items that are imported into the country. No, 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 no. And, it's, and it's beyond that. It's beyond that. Here in the Gambia, okay. we have it. When I was living in Israel, I also saw it there. The SON the, is a very elaborate organization, but they are not enforcing or they are not doing what they are expected to do. The laws are already there in place. We use British standards. The Americans have their own standards. Germans, each country has its own standards. That's one thing. Then secondly, uh, this issue of people taking photographs when people are in distress. Um, I remember reading a book uh, titled Pigeon Project by Avin Wallace. The map addressed it, I mean, mentioned it there. The, you see, when journalists are being trained, they are indirectly um, they, 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 are, they are indirectly indoctrinated to go after sensational events. And that distress moment is normally upset. I mean, it creates sensation in the minds of the public. They are not told to do that, but indirectly, that is what they ask them to do. So this is why most of the time, particularly journalists, when, when they see a building burning, the first thing they have to do is to take photographs, videos and everything before they do any other thing. They are any they are living. So that explains that. And in a country where, let's say, robbery victims are being treated as, I mean, uh, as, I mean, as armed robbers, people are always very, very cautious. When accidents happen on highways, people just feel of concern. Because if you are going there to rescue them, if you are not careful, I mean, you find yourself in a very nasty situation. That is the country we come from. The, the, the common denominator is that we are not enforcing our laws at all. Law enforcement will take care of most of these problems we are addressing. Thank you very much. All right, Simbad. Exactly, James has hit the nail right on the head, enforcement. Um, I, might have, I might change the topic up a bit, but generally in Europe, in America, there are rules the same rules are also there, or they could be there in Nigeria, but the implementation of them, the enforcement of the law, that's a different thing entirely. And um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with um, the philosophy of the dictatorship is actually very important to, um, I'm losing the words now. What Nigeria needs is, the, the topic you talked about is Nigeria deserves um, the president we deserve or something yeah. like that. Okay. The president we need versus the one we deserve. Okay. Now. You, you are trying to talk about benevolent dictatorship. Is that well, what there's a about? difference. There's a balance. The, I don't know okay. if eight months, if eight years is enough to implement a president. If a president can change the country in eight years or even in four years because the corruption in Nigeria is, 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 is actually very, very deep. And I'm of the opinion that sometimes Nigerians need koboko because you cannot just be democracy. I mean, before democracy worked in Europe, they actually had to um, 
monarchy developed the system. They created the institution in there. So before you can actually make a system work, you have to set up the foundations for it. If everybody is just chaotic, I don't think one man can negotiate with them and be nice with them and they vote and they vote him out. Nothing will get done. The reason why Europe is where it is is because the monarchy developed it in a specific way and later on let the people run it. Why do you think uh, Rwanda is moving the, in the right path right now? It's because they had, I mean, they have a so-called democracy, but it's very important that they had a strong man to hold the country and move the country in one direction. And he couldn't do it in four years. He couldn't do that in eight years. It's something we should think about. Food for thought. So, um, All right. Yes, uh, let, let me let me correct uh, Mr. James, right? Standard organization of Nigeria has nothing to do with building or swimming pool. Their main focus, their, their primary as, um, uh, objective is to oversee the processes and uh, satisfying uh, materials for product that mainly has to do with commerce. It has nothing to do with development of lands and, or buildings or anything. They don't have that. So when it comes to That's standard right. organization of Nigeria, they have no business with that. But however, That's what I my thought, yeah, I'm not too sure, but I think <laughs> it's, um, it has to do with urban and regional planning. These are the ones responsible for this. However, like like uh, Mr. Simba said, corruption has taken over, so they don't even enforce anything. I don't. I'm not even sure if they have such law in Nigeria. But if they do, corruption wouldn't let them enforce it in any way. All right, thank you. Uh, Blackstone, I know you wanted to say something. Yeah, um, I was almost going the same, um, the same route with uh, Ken. First time we are agreeing. Yeah, I wanted to, to uh, correct um, Mr. James that um, SON does uh, only um, try to control the quality of products that come to the country. So different countries have their own quality and um, in Europe, we have the, we have a ISN, ISON, right? So, um, SON will not tell you what what you have to have in your house, what you have to build in your house, but to look at look at the quality of the materials you use in your building or um, and things like that. So they're not after um, the design or what you're going to have in your house. Uh, coming back to the swimming pool, I can remember an, an incident that happened years back at the University of Benin, right? At that time, University of Benin has a very standard swimming pool, right? And um, there was a time somebody got drowned in the swimming pool. And after that incident, they came up and fenced around the swimming pool that no student can go in only when they are allowed to use the swimming pool. Right, so I think uh, it depends on um, on the administrators, right, or the individual that need to create most of the time the safety. Uh, what are they going to safeguard the the use or access to the swimming pool, right? And after them, nobody died again in that swimming pool at the University of Benin. So I was trying to refer to Mike when he was saying that they had a swimming pool in the golf course and then it was drawn in it, right? So. If people were always drowning there, right, they're supposed to face it around and create a, a, such a, a, a method that whereby they can secure people or prevent people from going into, that, into the promises of the swimming pool. All right. All right. Thank you. John Abba. Uh, as for uh, our sister, let us say we should not speculate on what happened on the gathered all the facts. This is how we put pressure for, to David Doe and the family to come up and tell us exactly what happened. So it's a normal thing when it comes to journalism that people started saying this is their own view. It's left for them to come and clear the air. So there's nothing wrong in what we are doing here by talking about it. It's a child that died and we all sympathize with the family and we want to go to the bottom of it. So that such thing could, should not happen to any other person again. We are not here rejoicing over it. Secondly, when we have people like Kene, I can bribe people in Nigeria because they can afford it. We can't have <laughs> we, we can't we can't have a good Nigeria because the, the people are doing their job. And instead of you take a, a, a tough stand, say, you know what? If it could go to police station, 
Let's go and all go to court. Let's go. Let's stand there. But it's a really good thing to take a cheap way and talk the tough talk. So it's not, and there are people here who talk like Buhari and they want to have a, good, a better result. So that is what it is. All right. <laughs> Mr. Right. Mr. One... Mr. No, it's not true. It's not true. You know. You, know. you are finished today. No, yeah, no, the thing is this, in as much, okay, the truth is this, in as much as I said, okay, settle the letting go, my brother insisted that he's not going to give it that, and he did not, but I, on my own, I asked him to just settle them, he said he's not going to, because everything was intact, however, he eventually didn't, do you understand, but oh, if he had given, I would still stand on my point, just give them, let them carry their while ago, but he refused, you are uh, I'm your going to do that, you no, are your you, you gave, I, I, you, you don't expect no. It's, you don't expect me to, you know, um, push out everything. In the worry, However, no. We would arrest you. Not what you are saying. No, I'm not talking about arrest. I'm one person that never gives bribe. I will never give you bribe, no matter what. I will never. This is me. You know, people that know me, you know, can attest to that. I will never. Instead, me and you, you know, we change them for each other. Okay, Mr. Kenan. Mr. Kenan, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yes. No, 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 black, black, so no, we're not asking questions, you know, we, we are, we're rounding up. Um, so, one more, one more topic before we, we round up. Um, it's actually something I believe that is more important that happened this uh, week, which was about Tinubu and um, how he tried to influence the politics in the, in, um, in the Southwest. Let me let me find the video and play the video of um, um yeah just a minute okay this is not just right, about religion see. ethnicity or even who you know that's talking about um having a godfather how do you think we can overcome this thank you very much anybody who's thinking the way you are thinking you should vote for one as you vote for uh or be that cafe He's the only man that unites the country. Anything outside it, you are dividing the country the more. Right in there, Jim Tokwe. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a passing message at 94. How many of my age are alive? But we must warn you people. You can't have a united country where you discriminate against a section of the country. If you want us to separate, let us separate it. All right, that wasn't the video I wanted to play. I wanted to play a video where he was um, defending uh, the position of our Fanny Ferry, which came under attack uh, when Tinubu visited uh, the former leader of our Fanny Ferry. So uh, I want us to discuss the dynamics because, first of all, Tinubu was um, the Southwest is his home state, I mean, home area, region. And for a point, people felt that he didn't have to worry about the Southwest, but it appears as if now he has to take the train, campaign train back home. Maybe he got his sense that he's losing out in the Southwest and he came and part of the move is basically to divide the Afeni Ferry in, a, in a, as a way of, of um, making sure that he will secure some votes that he believed should be his. his. Um, what do people think about what the drama where this um, there were fight over who is the actual leader of Afeni Ferry and then statements being issued, videos being played? I'll find you that video before we finish the conversation. Um, let me start with you. Who who has a good understanding? It doesn't have to be everybody. If you have a good understanding of what's going on, you can raise your hand. I will come to you. Anybody? <laughs> let me hear Janaba. Can I, hold on. Let me hear Janaba. Let me see what Janaba knows about the Fanny Ferry. Fanny, uh, Janaba, go ahead. Is, uh, that is the western, uh, when you say the western part of Niger Nigeria, the Yoruba uh, Action Alliance. So what mm -hmm. uh, Atinubu did was a very smart move because the head of it for the past one year have endorsed Peter Obi. And he sees that the older version of them, where he went, there is a reason for him to go. Uh, he, as 
uh, Tunubu may not be very articulate. Maybe the campaign people do that divide and control strategies. I think it's a good move for him politically, and I applaud them for dividing. That's how that's how politicians work. It's about uh, divide and control in any way you can possibly to win. The end of the game, you want to win. So what he did is a smart move. And, and the only good thing I see up to it is that uh, people have grown to a level that say, no, well, you can divide us the way you want to divide us, but this is my stand as a person. And I give uh, uh, Debanjo, uh, I give him a credit for standing his ground, but it was also a smart move at Tinubu campaign. All right, thank uh, you. Can doctor, so, Please, um, let so me when it comes to Af right. Afeni Ferre, uh, Fanny Ferry, just like uh, Ohades and Debo um, in the southeast. So when you come to the southwest, uh, Fanny Ferry is one um, social cultural organization in the southwest that um, mostly speaks for um, the Yoruba people. Um, um, their leader, which is Pa Adebanjo, um, anointed Pitobi, and that is why, where Fanny Ferry stands. Uh, before the former leader, what's his name? Faro Fasoranti, Fasoranti, right? Yeah, um, yeah. He was the, he was the former leader. So as it stands today, he has no right. He has no legal authority to adopt anybody. He may do that on his own personal ground, but not for the Afenifere. The only leader that Afenifere has who can anoint anybody or adopt anybody is Adebanjo, which he already did. Um, the latest news that came yesterday was the same Fasoranti, the former leader, made a U-turn coming back again to agree with Pa Adebanjo. Maybe we've not heard that. Um, what Tinibu did wasn't a smart move. Tinibu is a troublemaker. Tinibu, he's a tout. So what he did, just as he has been doing it, is to cause confusion within the Afeni Ferret. As it stands today, Tinubu did not succeed. And I, I don't think he will succeed dividing Afeniferi. Afeniferi that I know are too smart for that. Tinubu is too small. It's just an aboro to divide uh, Afeniferi. That's all I can say. Hey, can right, you, thank you, Paul. Hey, Paul you, this ahead. issue is a little bit complicated, as you can think. Um, first of all, if you could remember very well, the bandit killed his daughter. And um, when the bandit killed his daughter, um, then Ibo was still out. Ibo was still in Nigeria. They all came out and fight and ever that thing. So they were very, very mad that Tinubu could not even go there and everything. You know, that Tinubu is not doing anything for the fight of the Southwest, the Yoruba people. Tinubu couldn't do anything. So Tinubu is using this move. He go beyond <clears throat> Tinumbu asked first already for, for him to anoint him. He also went behind the scene. He's begging to plead back. And first already, actually, is the leader of, of the Afeni Ferry group. But he gave this position to uh, Ayo Adebanjo. Adebanjo, who holds the position, first already now just said back again, I think it was yesterday or Thursday evening that he has taken his position back. So it's very, very complicated right now that he has taken his position back. I think they did it, they don't do it like in terms of a vote state or anything. They do it based on age because he's still a little bit older. When he gave a pa ayo ade banjo, he gave it because of he was struggling with his health so bad. And now due to the issue that is coming when pa ayo ade banjo said, um, he did it, and he, he did not even talk to Faso Roti before he did what he did. Faso Roti now just take his position back. So it's a big drama going on now. That I can tell you. Okay. Thank you, Paul. I think Kenny has the current situation because there was a U-turn again at the end, and he issued a statement, this time not on a video. I'm trying to find that video he, where he said he took back, back the position that he had. Um, CM, let me come to you. You have anything to say about this? CM? No, no comment. <laughs> no comment. Okay. Um, no comment. Um, Simbad, Simbad, do you have anything to say? Not necessarily. Um, generally, I think there's just um, 
you guys hit the um, the ball. It's called divide and conquer. Just put some chaos there and let's see where the balls lay. I think um, hopefully Nigerians are smart enough to look to see exactly what's going on. And they can see, they make up their mind and they know who works for them. I don't know. Saying he, um, they should vote for Tinubu just because he's Yoruba, I think the Yorubas are smarter than that, I think. So mm. we'll see. I don't have much to say in this topic, actually. I don't know. All right. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can, can, can I just add something? Um, I think that it's marks of desperation on the part of uh, Tinubu. And so far, he's been trying to catch up. That's all he's been doing. And having a former leader endorse you is not a valid endorsement. It's like going to the Obasanjo uh, to decide something for Buhari is crazy. Um, and that is in, this thing invalid in the first place. And um, I think this whole thing is coming. You see, Tinubu shouldn't have to be groveling like this. It tells you what is going on in the higher echelon of society right now. And um, all those people that are saying that Peter Obi doesn't pass, they will be surprised what happens. Because there are a lot of people in APC, PDP, that will support Peter Obi right now. And uh, this is what you are seeing. And the, even a Yoruba cultural group feels the need to support uh, Peter Obi because they understand that Peter Obi's election alone, for better or for worse, just his election alone, is going to bring the Nigerian family more closer together than it has ever been since uh, the 70s. Because he, the Igbo people have not been in such a position for a very, very long time, and they felt marginalized for decades now. And that will help heal that rift just on that alone. He has not even done anything yet in office. And then he goes on to do some of the things he's talking about. Then this is why the old heads think that it's a good idea to have him, um, uh, this in uh, Peter Obi become president. I have so many other reasons that I believe in than what most people uh, like to, uh, different from what most people like to uh, describe. And I think that's what these elites are seeing too. If you see Obas, uh, uh, IBB saying that he doesn't want these two old men, and in short, just ask any of them. <laughs> just ask any of them. Even Peter, Obi, I don't even think Wiki wants any two of them. Autumn doesn't want any two of the Atiku and Tinubu. They don't want them. So it tells you that something, there's going to be a shift that is going to happen. And watch it. If Peter will be start struggling, you'll find this will come out openly to back him. Thank you. All right. Any other comment from anybody else? All right. So, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, the black song, go ahead. Okay, um, what I just said is that um, we all should know um, Mr. Tunubu is a, is, a, is a very desperate man. And uh, I guess that uh, he's trying to do everything possible to get us support from all the Yoruba elites. That is why he back um the African leader, president leader, to go and meet the old leader in that point to create a confusion within that group. But what I, I know that, um, anyway, this is soon, it will soon die down at most two weeks. Uh, when we hear about it again, nobody will know about it again, right? And then, um, and with the support that Obi is having all around the whole country, I guess that most of the supporters of the other parties will vote for Obi as a pre as a president in the presidency, we vote for him. Even all the five governors that have that have um, having issue in PDP, I guess that they will support. Their, they will tell their leaders, their people to vote for Peter Obi as a as as a, as a president. But in the other pools, right, that where uh, they definitely vote for their own party. So. At the moment, I see Peter B having the actual edge above all the, the other two candidates, uh, Atiku and um, Tunubu, because uh, from the precedents we are seeing that you know everything now the the march and everything is no more there. But I think that um, the support is coming in. They are just being silent. They want to talk, like I said before, as from January, that's you actually know when 
the the pendulum is 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 going to right where the masses are going to right, and I guess that um, if Obi can continue the the present momentum right, he has a chance uh, definitely. Uh, and then right. no matter what, no matter what Tunubu do or uh, what the article we do, I think he has a chance. Mm. All right, thank you so much. Okay, let's. Uh, Simba wanted to say something. Do you? Yeah, Simba. Yes, I have. Okay, um, mm. Let's don't underestimate Tunubu. Um, actually, I thought Obi was going to win in a landslide until I saw the rally Lagos for Tunubu. He does have a hold. That thing. this is not the time to slow down if you are for Peter Obi. Um, I think now is he has to communicate more to the people in their language, not just necessarily in their language, but he has to make them understand why they should not vote for Tinubu. Clearly, if they say Tinubu is the one that built Lagos, or really speak the facts, tell them, Do you have running water in your house? Do you know a single building that has running water? Not from borehole. Why, under whose watch, whose watch the, the um, borehole tax start? These are the kind of questions that he has to communicate to them. So this has to be pushed. It has to be almost like a propaganda. It has to be shouted on the mountain. It has to be pushed regularly. Just here on social media is not enough. It has to be pushed, make people understand why shouldn't they vote for him? Because you might be surprised if you're just thinking um, the people, of course, the people are smart enough and they will just vote for Peter Obi. That's a different thing entirely. That's not necessarily the case. There are people that are still, for some odd reasons, still loyal to Tinubu. And that's just how it is. Uh, Mr. Simbad, yeah, let, right. me, let me correct an impression about the um, Tinubu's rally in Lagos. Um, the two rallies that they organized in Lagos, um, Two things happened. The first rally um, was uh, a kind of a deceptive rally. Uh, this is what I mean by that. There is this woman that always come out annually to um, do what they call work for cancer awareness, right? So the state, the Lagos state governor used those women. He forced them to come out for that cancer awareness that particular time. So uh, if you watch the video, you will see that the women they wear pink, so they are, they are known for wearing pink. Pink is their kind of uh, is, is their uniform, and they do have insignia for cancer awareness. So if you watch the video, you see that when they are doing the coverage, they blur the insignia so that the masses, the people, won't see that this is actually work for cancer awareness. So that was what happened. So that pool, that crowd that you see, is not for terrible. They were actually manipulated. So what Tinibu boys did was to session their cameras and then front their own members with APC insignias so that it would look as if it is APC uh, mash. So that was happened. That was what happened. The second one was that the Arboros, the Tinibu Arboros in Lagos, actually forced market women that they must come out and do a work for Tinibu. They were forced. So watch the news. You will see that people were forced. If they don't do that, they will not be allowed to sell in that market anymore. Remember, Tinibu's daughter is the ER lodger, the owner of the market in Lagos State. So it's a forceful work for Tinibu. I believe no right-thinking Yoruba man, educated man, will be supporting Tinibu at, his, at, at that age, you know, uh, conversing for, for presidency. Yorubas are smarter than this. So all those work that you're seeing is fake. All right, Mike. And and if it is true, let that be replicated in other states. Why is it just Lagos? There are we have Bondo, we have Osun, we have Ekiti. So let him go there and replicate same work. Let's see. Um, Mike, go ahead. For me, I know Tinubu is a rootless individual who would step on anybody's neck to get what he wants. If, for example, Tinubu does not care about our feelings. Because if he cared about our feelings, Shetima wouldn't be his vice president. This is an, an alleged Boko Haram sponsor. This is the individual who was governor that the whole world felt the terror of Boko Haram when they kidnapped the Chibok girls. Like, don't they have a press 
individual in the APC that will tell Tinubu, ah, Baba, this is this is bad though. Somebody may have said, ah, Shetima is bad news. You understand? And he'll say, I don't care. That's how someone who's ruthless and who doesn't care to divide and conquer. You understand? He doesn't care about what people, how we feel. These politicians don't care if we partake in the election or not. They just they'll still do the same ruthless things they do. People are going to die. It's a pattern. People are going to die on election day. Election will be rigged. Uh, some 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 establishments will be put ablaze on that day. So while the, you're busy quenching the fire, the people that are snatching the ballot boxes are taking it. You understand? So it's just a pattern. And I don't like it when people say Obi or Shore should tell adults to vote for them or to tell adults that, to see the reason why they shouldn't vote for Tinubu. We know they suffer tired for that country. Are we not, are we not tired of suffering? The, uh, uh, Ahmed in the North, is he not displaced, living in an IDP camp, suffering? Is his, is his family members not being kidnapped uh, by bandits in, the, in their farm? Are they not being butchered? Or the person in the East that's sitting at home every day, every couple of days, are you not being displaced? Are you not losing income? People that suffered flood now, how many states now that suffered this flooding? Are you telling me that we, you need P2B to come there and tell them, ah, listen, you guys are put up with bad governance? You understand? We, we should take some responsibilities. We, we, we shouldn't be... If, you, if any adult who decides to vote the wrong person, they should deal with the consequences for the next eight years. That's it. You understand? All right. Thank you. It's yeah. annoying. We have to, yeah, we have to change topic now. James, James, go ahead. One more. I have nothing to say about this. Uh, totally ignorant of what is going on. Okay. But you were raising your hands. I thought you yeah, had something to say. I was signaling that. Uh, the oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. Okay. All right. Who, who, who wants to say one more person? And then we have to go. Who? Okay. Uh, Simbad, go ahead. Okay, the people are ignorant. Don't, I mean, if the majority of people are smart, Nigeria will not be where it is today, period. That's just how it is. You have to make them know why. I mean, I saw some interviews where people were asking, well, who would you choose? The people that picked Obi, they actually sometimes knew what to say. Some people that took Kwanko, so they knew what they were saying. Some people just picked Tinubu, and they're like, why? You say, yeah, because I'm um, in this party. He has given me money. How do you think Nigerians take food like 1,000 or 5,000 naira for their vote? It's not because they are smart. If they were smart, they would say, okay, how much is the minimum wage? 18,000 per month. Okay, I'll calculate. If you give me 18,000 times 12 times 4, then I will take, then you can buy my vote. Then that makes sense. Then you can buy people's vote. But if someone gives you 5,000, 10,000 for your vote, that's the stupidity to the highest level. And there are people like that. Don't get it twisted. People are like that in Africa. And how do you change their mind? How do you make it right. known? Yeah. That's a good point. I always wanted to say that, that um, you know, people who talk about, about the voters as if uh, we've done whatever position you have, whatever side you're supporting, You've done enough work to educate them, to get them to where you are so that they will make the right choice. You know, I don't think that has been done enough. And we keep blaming them for uh, for whatever way they are thinking. Anyway, I, I want to bring up two issues before we continue. We uh, we have to also round up. Kwan Kwaso just uh, unveiled his manifesto. Uh, forefathers, you should be happy about this. He's um, deciding that he's going to hire 750,000 soldiers into the military. Maybe he's been watching this show. Um, I see that Ovia is on the comment section. We'll get him up here very soon to tell us what's going on, whether he's leaking information from this show, this show to Kwan Kwaso. 
uh, forefathers, I think you should be happy, happy about that. But I wanted to point out that tomorrow, our guest for tomorrow, let me let me put it up. Um, the, the former chief security it's officer, Abacha's chief security officer. Yeah. Um, not ADC, okay, whatever you call him. Okay, but, well, uh, yes, so. breaking news that yes, a court so. in uh, a, a court in um, where in Kaduna sacked him today. Um, the courts ordered the uh, INEC to remove his name as the candidate for for uh, uh the party that is um action alliance. So hopefully, he will. Be here tomorrow, and he will start by explaining to us what's going on. Um, yeah. So anyway, but that that's what I wanted to bring up. Um, go ahead, uh, forefathers. Yeah, can I, I I think it's a good thing that they are beginning to realize the core of the problem. You can have as much equipment, as much intelligence. You will just all it's good that is going to happen is that the people will be kidnapping people. You'll be watching them on TV because you don't have people to go there to intercept them. You need more people on the ground to be able to hold the territories that we occupy in Nigeria. Nigerians are difficult people just being Nigerians alone. Look at what Nigerians do when they go overseas. <laughs> then, then you under police, under police them again, under, under uh, control their territory. So, so we definitely need to fix that because if we fix that, you'll find that stability will return. And most of us that are in the West right now, We'll be able to return to Nigeria and actually feel at home. What I wish for Nigerians is that they are able to come out in the middle of the night and not blink and worry twice about their safety. That is how a country is meant to be. And uh, I, I'm glad that uh, Kwan Kwan so is doing this now. At least it's coming out openly and I hope he keeps repeating it so that other candidates, if they see that this is a, a winning idea, they too will start heading in that direction because that's the only part to our salvation. Everything we talk about here that part if it's not fixed the rest is just waste of time i can tell you that if i was the one sitting at the other side of the fence i'm from a different country watching nigeria that's the one i would never want to be fixed if i'm an enemy of nigeria because if that part is fixed i can't manipulate nigeria as easily as i would if uh, the that area is remains as it is right now so i hope that that is a sign of things to come um in terms of what the previous gentleman said about you know educated nigerians one experience i had this week was um we were they were complaining about a hospital that you know people were lying on the floor and they couldn't um you know do anything about it you know terrible conditions that people are dying and i said you know what if everybody if 50 million nigerians put one thousand naira, you can build a reasonably good hospital that can prevent all that nonsense from happening almost every month and most Nigerians spend a long time pushing back against that. Why should we do that? Because they are thinking that I'm saying that they should pay to the government. Nobody says you should pay there. You can pay, do it yourself. You can build, you can come together, put the money, it goes to a bank account, and you guys select a contractor that you know is highly reputable, and you build this yourself. When you start taking control of your system, watch how the government reacts. Watch how the authorities react. They will rush in because they don't want to lose legitimacy. Because a sign of this happened last, just how many months ago, when the Parents Teachers Association wanted to intervene in the ASU strike. They wanted to um, start paying for the students. Guess what? ASU rejected it. And within a month, the federal government and ASU has fixed the problem. You see how people ask, you see, when people start taking control of their system, you see that the authorities will pay attention even more. It's just like everything else. If you don't make yourself worthy, why would anybody serve you? It's just what when I said then when I was saying that people were pushing back and some of the guys in the east were like, We are already doing this in the ground, we are doing it in Igbo, we will put a street light and all the rest. We'll do, do that. I say I'm asking for one thousand naira. And if you're already doing it, you should be agreeing with me. It tells you that this and one guy was telling me this was impossible in Nigeria. You can't but you already I told him you're already doing it in Nigeria. But you're not doing it in a sustainable level because he was complaining about um this in the maintenance. But if it was 1,000 Naira, you are building hospital every every month and you are at the same time paying, repairing and fixing things, it's not going to break the economy. And I'm talking about 50 million, not the entire workforce even now. 
not the poor ones that cannot afford it. And I know we can afford a lot more than that. If they tap into the diaspora to fix these things, we can do them. And I'm more solution oriented. I'm complaining, complaining is not going to solve our problem. And to get those Nigerians in that meeting, funny enough, we ended up agreeing. Because it turns out that they've already been doing it. It's just that they were not doing it in an efficient and a sustainable way. And the solutions are right there on the ground. I just hope that when we have this discussion, we are looking at actual practical solutions. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so what we're going to do now is I want to I want to get um can we get two people to give us the room to get a um, Ovier to come and talk about Juan Coso and this idea of 700,000 thousand soldiers is interesting to me. <laughs> I see Kenneth. 750,000 precisely. Let, let's not make me reduce the number. That is, that is very funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting to me too. So let's, let's, let's get uh, let's you get but, 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 but uh, Ru Rudolph though, Rudolph, let me ask this. Is it, is it, is it, is it proper for people that claim that Nigeria is cost, uh, is, is useless and all the rest, and they, don't, they are not going to die for Nigeria to even have an opinion. Because their opinion, they don't care no, about the country. No, they don't care I, about the have, country. No, they they don't care, care about an opinion. No, we, care, we care for the country so much that we are profile, you know, uh, providing solutions for, the, for its numerous problem. However, for us to like randomly come out to die for nothing, doesn't make sense. So no, we are trying to present. No, oh, oh, no, hold on, die. hold on. You before before dying, before you choose the part of dying, you should first and foremost uh, uh, put uh, solutions in place. Try to do something right first. And if that is not working, this is when you now say, "Okay, I've tried all I could, and it's not working. Time to take it by force." But you've not done anything yet, and you just want to carry gun to go and die. Like somebody from a, a, a Kanu State, the popular candidate in Kanu State, Konkoso, that is saying that uh, he's going to recruit 730,000 uh, 700, uh, um, soldiers. You are recruiting 730,000 children, 750. 750. children of the damn trolling that you'll be paying them 45,000 naira monthly salary. 45,000 naira, that's what wow. you're paying them. And you give them gone. You give them gun to go and face Boko Haram that are, sophisc that are uh, uh, sophisticated in, in, in weaponry to face them for 30,000 Naira. And again, the leaders, the, 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 the military leaders are working with, the, with Boko Haram. You, you fail to are do you the right serious? thing. Are you I'm serious? I'm telling you, my brother. Okay, so I'm what, telling you. okay let me ask so, you this. What is he going to so, do that will satisfy you in terms of keeping the country thank safe? Thank you. Thank you. First and foremost, Restructure that very country. That oh, you know, leadership, okay. that leadership, that army leadership should be restructured first. The country in its entirety, the constitution must be restructured before you can fix anything. If you don't do that, try what do from now to nothing is going to be you fixed. Are one of, you are nothing. one of those NAM. Yes, an arm robber coming to the house to come and rob us. Um, I'm sorry, my dear. Not until the country is restructured. It, no, um, no, can no, we buy a house no, next, no, next, no, next year? No, 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 no. Not until the country. Not, not you are the, PC, hold on, not hold on. You are the kind. You are the kind that make every no, excuse you, you, for inaction. To, no, to, come on, stop it. All right, I stopped two of you. Um, yeah, because we have to get other structure and other no, here. Because my, it's making uh, a inaction. No, no, no. How no, can I stop people when they come out again on their own? Um, I want to well, welcome Femi to the show. Take. Femi, welcome to the okay, show. Okay. Because you guys overshadow uh, some people because they don't talk so much. You guys think you can. My... Femi, welcome to the show. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Good afternoon, Dr. Damages. Yeah, Femi is here because Femi wants to explain the um, Femi Ferre thing that you guys misunderstood what's going on. Femi, is that why you came on? Uh, that's one of the reasons. Uh huh. All right. So uh, I, I saw the comment. You guys are laughing. I saw the comment, and I, I'm trying to get some people here who have insights. You know, some people Thanks. just 
yeah, thank God I thank God thank God I said no comment. So I'm not <laughs> let me if, if, yeah, I said CM, no comment. CM understood that you know it's not his uh, the top, it's not where he specializes. So I said no comment. Uh -huh. so, so, yeah. so Femi, Femi, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, tell these people so, that what they don't understand. So I I will not claim knowledge of everything and anything. However, uh, one thing I can um, clearly tell you is um, the Tinubu we know, because if I've never told you this before, I'm from Lagos Island. So <laughs> there's nothing spectacular, there's nothing uh, Tinubu is doing right now that's surprising. It's me, I'm just enjoying the whole show. And um, I just, if I'm not uh, someone that's so into prayers, the way Nigerians are. Uh, that they think prayers will do anything without having to work for it. What I would just say is all of what you saw up, got, uh, that got uh, played out, again, it's not surprising to me. Now, keep in mind, uh, just like Paul say, uh, correctly said, the way Afen Ferry is structured, uh, they go in terms of age. Maybe not necessarily exactly that you have to be the oldest, but sim that's similarly the way the structure is. Now, at the time uh, Fasonrati had stepped aside, uh, no disrespect to uh, Bongida, um, it was exactly because of his health. And um, even when he was uh, at the helm, uh, Padi Banjo was, has always been someone that you consider what an abacha, for lack of another, a better example to use would have been to Obabangida. It was always the pillar of uh, Afeni Ferry. Even when you had, um, I forget the name of uh, the uh, original um, uh, originator of Afeni Ferry, that uh, other man, I forget his name now. He, he's always been a key pillar there. In addition to uh, late uh, Yinka Odumaki, who I dearly miss so much. Now, the reason why I, I uh, put this out there is to let you know that what again what you saw play out is not uh, is not a new thing. And I always let people know, especially people that think all Yorubas are betrayers, that every ethnicity, every group, every race, every religion has its own betrayers. For me, uh, what Padi Banjo has always stood on, just as you you uh, heard uh, about from um, our guest last week, is equity and justice, which is part of our major problem in Africa as a whole, and Nigeria in particular. And I'm not necessarily going to just limit it to the major uh, tribes and uh, tribes and religion, because a lot of times we tend to also forget that there are other uh, ethnicities, are, but at least in the, in, with, with the way Nigeria is structured, we know that it's an intentional game that's been played out. I'm not necessarily saying that Obi is the Jesus Christ of Nigeria, but if anything else, where is justice? Where is equity? When uh, the likes of, this morning, I spoke to my aunt, and I'm going to I'm going to quickly round up now. I spoke to my uh, my aunt in Nigeria. Now, if I was the type that just because I was sending money to her, and I'm trying to make her see reason why you cannot tell me because Tinubi because she belongs to one of these. She's about seventy. She's uh, one of those people that have this mindset, and she doesn't have to be old, they have this mindset that, oh, because it's Yoruba. Because she was trying to give me some reasons. I'm like, a lot of what you're telling me makes sense. But out of respect, I'll just let you realize that if this was the Yoruba people have, facing the same kind of uh, injustice, would you say the same thing? But and it, again, like I said, none of what you see playing out is uh, a, fairy, a fairy fairy theory remains a fairy fairy. It's just the, the Tinubu way. That there's no easy that is normal. That's that's uh, surprising to me. Uh, so I'll just uh, rest my kids there. All right. Thank you, Femi. Did Femi answer your questions? <laughs> Anybody? All right. Um, Mr. Scribe, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rudolph. Okay. So um, yeah. I don't know if you are. Uh, yeah, I specifically uh, to. To give there's there's something I just want to highlight. I have a what I will take that angle from history. Ayo Adebanjo is before he became before he joined the action group in 1952. I, I don't I'm not accurate between 1952 and 1956. He was an NCNC member. 
Ade Faras, uh, uh, Fasoranti uh, was a, is a pure action group guy. Uh, I believe he's from Ibadan. So now, if you look at it from a historical standpoint, I don't know if you agree with me. I'm speculating. It's from Ondo State. Ondo State. Oh, okay. Ondo State. Sorry. Okay. So, but uh, also I was checking the, um, there is this, uh, this, these, uh, I'm, I'm trying to draw an here from the Akintola versus uh, 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 Awolowo thing to kind of help predict what or to give some insight on to what may be playing out and how history can actually help determine what could possibly happen and what Etunubu is trying to do. I think this is what is going on. I think uh, we should be very respectful from an ideological standpoint is, is a nationalist because that is the philosophy of an NCNC. Uh, and though, yes, for the reasons that we all know that he moved to action group and he remained in action group, we know that, that's fine. Um, but when you look at it, Tunubu is actually being, he's playing, he understands the base and he's playing it very, very well. And I think it's along this philosophical line that uh, Ayo Ademanjo is looking at it from a principle standpoint, which is, and which is not far away from what an NCNC and Nahoro or the rest or uh, play. He's looking at it from a Nigerian angle and he's supporting a Pitu. Now, if Fatoransi appears to be on the fence because uh, from maybe a, 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 a Pa Ademanjo has already wooed in the majority of the Afeni Ferry. So, like last week, if you listen to the tone from um, um, what's our guest last week, um, Dele, uh, Dele, uh, Dele uh, Faro to me, and if you heard what he said, he said that it was not just Afeni Ferry, it was also uh, a joint session between Pandev. Actually, Pandev were supposed to host it, but because um, uh, Sir Edwin Clark had a uh, bereavement, so he, he uh, Ayodhya Banjo held it. It was Pandev, uh, uh, um, the Middle Belt, uh, and uh, Ohaneze, right? So this is NCNC playing itself out again. I don't know if you guys see the pattern here, and I just wanted to highlight this that this is NCNC playing there. So what Tinubu is actually doing, in my opinion, from a historical standpoint, is trying to follow the path and hint on that sentiment. That sentiment is not gone, right? The Nigeria, what it means to be a Nigerian does not exist. What it means to be Yoruba exists. What it means to be Igbo exists. And that is what Tunubu is uh, playing the, the cards on. And I feel from a historical angle, that is that makes sense. And I wanted to highlight that uh, in the debate as we were going along, that we shouldn't overlook that. And so if that is going to be overlooked, that means that the closer we get to the election, the more local pressure can actually be inferred. Then, uh, then the likes of Adebanjo uh, will just keep a facade. It, when, you, when you look at it, they might only hold it in terms of a facade. They will continue saying what they are saying, but they are only saying it in their own personal, for their own personal selves and their own ideological belief. But is it... You know, looking at the overall of Nigeria, the reason that we don't know what a Ni what Nigeria is, and that Tumbu could still also sway based on tribal sentiment, so it's still very very potent. That's my all right. All right. Thank thank you, Mr. Scribe. Um, Kwanko, so welcome to the show. Ovie. Okay, he's not he's not on camera. Uh, Kalata, welcome to the show. Uh, well, I want uh, Ovie to talk. We came to push the same candidates today. Uh, <laughs> Assalamu. Ovie, welcome to the show. I know. Um, they, they they wanted to come together and they will live together and they will fight. Oh, no, can I just tell Ovie? Shege mutum. Shege mutum. Ovie, unmute yourself, please. Okay, okay. Can, you, can you speak? You, catch you. You. Catch you. I'm yeah. trying to mute myself. It's not, I don't know what's going on. Uh, uh, it is no, obedient. This, this obedient people. <laughs> All right. So, so you are here. You are here because because um, two things. Uncle, so um, just uh, release his manifesto. 
you said it's already a bestseller on New York, New York Times bestseller. We don't know yet, but um, we are going to talk about what's, you tell us what's in there because we've not seen it. We just saw the headlines. But the other thing is uh, the issue uh, uh, of Penny Perry. Um, what, what do you have to say? Because Kulata is here to make sure you said the right thing. Go ahead. I mean, am I, are you talking to me? Yeah, Ovi, yeah, that's you. Oh, 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 sorry, 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 Jama. Um, I would like a Kulata to go first. <laughs> now. Guy, nice life. Guy, you want to talk to so we're not here to talk about our penny fairy. I think our penny fairy. I want to. I think our penny fairy. Just leave Yoruba people to do their civil war. I, I think it's not wise for you guys to touch that space because that's, that's, you don't. You don't ahead, understand the way Yoruba sure. people think. Yeah, You're sure gonna have ten Yoruba people with ten different opinions. So just leave Yoruba people. They'll sort themselves. I think fairy will sort themselves out. But I think we came, Ovia and I, I mean, Ovia gave me a challenge this week to go and actually look at Kwa Kwan Su as a person. Because, you know, we just naturally just dismiss those candidates. Like, he's from the North, uh, Atiku is from the North, Buari is from the North. So I just said, okay, let me go check out this guy. And by looking at him, I'm like, well, if you look at the experience, Kwa Kwan Su has the when you talk about quality experience he's been governor for eight years in a big state he's been a senator he's been a defense minister as all he's also been an ambassador so that kind of like intrigued me because i never really paid attention to kwa kwan so that why is ovia so thrilled about kwa kwan so so when you look at the qualifications the, the guy is pretty qualified then what about his achievements in, in the area of education it's kind of like set up two universities. He set up like um, a state university. One of them is uh, wait, wait, wait. federal. Uh, like Kulata, state... why, Kulata, 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 why are you being political here now? Say it the I, way you I'm, did. You okay, said let me learn now. You let me learn. I'm endorsing Kwa Kwa Su this week. <laughs> two more days. So he, he set up Kano University of Science and Technology. And he later on worked in alliance with another school to set up Northwest uh, University. And in addition to that, he moved like uh, enrollment in schools from 1 million people to 3 million people, uh, 2011 to 2015. So in the space of four years, he moved enrollment by 2 million people. Then he has over 200,000 people that he sent on scholarship abroad. So when you keep looking at a lot of people, especially here, Southern space, people beef the knot. But when you look at what this guy is able to achieve, if you're going to fix Nigeria, you need this kind of guy. Because many, I mean, look, let's be candid. Many say a lot of the issues we have, poverty and all, getting people to school, out of school children, is heavily skewed towards the north. And if you have someone being able to pull up a lot of all these achievements, I'm not done with his achievements in the ed education space. I think right now that I've read his record, I think he has the best record in education. It's not by who is the best in WAEC or who is the best in JAM, but who is the best to lift a significant chunk of vulnerable population into schools. So in addition to setting up two universities, he set up 230 secondary schools, 47 technical colleges, 44 schools of Islam, a Chinese college, a French college, uh, a girls boarding school, and also some other some other boys school in um, in, in Niger in Nigeria Republic, and under his tutelage, they've had two thousand six hundred uh, postgraduates and uh, postgraduate uh, students awarded under him. So, do we think we don't need someone that can lift the knot up? This is not his time. Don't get me wrong. We can't go from Buari to Kwakwanso, but if by the time power is going back to the north, I think someone like Kwakwansu deserves a chance if he can sustain this level of achievement in education. This is amazing because there's no way we're going to be a country without lifting the Northerners out of poverty, getting educated. He's been consistently doing it. And also, he's one of the guys that followed the, term, the template of um, what's the name of that guy from Kano? Amino uh, Kano. Amino Kano. Amino Kano. Thank you. Amino Kano, the people's person. So, we shouldn't be all stuck on Tinubu, Obi, and all. 
look at all these other guys. Like the way I want to study people is I want to support them for a week to just go and read about them. But yeah, I've not read that 176 manifesto. That one is it passed my power, it's too long. 80 pages is fine. Sorry, 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 point of correction, point of correction. That's a blueprint. That's not the way, that's not the manifesto. Yeah, but I'll it's try. A, it's it's a, try I'll manner. try and do a speed through. But on a serious note, though, on a very, very serious note, we're one if we're going to be one country and we have this guy that can pull many people out of poverty and get educated. If power shifts back to the North, Kwakwansu deserves serious attention. That's how I leave it. So right, did, did I do you good? Hey, can we ask uh, questions? I'm no, 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 not yet, not yet. No, not yet, not yet. Um, uh, Obie, go. I, I could answer, yes, I'm actually very, very impressed, you know. Uh, to know that you just actually do decide to do your research on it for a couple of days and you bring up that, that just a little of that guy achievement. Now, everybody keeps saying like people like Tunubu or Atiku have started their presidential journey since uh, 30 years ago. This man is actually fulfilling what Aminu Kanu could not, his dream. So he's building on that man's legacy. So those who are actually following, people like me who are actually following that guy, I'm not following because of anything. I'm following because based on what he has done. You understand? Just like when Donald Trump, they come say, I will do this thing and in do one. This man, based on what he has done over the years, as part of the public, uh, public life, and the movement he has able to build, you go not say, yes, this guy is, is somebody, is, he just is, was born to serve. Not just in purpose for life, did that. And all this scholarship that uh, Kulata was talking about, none of them come to say, I want to reach home. No. It goes into the uh, core, core uh, local areas of Kanu around the country, around the, the northern area. And pick people where we say, five children, six children, they no feed, they no get parents. You could just pick one of them. And that is why the elites around that region no like them. Why? Because now the same school where they they send their kids going abroad, and the same school this man they send all these guys go. So the that thing having the ability to level the playing field is not something that I want to settle down well with those so-called elites in the north. That's why I know the and in the, it's not somebody that is big on media too. So it's not, underground he does his thing. A very quiet guy. You know all that thing again. You ask anybody where they can, how many people actually see in children anywhere they do all this? Thing. But you go see and they go with other people where they visit their family, no get family, follow their graduation and all that. So over the years, he has done something remarkable with it, little that they give me to him in terms of public life. So when I see persons like that, just like Kulata put it, at this point in our nation, a person like that we need, person we go actually say, you know what? It's not about the elite, it's not about no. I will focus on people that actually will grow this country. That's why, even though you ask them, because those, you know, I don't know it all. That's not about economics. I don't know it all. But one thing I will sure do is that I know the people from every loose and corner of Nigeria that will come and play that role. So it's not about, and people go, they say, maybe oh, when he get him, we can't get any money from. That's why the little that I give it to him, it makes sure say, yes, everybody, you know, everybody get them. And so, and at this point, if you even they read the, if you never see say the election is going through rounds, then I don't. I, I think you should stop following the election and just join comedy or something, because people will actually know what is going on. They will tell you say if you ignore concourse, so that's your own risk. So, but as we know, time see the two months is a very very big change. Now talking about the blueprints, you know, aka manifesto. Now book, it detail everything. No, be say. It's not be say, oh, waiting in go do. Whatever I say in go do, you don't do at the small scale, the place where you did. Talking about the school where they talk, and say, when he say jam, it doesn't make sense if you write jam after one year, it don't expire. Does it make sense? He say, when you say jam, supposed to take for four years, and that is what he's going to do. In case you graduate, you know one goes to now, you don't get the resources, you don't have to worry about writing jam again. It's going to last for four years. And he say, why? With the kind of resources that Nigerians have, why and why in Nigeria would they pay to write YA? Why then Bola Tunubu they brag, say at the point, Lagos people no pay YA, can't pay for them. That's an insult. That is your job. Those are Lagos citizens. 
<laughs> so if you pay for it, it's not an achievement. So this man said, no, in Nigeria, as far as you are in Nigeria, you are not supposed to pay to write a war. Hey, that should not be your problem. Just focus on how to make the result. Those are just the lazy things they take care of. So if you go into the details of the uh, the the man, the blueprints, you're gonna say yes. Nobody saying saying you pay people do our overnight night and right now. No. Now but he's a doctor, he reads a very well read person as according to Galadima. Nobody doctor she will able to get on that tree. He was he got it in the lab, so he know what he's doing. So I will I will appeal to anybody will ever get candidates who want support. Just take time, study that guy. You don't have to. I don't, I don't challenge Mr. James before. I challenge Mr. James that go and look in terms of education in the whole country. Nobody has done what he has done. Thank God, Pulata has confirmed it. I challenge right. James to go to the hmm. All right, thank you. Um, we, if they can take questions, um, uh, Mr. Scribe. Is that for Kulata or for Obi? Yeah, yeah, I have a question, and and um, I, I, you know, Kulata spoke about his uh, break, break, uh, his record, but I, wh what do you think is Kwankwaso's ideology? From what everything that you've mentioned, and you know, the idea that he's, he's uh, it looks like he's looking more on a central left kind of guy. Um, you know, he seems he wants to help the proletariat in some way. So what? What would you, in your opinion, say, you know, from what you've read, you know? His economic, his economic ideology on his, so his social ideology is definitely concerned. Sorry, political but, economic ideology. I but his economic, his economic, his economic ideology is left, is, is on the left side. And really, when you look at the country, when you look at Nigeria, the South East, South, South is mostly a capitalist ideology. The Southwest is mostly mixed. And when you go up north, especially the core north, is mostly um, socialist. Socialist leaning towards, I mean, socialist, let's just say left. So that's how the country is kind of like structured from an ideological perspective. But I'm, I'm since it's a single country and it's going to rotate from the north and the south, everybody wants education to be lifted across. This is a guy that has done it. And it's not just about like putting in effort like GEJ tried in vain. So it's not just putting up building and putting up money. There's something cultural and social that needs to kind of like unlock that key. You just can't come from the South and dictate, oh, I built this school for you, you go to that school. Someone needs to be able to relate to that space, to open their minds, to have them go to school. So that's how I'm thinking about it. Like, at least this is someone sincere that wants that is actually putting his money where his mouth is, getting people educated. Is not just uh, getting them for elections. And I mean, a lot of people send people to schools in India, schools in Malaysia, it's all over the world. So it's not, it's a real deal. If we, if, I, honestly, I did not pay him any mind. I'm not even going to lie. It started like a joke. But I went to go and read it. And I'm like, isn't this what we need to be able to like lift up people in the north? People that can relate to them. So, Colata, All right, how you. many non Northerners no. did he give that same free education? Because Kano is a very secular state. I don't know. Now, everybody that lives in Kano will benefit from it. I don't think it will be discriminatory. Why would you live in Kano? I want to believe in terms of campaign like this, he should do things like that. In terms of campaign, he will want to say listen, things like that. Listen, you live in Kano, even though you come from Delta. Which, if you go on and enroll, are they going to turn you back and say because you are from Delta State of Origin? It does happen. It does happen. It does happen. So, so, so very, very it's well. Listen, I'll, listen. Go yeah. I'll go and check. I'll go and check. My research did not get 100%, 100%. to that point. Hundred percent. My research did not get to that point. Is, so I cannot. What I cannot is answer is, you factually. What is doing in Abuja? I can live in Abuja and still there's some there's some uh, segregation there. Very very soft. What do you say? What okay, is hold on, guys. Oh, hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Let's have another. Um, hey, Cho. In as much as I like a Kwankwaso educational um, ideology, the truth is, what is his real ideology? If there's any person so far that has a straightforward ideology, a straightforward manifesto, bold and courageous. He's sure we're right, but we don't talk about him here. He's bold. He's courageous. He knows what he's going there to do. 
and some of us look at it does not have experience really is it the experience of losing and bribing a corruption to buy delegate to enter is that what you people call experience I think it is high time we inject young blood that has the mentality, the capacity, and the ability, and the sadacity to go in and do the needful. So what I has that, but we never talked about it. I don't belong to AAC, but I like his ideology. If I was to become a candidate today, I would follow that kind of ideology. Because Nigeria needs to be clean. And our looted resources that are stored in the Western world, making that to look that they are better than us, needs to be retrieved and brought back home. For example, what they return to, to, to Edo State, the things they stole, and they said they brought some money. Really, how much are they use it to raise in their museum? They need to have returned it with interest and whatever they have collected so far. People like Shawore would have done that. But here we are. We are here promoting and talking of people who are supposed to relax and apologize to her for all they have looted from us, turning our daughters, our children to become Olosho and become Yahoo Yahoo boys and girls and become kidnappers and become bandits. And we are here pretending we don't know why they are doing what they are doing. When you steal people's destiny and you give them poverty and lack and you make them useless and hopeless and they now decided to vet on us in form of kidnapping, in form of banditry, in form of Boko Haram, in form of Yahoo Yahoo plot that they are doing and in form of Olosho and Hukov that have turned our guests who are supposed to be mothers and queens and princess. We've turned that to non entity and we are here talking of Tunubu. We are here talking of Atiku. We are here. Yes, and I like the Kwan Kwaso, but the question is this. Is Kwan Kwaso, is he doing it for every Nigeria? And yes. There is something that must be eradicated from Nigeria. This ideology of saying some people are minority and some people are majority. No, because if that is the case, I will belong to the minority. But I refuse to take that from anybody because we are all human. None of us decided to become from, from this aspect of Nigeria, you call minority. None of us make that decision to God and say we want to come from that. So why will you describe some tribe as minority? And those of you who claim to be majority, yet you are the one crying every day, you are marginalized. So if you want to come marginalization, it is some of us you come minority. So let us remove that 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 title and see ourselves first as human being, then second as Nigeria. There are only two tribes in Nigeria: the tribe of the oppressed and the tribe of the oppressor. Every other thing you are describing is just nothing. That is not what is happening. Because in the tribe of the oppressors, they marry themselves. They go to parties together. They dine together. And they come into our midst, the oppressed, and they use religion, tribe, and, and any other thing to, de to, to divide us. Because they know if we unite, all these things have been a bygone story. For how long are we going to pretend and be so stupid for them to continue to deceive us? If you are still there deceiving yourself and allow them to deceive you, I refuse and I'm coming to educate our young people to know they belong to the tribe of the oppressed so that we can unite and find a way out of our poverty so that in 2027 we will have the economic power and the number. Then we won't sit them from counselor to the presidency. That is my goal. That is my mission. Thank that is my dream. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. It's 27. Come go to hold that space first. So, thank you. Any question? Um. Yeah. All right. Before you have to become president. That's when Doris will become to make his death answer to go to the grave. I don't get money. Now you go to the party. I don't get money. Mama, I don't get bad. I don't get bad. Why you go back you up? When I just talk about money, money that is in the area. Area, area, 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 area. Area, area
area, yes, we'll back you up. But if you go out there, go see. Now we're going to bring you pan and beat you like this. I promise you. Let me see you go now. I don't think you can see me. I don't think you can see me. I don't think you can see me. Area. Area. Babo Jerry. Area. Yeah. Now, so now you're going to use the money too. If you know too much, now we're going to bring you up and beat you. Because it's enough of this stealing. But two, uh, two, two conditions. Two conditions. Mm -hmm. One, I will contest under NNPP. And two, I will, I will marry him anywhere because... I don't go feel I don't go feel take country as president. Me, I get one person, they wipe past me. That's not allowed. If you are All right. not right. a Muslim, it is a no, no, no. No, no, okay. it can be a traditionalist. I'm a traditionalist. I'm a traditionalist. Oh, you be a okay. traditionalist. Okay. I'm a Hold on, guys. First, before I permit that. Hold, hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. I, I like to hear the military. Right. I want to hear different viewpoints. Yeah, um, okay, hold on. I, I know um, Forefather talked about the military thing, um, but let's welcome... No, I want, I want to explain that of uh, Konkoso, uh, 700 and... Uh, how many number you put out that you are going to... 50,000. 750,000. It's talking out of experience. He wants to be former Minister of uh, Defense. And so many why times did, he has acted as why, a why did he, why didn't he do it then? Huh? Why didn't he? He doesn't, he, have the, he, he doesn't have the executive power. I mean, you know how this thing works now, uh, Doctor. When Dan the Dan. president, the president was also a military general. Then <laughs> it is easy to convince because he was a minister <laughs> in Obasanjo's government. He did try. He did, but there's not. I mean, Obasanjo, just as somebody now, Obasanjo, now I just say you can only advise. One thing to advise me, one thing for me to take out, right? So, but we are that 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 number is coming out of what he has seen like, on the front front of everything that and, is going on. Did, 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 he talk about, did, did he talk about how he will pay for that? How he will pay for let, that? Let me read. Let so me read this manifesto sorry. first, uh, Rudolf. I've not read this manifesto, so that okay. seven fifty thousand sounds clownish without telling me how you're going to pay for it. So let's let's yeah, yeah. let's leave that one first. Okay. All right. Let's leave it. All right, uh, Alaro. Welcome to the show. Why would you just leave it because Kulata says you should leave it? Something that is so vital to the nation. No, I don't no, understand no. any people. <laughs> Yeah, why, why would you it. just leave it? Because simple one man Kulata tells you to leave it. What kind of what, what kind of people do that? Well, for that I tell you, you I'm in your country, and you just left him. <laughs> he says clownish because he calls it clownish. Who gave him the authority to call it clownish? No, well, for that. He said he has not read the manifesto, so he no, cannot read it. speak. Who cares? Already, see, let me tell you something. There are some people out here. Let me tell you something. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me. Can you explain how he's going to pay for that? Do you know the answer? Okay, I can explain uh, so, about that. Well, let me you don't know that. You don't know the answer. Here. I need to say something here. Can I say something? Yes. Yeah, there are people around. They are willing to talk about Tinubu, Afenefere, and all kinds of conspiracy theories that amounts to nothing for our people. But when it comes to something so vital, oh, now I have to go and read. We have to be careful about the people we listen to. Okay. So it was right. weird. And also, when we talk about payment for this, uh, this in items, the reason why maybe our former uh, this is leaders have never done this, because when they want to recruit people, they have to go to get funding from outside. What people don't understand in Nigeria is broke. They have to get funding from outside, and those people will tell them, you know what, we are not going to give you funding to fund your military because they know it's not in their interest for that to happen. But if Kwan Kwasu can convince the people to contribute to, to their military and he convinces them that it's going to be handled transparently, there's no reason why he cannot succeed there. All right. But, uh, thank you. Thank you. Me, no, me, no, me, no, me, no, me, no, 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 scribe, no, 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 scribe, no, you don't, you don't talk There's to Fofa that's that way. Always says no, 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 constant silliness what kind of men are these you can't even defend your territory you can't defend your home and somebody's talking about doing it and you're like oh let's find another solution jesus Papa, christ hold on, hold on hold on hold on you have a friend that i want to bring you on uh in a moment uh alaro welcome to the show the alaro of peter will be 
the P2P people are they're, they're feeling they're feeling left out, so they are trying to get in here. So, um, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, can Thanks you tell us? Um, I had that P2P had something yesterday. How did it go? Absolutely, absolutely. So he had a meeting with all the support groups worldwide, and uh, it was online for three hours. And in this three-hour period, he was you no. Know, he basically did what you do, what you're doing right now. So we had a chance to ask him questions, and they responded. And this lasted for a three-hour period. And I, I which at the end of um, the day. He said he wanted to do that more frequently and he promised to do it every two weeks because he wants to keep people informed on progress and based on the questions they have so he can react to whatever he has to do now and by the grace of God after election. So it was a very productive and very positive and this is a, a, a situation nobody has never had the access to in Nigeria. We've never had such a thing. So, you know, I'm very thankful and very humbled that he even gave us the opportunity to speak to him on the same level. So what, were there any concerns raised? I heard that there was an issue with the bank that was... Um closing accounts of uh, your people. Did, did they come up? What did Peter say to, up to that? Basically, there's not no such thing as a bank now that people are putting money into. But in the future, there's going to be three accounts where people can, if they choose to, fund. And that's not been done officially yet. And there was an issue with a support group that had their bank closed just out of the blue because they were doing they had a support group and uh, they were doing pamphlets and doing flyers and that had nothing to do with him this was just a support group just like what i do and anybody does and all of us i think it was zenith bank i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure don't quote me on that and the account just got closed and there was no reason, no, you know, there was no way for them to function and there was no reasons given, even though these guys were trying to contact them and figure out what was going on. And you have to put in mind, this has no connection to him, has no connection to Labour Party. This was just some, something somebody like me or somebody somewhere was doing just to support the movement. Okay. So there were... People who, who watch this, we are raising uh, concerns about the Labour Party, that there is a disconnect between the, the Labour Party and their candidates. Essentially saying that Peter did, or B didn't know much about the party. Is that the impression you got when you when you Absolutely not. He knows more. We're talking about an, an extremely intelligent man. He knows everything. They were coordinated. There's no disconnect whatsoever. But guys, keep in mind, Peter, we're talking about something that took off three months and just shot up like a rocket. Was the Labour Party prepared to even have this massive infusion? No, nobody expected this. They had a gradual goal. This is a party that has been dormant for so long. So for having somebody of this character, that came in to lead, they did not have what it took. But they caught up on a massive level. And the way forward is what we've done and what we are doing. You can be rest assured, we're ready. All right. Thank you. Uh, Omoye, welcome to can the I show. Get the part, based on it, you've asked your questions and I answered. But I wanted to refer to the things that have been commented. So that's why I'm being oh, uh, looked at. Okay, crazy. okay, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so, and um, I, I'm speaking to you guys as brothers and sisters, and I really do appreciate it. And I want people to be very realistic. And I love my sister when she speaks aggressively. She's 
she's very aggressive in the way she expresses herself. And I want people to realize people are suffering. The state of Nigeria, yes, because in this diaspora, we related to what we know, which is okay. Because we, the ones in diaspora, are going to be the ones to fix this nation. And I appreciate and respect the views of everybody. My brother over here, I love you more than anybody else. As an opposition, you know that. And um, we have to be very realistic. What is the future of Nigeria? What do we want? What is our situation today? Our situation is not comparable to any other nation. More than 50% of the population are literally suffering. No choice. They are. Hello. To answer your question, sorry. You say, where is the future of Nigeria? The future of Nigeria is in our hand. We the Concoseas. Okay. I, I understand your political. I understand your political. It's okay. Finish. I understand your political view, and I'm 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 being very sincere and very honest, really. And so, really, when we call a nation Nigeria. I'm a Yoruba man. We call the nation Nigeria. Even though it's, it's worse enough that we ignore all the other tribes and we stick to these three tribes. And from the three tribes that we stick to, now we've segregated one. I'm being realistic. So now you go between Aousa and Yoruba, Aousa and Yoruba. So you segregated one. And you now have a situation where the most qualified person we've ever had in this nation happens to be an Igbo man. And I beg to differ with you, Ovie, today, if Kwan Kwa show had the qualification that was better than Obi, which he doesn't, if he had it. Because just to say what has been quoted. What is Nigeria's problem? Is it just building schools? Is it just sending people abroad? Is that Nigeria's problem today? No. Nobody is wired black. All of a sudden, nobody is. I believe you heard me say enrollment, school, school enrollment increased. That's significant. Whether they pass work or not. Whether it's significant or not. Hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Let's hear one person. Uh, Lara, go ahead. No, let, I mean, I don't like the, the downplay. We have a massive out of school pop I mean, issue. 20 million. Uh, no, kids. Kalata, Kalata, hold, hold on. Okay, let, let him finish. Then we can we can rebuttal. Go ahead, uh, Lara. I have a great respect for your views. And the fact that you took the time to do the research, that's commendable. Is the man qualified to rule Nigeria? Yes. History of Nigeria, are we going to be realistic with ourselves and do what is right by ourselves, by our brothers and sisters? This is the question you have to ask yourself. This is the question I ask myself. Peter Obi don't want you to vote for him because he's a Nippo man. He wants you to vote for him because he's qualified. He wants right. you to vote for him and he promises to make a change. So, this people are suffering. We need food, basic needs. We need a trader. We need somebody right. that knows the concerns of the people. Thank you very much. My Dr. brother, no, 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 Alaro is a very good politician. You don't know the the bank that your people are talking about, and you are speaking so eloquent about the bank that they are closing and all. It's Keystone. As your spokesperson here, Kenneth. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, what? 
to tell you before you present your case and by the way um if we're going to be in this uh, talking about demonizing one another uh, party, uh, anybody in Nigeria is qualified. You are more qualified to run for Nigerian president. It may be more than Peter Obi. It's just like it's an opportunity that is the one, the momentum is on his side. But he's no more experienced than Kwan Kwaso. Or uh, never did even his record is better than Kwanko. So, but in life, when the memento is on your side, whosoever will make Nigerian better. And if Nigerian take their destiny in their hand, and even if it doesn't work with Tobi, we know that Nigerians have changed the equation that their vote count and the system have changed that the, uh, the cabals or the elite cannot manipulate again. Then it's the beginning of the change that we are all expecting in Nigeria. If Obi do not do it, then the next four years, we can now say, okay, there is destiny in our hand. We are able to succeed to hold them accountable and we can continue to do it until we get it better. But the issue of, uh, issue of uh, this is a three major tribe and the other one is more qualified. What about me that from Benway State that you don't even talk about? Me? I'm not serving Nigeria as one Nigeria. What about the jobs like Paul here? That's that is exactly so what, what I what, said. What are we talking about? Well, don't get money. So don't what get money. Get what was exactly what, what I said. Let me give that. We don't get money. money. We don't get money. Come here, we come here as, as what? We come here as a, as a, as exactly. a so three I talked. What are you talking about? Jonathan, good luck with you, Joe. Exactly. So, okay, then let's talk about exactly. Nigeria. And then we'll not talk about these three tribes of Nigeria. So, what are exactly my the, point? So, let's, let's go to talk about who is, who do we, who did, whatever, whatever the party you belong to, whether you're APC or PDP or Labour Party, whosoever succeeded in the next election, at least we, there is a pushback now that there is a it's, message that if we don't even succeed this time around, we can succeed in the next time to change the direction of our country. But we cannot be Absolutely. playing politics with tribal politics here. This is three Absolutely. major tribes. Who, 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 tell you? Yeah, who, who yeah. can't say? Then where people say, born mother anyway, because the governor is not accountable for us. And we know. That thing is this. Let us. Uh, no, 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 I'll see you guys I'm, later. I'm, I'm at work. I'll work from behind. If you have a question for me, if not, I can bow down. Nah, nah, no, no, we don't have a question. John, we don't have a question. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Not, I'll come as a guest. Uh, I'll, come, I'll come as a, a invited guest with HO. Maybe we'll take okay. you that through to our journey. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Um. So thank you so much. Uh, Omoya, welcome to the show. Greetings, so salutes to everybody. I see your face today. I know. Yeah. <laughs> my, my friend. My Sister friend, I see. My God, I badu, I badu your submission. Thank you for bringing the fire. I really, I thoroughly enjoy, you know, listening to you. I like the energy. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone. No, may not be like I said, they do, Pasha. My friend, my friend, you don't see me. My friend, you don't see me. Helen, CM, do oh. they sleep? Four fathers, greetings, everybody. Dr. Damages, well done. Kene, Simbad, Mr. Laro, greetings, oh, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Dr. Repair, not be damaged, you the damage you go to. Mama, Mama, <laughs> Mama, Mama, ask, ask someone why she no greets me, especially. Ask her why she no greets me. Mama, Mama, I hate you. Um, because I take over your throne for today. That's why she no one greets me. Yes, I take over your throne. My people see me can bring her come home as our queen. Doctor Damage, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, no, let's let's see her finish. Let's see, let's have, let her finish. <laughs> yes, okay. I, I have um, something um, to uh, say about Popozo's manifesto. We okay, nobody yeah, we'll is actually we'll... talking about here right now. Okay, we will talk about okay. that. Amoye, go ahead. Yes. Let's speak. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thank you very much. So I want to start by saying, first of all, I'm very, I'm very happy, um, Sister H O, Mama. Thank you very much for saying what you said about other tribes in Nigeria because I'm tired of it. Thank you, Mister Alaro, for mentioning it. Thank you, John Ab. I know he's not here, but thanks to him as well because we spend so much time talking about three major tribes in Nigeria. We forget the multiple tribes that we have in Nigeria that has a lot of qualified people, but they never see the light of day until we detribalize this whole thing and realize that we're one people fighting for a common good of all people, of all of us, all black-toned people. 
Because when you leave the shores of Nigeria, nobody asks you which tribe you come from. All they're seeing is the color of your skin. We have a bigger fight to fight. This one, I just tertiary. We are just starting. We're in the field. We have a huge, it looks insurmountable fight to fight about the black race. It's not even about whether you're from one tribe or another tribe. You see this push that we're all pushing and we're all wanting something good for Nigeria. We think that we're fighting simply because we're trying to secure our, our countries or our, our communities or our tribes. No, the fight we're fighting is much bigger than that. It's about the black race here. The black race is in, is, 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 is in, is in trouble as we speak. There are people literally hunting for your, li for your life, my life, on a daily basis, I don't care where you are in any, in the world. There are there are people that are marking you out to ensure that they 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 do away with you for good, so that there'll be no color like you and I, yours and I, existing today. We are here still playing small 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 children. We did a do ten ten now ten ten we they do. I want us to refocus. We are playing ten ten right now. If we do not get our houses in order, and what I mean by that is getting the right people, common sense, not tribe, not religion, somebody way in head correct. We know, say, if blood they flow for my vein, blood they flow for, flow for the other person's uh, vein. If this person, if they pain them, if they pain me, until we stop talking about this nonsense tribe that we keep talking about, yeah, Yoruba, Yoruba is to this, Igbo is to this, Aosa is to this, we go see the swim inside this mess when we find ourselves. We have not even started. The reason why I personally am coming out, putting my face out there and screaming from the top of my lungs that we should vote Peter the Rock will be, not because he's the most qualified, I guarantee you, most of you on this panel today are more qualified than Peter Obi. But guess what? You get 100 million, why you not by the form? Did you tell anybody you were interested in coming out as president of Nigeria so that we can support you? Now, people buy the form for Peter Obi, by the way. Not being, not being used the money buyer. People who believe okay. in you. Okay? So at the end of the day, Waiting with a fight today in our very existence. We think we are fighting because we want one particular person to be president. It just so happens that Peter Obi comes from the eastern part of Nigeria that has suffered greatly as well as many other tribes in Nigeria that don't have a voice or don't get to see the light of day. The man is representative of every suffering that is going on in Nigeria. I want a man who has empathy. Whoever is on that is in that position. If I do not show, if you don't see, if I don't see empathy, I don't see compassion. I don't see you talking and relating to us that are trying to get into office. Forget it. You are not getting there. I'm not just talking, and I know that a lot of Nigerians that have that 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 have this pain in them feels the same way. We're not just talking, so let's put Hausa, Igbo, and Yoruba on the freaking side. I don't care what tribe you come from. Let's get somebody with common sense. When you know what thing they do, when they feel the pain of my brothers and sisters back home and understands what it means to be a black man on the face of the earth. Isn't it ironic? The black race is the most denigrated race in the entire world. It bothers me sometimes when I hear some people make comments and it's all about sectionalism, about regions, about, oh, is this, I don't give a damn. I don't care who, who or where he's coming from. Can he put food on my table? We have millions of people that are living under poverty in Nigeria. What are we doing? We have men and women here. Why are we not in the battlefield? 
We don't deserve to exist if we continue to allow this sectionalism to continue to take advantage of our very existence. We do not deserve it. Because let me tell you, the real truth is that you're going to be colonized again if you're not careful. With all this nonsense, mm -hmm. what will they do? Who cares where the man comes from from crying out loud? Not be human being. If you cut in hand, not be blood go come out. I don't understand also as a people. If we do not get it right, and I, you know, I, I was on a live some days ago and I asked the men on the platform, what are you people doing to secure your families for crying out loud? Why is it that the women are bleeding out every day? The children are not cared for. They are, they are abused on a daily. And we have men in that country. Why? I grew up in a home. My dad had a hunting gun. He had a gun to, to deal with anybody that came close to his home. Where are those men for crying out loud? My dad and his friends, they became security for the estate we lived in because there was threat of armed robbers. They were ready to put their lives on the line for their people, for their children, for their families. My dad was ready to fight on the streets for his family. What the heck are we doing? Why do we sit here on a daily basis and talk about flimsy things? We don't realize that where our lives are at stake. We don't know that we, there's an imminent threat on our lives as black people. We don't know that. We've not even started. Peter Obi is just the beginning. There's a lot of work to be done. Is it the mentality of the people alone? It's not even about the leaders. Now, even when you go to the market in Nigeria, you want to buy a basket of tomatoes. A basket that will cost you, now the dollar is almost a thousand dollar, a, a thousand naira. A basket that will cost you 500, 1,000. The market woman that is selling it for you will cut the basket in half. So you don't get a full basket. You see the assignment what we get, it has eaten deep into the citizens. Nobody had pure. You get to the airport, they're asking you, sister, how far now? Anything for us? You just come, I beg, with the lawyer now, help us. If you, if you pay them money, they will not set you. They will let you go by. We are living, we are sitting literally on a time bomb. And we are here talking about flimsy and unnecessary things. What is wrong with us as a black race? They cost us, even if they cost us, our eye never needs to open. I don't understand, though. We have able-bodied men. We have able-bodied women. What are you doing? People are being slaughtered every day. Why is this? Why is Nigeria not? Why hasn't it been shut down so that nothing moves? We just allow. Look at the lady, the, the policewoman in force that was assaulted by her boss in the office. Where, where was the outcry? Where was the outcry? Families are selling their children for food mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Yes. Have you heard that before? They are selling their children. Please take for 500000 mm -hmm. yes. so that my children can eat. Mm -hmm. People are selling their spouses. They are selling them into slavery mm -hmm. on your borders. Mm -hmm. And we are here talking about flimsy things if we do not get it right. If we don't have the sense to do what is needful for our countries, I'm sorry. And I said it in one of my lives. I said, what is the point as a woman if you do not have a man that is capable of securing your life and protecting the lives of your children and does not have compassion for you, does not feel your pain? What is the point of getting married? What is the point of bringing children into this mess? Mm -hmm. What is the point? Mm -hmm. We're talking about, oh, let's increase our numbers. What about the lives that you have? What are you doing about it? And then people come here and, and, and are talking, the same talking freaking points about ancient people that have not done anything for your life, for my life. What have they done? What is the proof? You live in civilized countries. For crying out loud, our people are dying every day. And you're coming here to tell me that one ancient man 
is the best because he has strategy. What freaking strategy is that that he could not use? What strategy? People are people cannot go to the farm. Your bobo said if you're hungry, go to the farm. How many people can go to their farms? Bandits have taken over. Boko Haram, Boko Haram have taken over. Students were recently captured. They were kidnapped. Two of them were slaughtered. One of them, the family, sold everything sellable. Four million to save their children. Are you guys freaking kidding me? This is an outrage. If you guys are not outraged, I don't know what else to say. If it is not Peter Obi because he's the most sensible person, let's just shut the country down and let's just let everybody just die. May all of us just Ukuma because there's no point. I see us being colonized again, not because. You people, there were rumors of, oh, Chinese people now have police stations in our countries. Well, it's not far from the truth. Even if they come out and deny it, it's not far. Your leaders are selling you out. They are selling you out for pennies and for dollars. If you don't know, they are selling, they are waiting to sell you out like they sold your sisters and brothers back in the day. This is what we are seeing again, repeating itself. They are selling you out. They are collecting money so that you can be slaves to their children and to their children's children. And we come here and talk about tribe. I talk about this. I don't care. I don't care. My tribe has problems. If it is that one, let's start talking about the issues about our tribes. What is it? When they take and do us, not only us, we have a much bigger, if we don't get it right as a black race. Oh my God. We are in trouble. We are in trouble. That giant of Africa, I go turn to ants. No, we, we are already ants, my sister. We are already ants. When you talk about the black race, I'm a social worker here in U.S. I decided to become a social worker when I came in. I wanted to learn the system. I wanted to know what is going on. Yes, you are right, my sister. The black race, they've turned us to non-entity. As a social worker, I've seen much. When they take a black child, He's treated as a slave. When they take a white child, they do everything possible to unite them to their family. But they make the black child to remain in the system when, and they separate them from their family when they are in the system. When they are 18, they say we are done. And they leave them because they are not prepared for adulthood. They take to crime. Go to our prison and see what is there. And we are here really talking about this bullshit called uh, Hausa Yoruba Igbo. Really? What about us? But that's not the issue. The first thing we must understand, we are human beings. None of us decide the tribe we want to come into this world. None of us Decide the color we want to come into this world. But one thing I've come to realize is this. They know the day we realize that we are kings, we are queen, we are princess, and we are prince. They know that that day, everything they have taken from us, we will get it back. They are what they are today because of us. Why? We are so blessed with everything. Everything they use in making this phone. Everything they use in making this laptop. They came from Africa. And yet, Africa, Africa, my beloved continent, is, is wallow in poverty, in lack. Yes, my sister, you were right. When you said they turn out to slaves in China, you cannot have a company with your own money without a Chinese being the head. Our brothers right. and sisters that are in China, they don't have land, but our greedy, selfish people, they sold our land to Chinese, to Lebanon, and even in our country, those people that cannot clean their bomb, they enslave my brothers and sisters because they are working for them. And we sit here, we talk bullshit about a gay people that does not have the vision of tomorrow, that does not know that African continent needs to be revived 
and they become the glory that God has made us to be. See, if we are not going to lead the fight, men, we're going to put on a four corner. People like my sister and, and myself, another courageous woman, we will be the Deborah of our time. We shall liberate Africa. We shall liberate Africa. Amen. Dr. Damage, let me finish my daughter. I'm scared of. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Real quick. Let me just finish up. Oh. Okay, quick. thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Kolata, you said, how did he get to tribe? Well, that's what you guys are talking about. And yes, it does matter. Until we get it right, because the fight we are fighting now is small compared to what we are going to fight. So, yes, it is about tribe, Mr. Kolata. Okay? And please, for those of you that are still sitting on the fence, if you like... Go and vote for your great grandfathers. <laughs> but I'm begging and I'm appealing. If you are a gate man, you are a house boy, you are working for one of that, you have been house girl for 20, 30 years for one man that does not see value in you. Be cold, be obedient. Otherwise, your children will remain slaves to these oligarchs that feel this cultist, the oligarch too, 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 too mild, cultists. Gang members, drug barons that want to continue the crime. If you by mistake get it wrong, it will be counts, gang members, cultists, thieves, robbers, kidnappers that will be ruling over you. I yield, make a good chop. Are they hungry? Yes. Um, okay. Um, um, guys, uh, thank guys, you. Guys, thank guys. you. Your input was very concise and straightforward. Uh, and uh, Esho, I like that. Um, it is not only in uh, China that if a Nigerian, for example, wants to set up a business, you must have a Chinese as the um, owner. You know um, that happened in uh, UAE, Dubai. If you can, you, as a Nigerian, you can't own a business unless you have a local that will stand as the owner. So it's only in Nigeria that you give them free will to do whatever they want to do. Now let me go to my point why I wanted to speak. Um, when Colata was reading out um, Conquasso's manifesto, um, I, I he not manifesto. Me. I have not read his manifesto. Okay, so um, no, it's, you were reading out what he did in kind of state. His achievement, achievement, right? Yeah. So the, you concentrated most um, on uh, um, schools, how he built schools and all that. I want us to ask ourselves this question: Is it appropriate for a governor of a given state to use the state's money and build? schools in a foreign country. Pongkoso, yes, if the, if Pongkoso, the, hold on. If the citizens are not complaining. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It is okay, illegal, it is not constitutional for Pongkoso to use Kanu state money to go and build schools in Niger Republic. So, and which means... You're making an assumption. Interest. Hold on, no, you read it. Is it is there, is it money. Is you hold on, hold on. Let me finish, let me finish on this, please. Let me finish on this. This is what Konkoso did, and I want us to go and verify this ourselves. Now, Konkoso, um, go on uh, uh, October 27th, 2015, National Delis. When Konkoso, if Konkoso right now, um, um, his manifesto came out, I call that manifesto a manifesto that will never manifest. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is the same political jobbers that are out to deceive and lie to us just as they normally do. Konkoso now is piloting himself as a governor that was that has never borrowed money or that was not indebted where he left office. No, we have not forgotten. National dailies of 27th October 2015 had it that Konkoso borrowed three million uh, three billion naira. No, um, 4.1 billion naira from pensioners found, and he never returned that money. Kwankoso left Kano State Chamber of Contractors with a debt of about uh, 200 billion naira, and he refused to pay. Actually, he used that money to run for a senatorial position. So, um, Kwankoso, during his term as a governor, that he refused to pay the uh, the pensioners, uh, the contractors, the local contractors went on protest. He arrested and imprisoned 50 of them. 40 of them died on the street. We are forgetting so soon. Mr. Mike said that we Nigerians have a uh, short-term memory. Kwankwaso 
imprison 50 pensioners for protesting for the payment of the work they did for him. He refused to pay. He built 200 schools, 200 schools that has never manifest to anything during Kwankwaso regime. That was when exactly uh, uh, P2B was the governor of Anambra State. While Anambra State was coming, becoming first in educational rating, Kwankwaso Kano State, gov uh, State, uh, uh, Kano State was in party. 31st position, um, Adam Brasset was first position, and he was spending billions on school. What is achievement? Nothing. So this guy left Kano State with a debt of 3 billion naira. Ganduja said it on the daily, on the National Daily of May 2015, I think. He said it. He's there. So let's not forget, Konkoso is a liar. He left Kano State indebted with about 3 billion naira. He borrowed 4.1 billion of pensioners, a pensioners fund, and he refused to pay them till today. And then 200 billion naira from the local contractors that he refused to pay. He crippled them, then used the money to run for a senatorial position. And this is the same person that we, a, a well-thinking Nigerian, will be campaigning for to become what? The same political criminals that will come and lie and, and take up position and do the worst. So as far as I'm concerned, Konkoso, Konkoso's interest is in the Niger Republic. Write it down today. Rudolph, uh, can we have a dialogue here uh, right. rather than a monologue? All right. Thank you. Okay. So um, hold on, hold on, guys. I want um, Kalata. You want to go first? Yeah. The, so the, you see, okay. a lot of stuff you're kind of painting. Like, first of all, uh, you say he borrowed money. There's nothing wrong for a state governor to borrow money as long but as... But there's nothing wrong when, can, when a state governor comes to lie that he never second. borrowed money. Can I, can I, can I, can I hold on? Can I hold on? I didn't come here to tell you about whether I borrowed money or not because debt financing is very okay in my books. Is what do you do with the debt financing? You can't have a deficit of infrastructure and you're not supposed to try and build something up. You need to fund it. You need to... Either you borrow money, you raise taxes, you do something. You need to fund whatever you need to do. That's why anybody talks about the manifesto and I can't see exactly how he's going to pay for it. I laugh because it's just a wish list. So if Kwakwaso borrowed money to fund some initiatives for his state, I have no personal beef with it. The debt is debt. America has debt. Everybody has debt. You need to use debt for something. Just don't use it for recurring expenditure. Don't use debt for your normal like salaries, for example. But use debt for infrastructure. If you have a debt of infrastructure, you need to borrow and fund it. Do you think you're going to be able to raise everything? As long as whatever you're investing in is making more money for you and you can finance those debts, you can renegotiate those debts, there's nothing wrong with debt. But when it now also comes to you're comparing, oh, Anambra came first, this. Look, from the state in the north, it's not about saying one became first, one became last or whatever. We're talking about a bunch of people that are not going to school and are getting enrolled in school. You're fixing a lot of future problems. Nobody's saying whether Kano State will come first in Jam or whether. We're even talking about the barest minimum. Can you get those kids in school? Can you get them to focus on education? Can you get their mind open? Not whether they came first in Waik or came first in Jam. The Anambra Southern States can go and duke with that. We're talking about trying to cover a gap. If we're going to belong in the same country, you need people that will be able to elevate elevate the north to, to enroll them in school, to, to get them educated, to, to get them in line. Otherwise, we'll just keep complaining. Oh, we don't want this. We don't want that. But if someone wants to address that problem and he has the capacity and the ability to address that problem, let him address that problem. But from my perspective, the debt issue is a moot point. As long as you know you can qualify what is used the debt for. I don't, I'm not supporting Kwaka, so I just obeyed, sparked my curiosity, and I went to check his record. So his issue about corruption or not paying salaries, almost every governor, including some governors you are supporting, had a period where their workers went on strike and they did not pay the salaries. So I don't want us to start picking and choosing. Otherwise, we'll go into non-entities. Okay, um, Mr. Right. Polesta, there's nothing else. No, 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 Hold on. There has to be other. Otherwise, it will be two of you back and forth. You know, we need to get other people involved in this conversation. Composo um, is here. When I just is one composo. Yes. Okay. Ovie, oh, oh, say something. Then I'll, I'll, I'll move. Okay. I'm heartbroken. I'm I'm heartbroken. I thought we are brother in the struggle. 
No, it shouldn't be yeah. because I'm pouring out the truth here. You know, we are not mugus that they call, that they always come and lie to. Now, for those who I think I talk. I think I talk. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going somewhere. You know, I'm heartbroken because I thought we are brothers in the struggle. You know, I went out yeah. with you when we are there to uh, to chair will be up. I was there with you. You know, yeah, we were supposed I mean, to come for it. It was not supposed to sponsor me to that event to come and you know put on glamour to it. But look at you! I have never come to this show. I use this way you are using muscle eh? to 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 attack Oko to ever attack Obi. I've never. <laughs> you know why? Because no. see, 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 I'm somebody who is big on issues, policies. That's why people come and say, "Oh, be don't see money." Obi. No, I don't, I don't care. That, he's not in jail. He's facing your beast. Campaign. He has one leg in the presidency. So I don't care. You understand? Yeah, so that's why I face some policy. That's why he says, "Whenever I come here, I talk about waiting. Composo don't do waiting. He doing and what he's currently doing. You understand? But does that mean that uh, maybe the allegation where they try there? I'm, I'm saying, "Oh, is he said or no?" I don't know. But on the on the idea that he's building school in uh, Niger, first of all, if it if it did that as an executive, it is not left for the citizen of Kano to raise hell, right? If that's the state money that you believe that is using, you understand? Which maybe it doesn't owe me and you any explanation, right? At this point, because that kind of money he use. So you think he will <laughs> not use Nigerian money to do same? To replicate that's, a, that's, a, that, and it, that's a good question. Now, if he's using Nigerian money as a president to build school in Niger, then you see him that why is he doing? Why is he doing that? I just hope he has the better explanation because it's I know one day, one, listen, 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 listen. Because I know one day, one day, one day, one day, we want to run our pipe to reach Europe to sell our our gas and everything. Only God know where those parts will pass. If we just turn our back on our neighbors, I don't know where all those pipes go past because this idea is man, we took get muscle. So people say get muscle, get sovereignty. So when we do something, it's very okay to question why, but don't just condemn it. You understand? I'm not saying oh, we should be spending our money in all our neighboring countries, but but as we speak today, all our enemies across the world, guess what? All our neighboring countries are there with their base. And if you still believe that all this insecurity that is happening in Nigeria is just because of our government official incompetency alone, then we should we, we should we should prepare for a shocker. It's very easy to come here and complain how things they do. We should not vote for that. That's very. I, I always say it. I'm not meant to be that. That's the easiest thing to do, to complain and to protest. But that's all we can do. The, the, the yeah. fucking politicians. I'm sorry for my uh, foreign language. The politicians are actually fighting as we speak. Oh, now, so, listen, let me know what my words now. Uh, when the political elite are fighting, they don't complain. Now, that's way complain. How they take down today? Now, only we can complain now. Everybody else is down. We should stop complaining. If you believe so much in your candidate at this point, it is too late to criticize anybody. Focus on how do you buy that guy that is on the fence that is not decided yet. How do you get him on your side? That should be your focus. Criticize this, say this one is too old, this one is too young, this one you are. It is too late at this point. Get them too late. And if we believe that the complaining will going to make any change, come to infinity, I'm here to be proven wrong. It is not going to happen. Obvious. Let me say something, please. No, no, no. For the past, for the past no, one hour. Let me say something. CM, hold on. CM, hold on. hold on. CM, hold on. Hold on. You say nothing wrong for Kwankwaso to use Kanu money, go build. School for Niger. I bet not they are complaining. What would they talk? Now they provoke. If the citizens are not complaining, why are you going to complain? As, okay. as you be so, eh? You marry your children. They hungry. You never feed them. You go carry the money they give one woman. If I be your wife, I go provoke. You don't hear me? So, <laughs> exactly. You, know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you are not from Kano. You know, you are wife. Wrong. You're from Kano. All right, all right. Hecho, Hecho, Hecho. Thank you, thank you. All right, we Sorry, have to have Rudolph. One. I can address that Nijay school. I just Mr. checked. Mr. Damages, right? 
Hold on, no, no, can I, can I, no, 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 can I, no, please. I don't want, no, the, no, please. There are people Kano, that have not said Kano, anything. Kano and, EJ, Kano and EJ, they have a bilateral relationship mm -hmm. to cooperate in areas. And this huh. is what they're leleveraging, that he built that mm -hmm. girls only school in EJ. I just okay. read it. Okay. So right. if right. they Thank have you. a bilateral we'll relationship. We'll never okay. learn. Can, can I ask something, please? No, and hold on, hold on, guys, hold on. Hold, um, forefathers, hold on, hold on. Uh, Kulata, thank you for that information. This is what I want. I want a kind of conversation where people, there are things I don't know too and things our viewers don't know. So if you have information that is important, we can we can take that. Um, CM, you are next. Okay, thank, um, thank you, Rudolph. I think this issue of uh, 750,000 soldiers, we shouldn't sweep it under the carpet. It requires a, bit, a good and uh, in-depth interrogation. That's why we get back to it and say, part of the problem, when not, although numerical strength need to be increased to be commensurate to our population, but we must try, if this is uh, probably whoever takes over, should try and professionalize. The word is professionalized. Nigerian military. It's only in Nigeria you see military collecting money at checkpoint with gun. Between men market on the Owerri Road, you see them lining up, taking money. These are soldiers. You don't see them anywhere. They, they are no longer professional. With Koboko whipping people, if you don't pay money, they bring in all those things. It's an eyesore. So part of our military, and if we say we do not have enough, they shouldn't even be outside at all. You don't see military. The only time you see them is going to the airport. They are being ferried to another country to go and fight. Or there's an emergency. They bring them, mainly the engineers, like I mean, military engineers, to go and construct bridge. Like now that we have a flooding, maybe they need something, some, some emergency work to be done. You can move in the military. They help to put things in order, maintain, sort of do some emergency work to rescue the people. But in Nigerian military, you see them. You know, do we even they not even the job of the police? You don't see them on the road. So for them to be misbehaving and enforcing in discipline, you see a military, you take them, you put them in the car, you are going somewhere, they are following you. No, 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 that's not it. So if they are going to increase the 750,000, probably that may be the first batch. If we have up to 5 million, it's not bad. But then the manner of recruiting the police, I mean, the military should also be looked into. Why not use our university graduates when you finish you are doing military um, national youth service they check sort of they call them <clears throat> look like career talk talk to them take some people that are willing you recruit them because they're already university graduates they can enter into different places everything those that are even in combatants remember in the 60s when you have uh, graduates in the military so you recruit them because when they go there they're not going there as because uh, somebody brought them in, they went there because they're career choice. They already graduate. They want, they want, they want to see what they will make out of it. So that's one. Then, secondly, this issue of Kwan Kwaso something. The, the way I always ask my question is, with all these things Kwan Kwaso did, the purpose of education development is to develop the people and create wealth. What is the poverty index of Kano State under Kwan Kwaso? Because until you look at this thing, if you can't wipe poverty and deprivation in the society, no matter how lofty your goals may be, it makes no sense. It has no impact on people. That's why World Health Organization, UN, they always talk of HDI, Human Development Index. That is why this Africa is backwards. We are backwards not because we don't have population, not because of our pop, not because of our climate or mineral resources. It's because of that human. When you have when you, that HDI, when you have 200 million people, but you do not give them scale, either through vocational education or otherwise, they are just mainly population. They become, they will not count when you've given them scale. So in Kano State, with all that Kwakwan so did, they did this. What is the poverty index of the state? Until you lift it up, you have no, if not to me, when you give example from here to Danke, Daikin Duncom, even some that are even uh, frivolous, you haven't done anything. So if he's coming with the intention that he wants to increase the military strength, fine and good. I like that. He can even take it more. But then the uh, military should know. They should professionalize it and tell them that you are coming. Not that when they recruit you, go to one southeast state and be collecting money. That is not military. So you have to be in the barracks and do the work you're supposed to do. 
and defend the country. You will be trained, professionally trained, even if when you are lured into doing something that is not a, a military, you, ref you refuse because it's a profession. A lawyer cannot, no matter how good you are, you can't go to the theater and start to operate on a patient because you're not a surgeon. So you'll be proud that you're a barrister, you do your own, a surgeon will do his own. A military man should be respected the way they respect a surgeon because you are, you, are in, you are in the army, you know what you are doing. You are, in fact, you are even doing a better work because like they say, when we are sleeping, you are awake. So that means a lot in our life, but they have to know that. So please, when we want to channel this, but that's why I felt that though corruption, you can't with it out and all the things we've been hearing here. One thing I've noticed is that, is that no matter how good a candidate is or how lofty, whatever he presents, that is where, that's my own, this, this is personal to me. I look at the person as a character. That is what matters to me. Because I've seen in the Western world, it's not really the manifesto that they thought is the person, is the character. They want to know who are you, your age, the school you attended, what you've been doing, how many times you've dodged tax, how many times you've been in prison or you trade in drugs. You know, those things you have, this is character. Because they take every other thing as given. Anybody can, anybody can decide to tar road and build schools. The civil servants, they, put, they are the engine room. They can decide that because they have the statistics. They will say, okay, oh, our schools are failing, all these are failing. We need to do something about it, all this. Even without you, they can recruit teachers. But it is you, the character. That is what we should be looking at. So when I settle for somebody like Peter B, it's because of, you, can, you can't take a, you can't really pin anything on his character as a person. In terms of mismanagement, looting, okay, look at what is happening with the Kweremado. This is a typical politician. This is what Rocha Sokorocha did. This is what Ojo Zokalu did. This is what Chimaro Kenamani did in Enugu State. 1999, 29th May 1999, there is nothing like Ebano State. The man created it, built houses there. Maybe he did his own. Maybe then Dubai wasn't in, in vogue. Now look at what Ekwerema, the 40, 40 houses so far. Pito B, since he left, you can't hear this type of, you can't negate. So when somebody is this clean, that's why you guys go for him. Whatever deficiencies he may have, we will not be helping him like what he now and then be bringing it up and say, this is what we want. Because such a person being at the helm of affairs, we not to pretend over theft. He did it in Anambra. That's what we should look for. When we look for strong men to be our leaders in Africa, because of they've stolen money, they are willing to have structure, put thieves everywhere, do everything. I mean, that, I mean we should be able to say, what really do we want? How do we go forward? Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. We're rounding up. We've done six hours, 30 minutes. And um, in another 30 minutes, they'll knock us off from, from this platform because we can't stay that long. Um, <laughs> All right. So let me hear from, uh, you know, you have to raise your hand. Uh, Alaro, let me hear from you. Let me, let me, I, I, I want to. No, no, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, no, can I, no, 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 please. Uh, Thank, you, ahead, Thank you, Demi. Thank you, Demi. Guys, you hear with the vigor the women speak. They speak out of pain. The difference when we speak and when those two women are speaking and Ikene that was speaking before, she's not here today. Also, Ineke, that used to speak, they, they speak with a lot of anger, but positive anger. Why? These are the women that are giving birth to these youths that belong to the movement. These youths that have no future, even though they've done everything the society has asked them to do to be productive and you know and we get down and we talk and we talk about Juan Quaso and what he has done and we get technical even though people are dying literally dying and starving we know I always say everybody in diaspora is a sacrificial lamb to everybody that's connected to you back home mm -hmm. I'm 100% sure there's nobody on this panel that doesn't have a bill. They have to sort on a monthly basis. So let's talk. If they're fooling you, stop fooling yourself. Nigeria is a collapsed state. Opportunities will never keep coming. 
this is why I say we talk about three tribes. There's more than three tribes. We're all Nigerians, brothers and sisters. But now we have a capable personality that has a plan. The man has a plan. It will get us from point zero to the plus sign. How far we go and hand over to the next person. We have to take our future and take back this country. It's not politics as usual. The minds, right. thank you very much. Yeah. Have a blessed day. I appreciate you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Simba, after you, then we do uh, what keeps you up at night and round up. Go ahead, Simba. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Good points. All of you guys made some very, very good points. I just want to focus on some things. Um, when we say education, what does that mean? Because education in Nigeria or education in America is even different than education they do where I am right now in Switzerland. Um, in Switzerland, they focus more on industrial engineering. And um, I think in Nigeria, we have more go be lawyer, be doctor. These are all consumptions. I mean, doctor, we can argue about that one, but our doctors will export. But anyway, we have to focus on people building infrastructure, the infrastructure we need, you know, engineering, the things, Panabita, all these things that people hate. These are the most important things that are needed, you know, instead of going to import it from China. Why aren't we the China? We have cheap labor. We should focus on that. That should be our number one priority, education reform. Education that works for us, not what works for the colonial masters, but the education that works for us. That's the first part. And the question now is, whoever comes in power, if Peter or B comes in power, he's going to have obstacles. How does he manipulate himself against that? What exactly can he do? What are the presidential, uh, what do you call it, executive decisions he can make on himself that will, that will help us eventually? What can he do? Can you guys tell me exactly what exactly can he do that will bypass everything and get things done? What are the fundamental things? And I think one of them should be transparency, where you can hold people accountable. I hold, even in my profession, I hold people accountable biggest time. So that's the number one fundamental thing. That's how you can get things done, holding people accountable. How can he implement that? Building the bridge, what was the budget for it? Who had the contract for it? How do you hold those people accountable and make it transparent? Not just what you say. It has to be a, flu a fluid process, a website where you see this is the contract. This is the contract. These are the people responsible for it. This is the progress. Something that the people can see live. Is that possible? I rest my case. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm the only one that hasn't said anything since everybody spoke. All right, four for that. <laughs> Go ahead. So, yeah, I have, I have to. Okay, thank you for letting me. I know it, it's been long. Um, yeah, I think um, what, what the two ladies um, said, uh, is, you know, they are expressing the frustration that I've always felt that um, I'm surprised our women are not calling the men out a bit more, actually, that um, the, our men have proven to be the least performing in the world in terms of... Uh, providing and defending their people. And uh, when I say this, it appears I'm just criticizing them, but it's just the basic fact. And I'm saying it because what? how else am I supposed to say it? To tell you that we are performing well, look at the results. All of us are overseas. Most of us here are overseas. And many of us don't even realize the need to even defend our heritage at all anymore. That's how far it's gone. For women to be the ones shouting this now, it shows you that the men have failed. If Whenever women start talking about defense, you know that the men have failed. You know, even when Queen Amerinas of uh, Kush uh, fought the Romans to a standstill and they got the peace deal from them, that was because her husband died. The man, the man died, but the man trained his daughters so well, his daughter took the reins of the country and fought the Romans to a standstill while they were actually at that same time enslaving England. That was... A black lady that did that because the men were not there anymore 
the men died off. So, and in our own case now, it's not that because we are not there. We are there now. And many of our men are here constantly about little details. Those are details. And when um, uh, this in the Kwan Kwan Su said something about building um, uh, this in um, college in uh, Niger, and the first instinct of anybody is suddenly the guy that wouldn't die for Nigeria, his instinct is, why is he not doing it for his own country? He's own, in his own distinct. Because you don't understand. You see, so, because you don't understand, like I think uh, Kwan Kwan Su made a profound statement. Ask why before you condemn. You don't you react from the point of tribalism because that's where it's coming from, really. Because you are pointing to Niger in a pejorative way. There are black people right there suffering too, worse than us. If you think we are suffering, the ass is worse. What difference does it make? Nations have exchanges all the time. This is how you build relationships. If you have your <laughs> your your next door neighbor, you're not talking to them. Tomorrow, somebody will come and carry you. Nobody will know. Well, the next door neighbor will not be any aware of what is happening. You have to have a relationship with your next door neighbor. And I'm sure the Yoruba side is having a relationship with Benin Republic and vice versa with the Cameroonians uh, in the in the this in the east. So how we think like this, I don't get it. We have to be more circumspect the way we think about each other here because we are all in a mess. This is so obvious. It's like it's, it doesn't even bear mentioning. We are all very capable, intelligent people here, capable of analyzing information. We shouldn't find these type of things controversial at all. When somebody says the right things, we should think twice and say, you know what, I agree with you. Maybe this area I don't, decide, I, I don't agree with you. It's that simple. Because right now we don't have luxury for playing politics or playing some kind of game of I, I got you. I don't get, care about got you. If Kenny says something that I agree with, I will agree with him. If I am wrong, I educate me i'm not here to teach anybody if you learn from me good because that is the only way we are going to forge forward here thank you all right thank thank you so much uh for fathers um rohan i'll give you a chance to say something and then what keeps you up at night we go from there go ahead rohan okay thank you very much honestly i must say to the men in the house today, I'm some, somewhat disappointed because uh, I think uh, we should look at things objectively if you want Nigerian to work. It's like we are leaning towards sentiment and uh, tribalism, and I, I don't think it will, it will hug our well for us, honestly. Uh, there, there, was a, there was an issue about uh, uh, Concoso. Yeah, we can say all we like about politics, but Concoso has done a lot. Even right here in Malaysia, there are a lot of people that he has sponsored. And even last year, it was revealed about three of the candidates he sponsored for PhD have the most scientific citation this year, early this year, in Nigeria. One of, one of, them, is the sec one of them is second best in the world, as we second speak. Doctor? So when you invest in education, like you want to see the result, now you can see the result immediately. It's a gradual process. Thank you. He sponsored a lot of people to various universities within Nigeria. And he sponsored non-Indians as well. But I don't want to talk about the issue of politics and what have you. Please, let's, let's, we, we've heard what uh, uh, women have said here. And honestly, it's quite uh, a, a very serious issue that we should look onto that and, uh, and take the decisive measures as men. We shouldn't be too sentimental, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so we are now going to give everybody one minute to tell us what keeps um, them up at night. Simba, let me start with you. Okay, what keeps me up at night? It's what's gonna happen if Peter B does not become president of Nigeria. What exactly is going to happen? How is the situation going to happen? What happens if Tinubu takes power? Which there is a chance he could take power. What will happen in Nigeria then? Are we going to go to war? We talk like war is something... <sighs> war is not something to play with. You know, the price of bread, the price of flour during wartime. <laughs> it's... 
We shouldn't pray for war, man. We should do everything in our power that to make sure. Well, war well, why do why do you think why do you think it will lead to war? Somebody winning the election if they win. I mean, no, no. I mean, if it's free and fair election, that's a perception, yeah. okay? If it's free and fair, and it's transparent, and people can accept it, then okay. But the moment we start hearing stories, and you know, we're living in a social media era. I don't know, man. I hope not. But right. that's just one thing I'm I'm praying for. I'm like, if it goes bad, how do we fix it? And we should stop. We should find solutions and prevent that from happening, because war is not All something right. to play with. All, All right. right. Thank you. Can I? What keeps you up at night? What keeps me uh, What keeps me up at night is uh, why Nigerians are so sentimental to every questioning. You know, when you question lies, when you try to expose lies, it becomes um, um, tribalistic. Um, personally, somebody like me, six, more than 60% of my friends are houses. You know, so if there is any tribalized Nigerian here, should be me, right? But I question lie because uh, Konkoso lied to us and we Nigerians are keeping quiet, um, pretending as if nothing happened. And this has been... Um, um, yearly stuff, you know, each time they come out campaigning, they always lie to us and we always take the lies and pretend as if nothing happened. So Pankoso lied and that is actually what I'm exposing. I'm not being tribalistic for exposing it. If, if anybody should lie, if Peter will be lied today and I found out I'm going to expose Peter will be right away. I don't care who you are, right? So um, um, Mr. Rohan, uh, Pankoso over here, um, what I'm simply doing is exposing the lies of Konkoso. Konkoso left Kano State in three billion debt. Ganduja said that himself that he left Konkoso left three billion naira debt for him to you know to take care of. Konkoso borrowed money meant for meant for pensioners four point one billion naira and refused to pay them. When they protest, he jailed some of them. He did the same to contractors. He borrowed. He, he refused to pay them what they worked for two billion naira when they protested. 40 were killed, 50 were jailed. So this is the same person coming out to begin to lie and we so forget so soon. Um, Colata asked for the link. Go to Delhi, uh, National Delhi's of uh, 27th October 2015. You'll see it there. I shared the link in the comment section. So this is the yes. truth. And let's go and verify. We always verify P2B. We always verify um, Atiku and uh, um, Tinubu. Let's verify Konkoso as well. Thank you. They do verify. Right, they you. do verify. Is it a verified information? And yes, uh, verified information. It, the case is with what, what is the precise lie? Because you said he lied, but I don't know what what he claimed, he claimed that he was yeah, lying he, about. He claimed that he never borrowed money as a governor, and it's a lie because There's he no did. governor that doesn't borrow money. No, but he he said that he he did not borrow money. But, not if he had come out TV clean TV. and said that I borrowed money as a governor and this is what I use it for, nobody should be questioning him right now, right? So but he came out and said that he never, he never borrowed, borrowed money. money. Yeah, he, he never borrowed. He, that is what he said. He said that. All right. Yeah, All right. If he said that, then that's false. Now, if he's proven to be okay. false. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's move on. Um, Omoye, you're next. What keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night? Nothing yes. keeps me up at night. I put out all the energy that's necessary to ensure a win for Peter Obi. Come next year, he's going to win with a land, landslide, whether they like it or no. That, that is the energy that keeps me going. When I'm done with that, I sleep well, well for night. Nothing they shake me. Now this will be day. If not to go fight, no go. It's all right. One way or the other, we're going to go anyway. But we must, we must get it right. This is the only chance we have Nigerians, I'm talking to the house boys. I'm talking to the to the gardeners, to the drivers. That the, you people, all you domestic staff that they treat anyhow. I'm talking to you. Come out and vote with your PVC. Vote for your freedom, Nigerians, and say and stay away from tribalism that is not giving you people any ten. It is only digging more, it's only digging more holes for you to fall into more and more. I not send anybody, Papa tribe. You do anyhow, you see anyhow. It's just that simple. We are supposed to live in this world in the space that we've been given in peace. Let me live in peace. You live in peace. 
Thank you. I yield. Thank you. Thank you so much, Omoye. Uh, Hecho, what keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night is my sons, my daughters, my brothers and sisters, that they've stolen their destiny and given their poverty and lack and hopelessness. Who turned there to Yahoo Yahoo boys and girls? Who turned there to Olosho and hook up girls? Who turned there to kidnappers? Who turned there to banditry? Who turned there to Boko Haram? Until we 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 do it right, so that our children can fulfill their original God-given destiny, we are in trouble. Let me tell you, we are sitting on a time bomb. The only thing that suspended it for now is that the people gravitated to help it out. Be if that which of the people is not did not come to pass in 2023 be ready for bloody revolution and i hannah jebare obukoko i will lead the fight enough oh. is enough okay. thank you so much kulata you're next uh nothing nothing keeps me up at night uh i'm fine i sleep fine the bottom line is we have four people that can be presidents. I've been hearing tribalism. I don't even know how we dwell in tribalism. I'm not in Northern. Last time I was there, I was pushing OB. I'm not Igbo either. So I know we have a potential of having four presidents. In my own best interest, I need to know what exactly each and every of those four presidents stands for. Basically, what have they achieved? What's their pros? What's their cons? What's their plan? I will go and read that 176 manifesto. I'm a, I'm a sucker for punishment like that. I'll go, I'll go and read it. I've read the Tinubu 80 page. I'm waiting for Peter Obi's own. Alaro that you said Obi has a plan. I don't have a plan. I can't rely on uh, news interviews as a plan. I need something on paper. So I'm going to read it. So I want to live in every Nigerian space to feel what they feel, to know what drives them to support whichever candidate. Don't think everybody's head is directly in one place. It's not an echo chamber. People support different candidates for different reasons it's based on interest. So it's don't, not everybody can do all this righteous indignation or appeal to emotions. It doesn't work for everybody. Four people can be presidents. We need to know what each of those four people, what, what they're about. And you can make your choice. I'm not going to vote, but I need to know exactly what my country is going to experience, what are my relatives going to feel. So I want an educated uh, I want to educate myself and each and every candidate. And the best way for, for me to do that is to walk in their shoes for one week so I can absorb everything I can absorb about the candidate. And I'm better informed. That's how I take it. But I'm sleeping very fine. Thanks. Good All right. Th thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ovia, you're next. Um, first of all, come 2020, the election will be peaceful and nothing will happen. One thing I know is, who do any are? see any are? But they will peace. Now, let's start the time for my ranch. Let me, let, me, let me focus on where I come from, the southern Nigeria. I have a with the I, I, sleepless night with, because of southern Nigeria. One, we, we just read our Bible. We know the other side of our Bible. Bible tells us there's time for everything. You don't expect me to be complete the day with Bwari and the power. First year, complete second year, complete third year. They complain. When will you have time to ask simple question? Why? Why is this thing happening? Nobody they ask question because we always complain. How many of us know say the world biggest drone manufacturing uh, industry is situated right behind us in Nigeria? World drone, the biggest one in the world, America is doing. How many of us know? Any, anybody asking why? It could be for our benefit, but at the same time, it could be for our own uh, uh, people where they where they profess that they will be penalized again. That's an easy route. When when our government or anybody they do things to our neighboring country, ask question. Everybody will call me analyze how we would say our gas and oil to Ukraine to every Europe and everywhere. Where are those garden pipes going to pass? Now here, no best land. If you don't ask, if you don't establish a relationship with this your neighboring country, 
How are they going to allow you make sure everything going well with you? Or when your enemies are coming to attack you, how are you make sure they're not going to open the border for them like that? But we don't ask questions why because we like to complain. I took up the easiest thing to do is to complain and protest. That's it. Anybody can do them. What the rich and poor can do them. It's not going to take us anywhere. Complain, complain, complain. When are we going to plan? I was complaining four years ago. Three years ago, I began to say, come on, we need to do this, we need to do this. Though. Two years ago, I said, come on, this is how this thing will be. Oh. This is time for me to put number together. I don't care where the president come from. I don't care. Because I can't change that. It is too late for me and you to change that, whether we like it or not. For one of these ones that will be our president. Guess what? Not be me and you vote that person in. It's not me and you vote. This is not our choice. They presented it before us, and we are bound to vote one in. And at the end of the day, they will work for those people's interests. How much money are you pay to put those people into power? Or do you think it's cheap? Because billions of dollars. How many money are you control? So I don't worry myself who or where it's going to come from. I don't have control over that. All I need to do is to pay attention and allow how they move. That's the best I can do. So if I come here, I need to talk All about right. what I have to analyze them. Not be to come and complain how they take me. They stand for that. I don't care. I don't complain. All right. Be on you at this point. All right. Thank you. Too late. Thank you, Obi. Uh, for fathers. Um, I guess um, foreigners keeping me awake. Um, I do sleep well. I guess I'm one of those people that can fall asleep on a ladder. So, sleep is not my problem. I think what worries me when I'm awake um, is actually so many things. Actually, I can't. You can't believe how many things that worry me. Because one of them is like, oh, what if um, um, Peter be selected and it's assassinated? Oh, the country will go off in flames. This is the. There are things we have. To, we take for granted that could easily happen because we are conditioned. To find ourselves in that kind of mess and this is why these type of discussions are important we have to keep things in measure i think what was that simbad was the one that said something about you know when people talk about war you have to be careful because you don't know what you are program you are setting yourself up for here and uh, for me i i worry about very very mundane things that most people take for granted and uh, because the first world war was triggered by one man's death and um, you know we've had wars that have been triggered like that even on the continent, I think the Rwandan one, on the, I think Congolese one was triggered like that too. So we have to mind the kind of language we use to describe these things. And um, we always have to keep an eye on the dial that we don't want to go backward. We are to be marching forward. No matter what, if one man falls, the important thing is that people have the vision to march forward. We, can't, we have to do this for the future generations. And uh, there are... I think 1,000 years ahead, we, we can't even see beyond February. We really need to start projecting ourselves and seeing ourselves in the future because that informs the way you make decisions. You see what I mean? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Rohan, you're next. What keeps you up at night? Nothing keeps me up at night. I'm just, I'm only worried about. Uh, insecurity, a lack of industrialization in my country, Nigeria. And I will also reiterate again, if we cannot, if we cannot stay together, if we cannot rub minds together, if we cannot think about the solution of our problem and we keep castigating each other, we'll go nowhere. In my language, it has been said, let me translate it. You don't agree with me, and I don't agree with you. Then we'll find ourselves in the West Bin. What language is that? Sorry. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let, me, let me explain. <laughs> uh, if I keep dragging you, and you also keep dragging me, then we'll find ourselves in the, either in the incinerator, or in a dump yard. So the only way we can we can progress is to sit down, discuss issues critically, rub minds, and find solutions to problems. And lastly, the issue of we have three, about four people coming up for presidency. We we'll like it or not, one of them must be must be the president. What do we do? How do we checkmate these people? 
these are some of the things we need to we need to be bothered about at the moment because they will, one of them will definitely go at the end of the day how do we hold them accountable because some of them have their plans already while some of them when they get there they'll be able to put things together again call some members form some committees and what have you so we the masses how do we checkmate them i think that should be one of our major concern now thank you very much thank, th thank you thank you rohan Adaro, you are next so I had to um, get a charger because I have some problems. I'm not sure if I'm being clearly heard. I'm going to go under the assumption that that is the situation. We could hear you, yeah. Perfectly. So um, we have to stay with the realist, reality of the situation. What keeps me up is we wake up, the next day after the next election and Peter Obi is not the president of Nigeria. We all are still going to be Nigerians. And all of you will be here. I think CM was on the meeting last night. I thought I saw him. I'm not sure. But I'm not 100% sure. But, um, I was there. I was there. I was there. I saw you. Okay. Yes, I was there. Yeah, I did. I was. Okay, good. We now are going to have the burden to lift the suffrage for the next four years. Be ready. You have to do a lot of overtime wherever you are. And that's the fact. God bless. Thank you. And finally, CM, what keeps you tonight? Well, it hasn't changed. It's still the high cost of living in Nigeria. It's getting worse by the day from a fillers I'm getting. It used to be 30,000, 35,000, a bag of rice. They've mentioned 45. Then I envisage giving our pension to exploit every situation. By the time you get to December 15th, people will tell you a bag of rice. If you have the new the new note, the new Naira note, maybe you get 45. If it's old one, they may say 60 to tell you that uh, you go and change it. Why not? You know, so really the cost of living is a nightmare. Is becoming and then it will get worse because of uh, during the farming season, most people couldn't get to farm, even the ones that planted, particularly in the areas affected by this flooding, they get washed off. I see, I saw a picture by East West Road in Bayelsa, then in which people were sort of peeling cassava. They said it's premature because of the rain, they have to quickly uproot them and then was trying to see if they could have, if they can do anything with it. I mean, we all saw it, not we all anyway, but for those. So such thing worries me. And this is a country in which ordinarily the billions stacked would have been used to import food. At least if Nigeria should say, even if they placed embargo on importation, this is a time to open up, let the people survive. You import food, trailer, ship load, at least for this season, there is justified because of the flooding. The people of Benue State couldn't go to farm, which is the food basket. Most of the yams eaten in the southern part are from Benue. So they couldn't farm Adamawa, Taraba, and all the rest. And even Bayelsa fishing everything. So people are even homeless. So this is the time. If there, if there is, if really we have a conscientious government and all these things, then you will see. Then against this background, you heard that a senator is having 40 houses all over the world. I mean, so that tells you that our people are really not conscious. I mean, they haven't got the conscience. They are really not uh, having the feeling of the people at heart. You don't leave this type of thing to chance. Nigeria should import food now, at least to save the people. It's just no matter how much, how many billion the seaport is there, go to Thailand, bring shipload of rice, because just to help people, even if between now until May next year, until the farming season comes, and then subsidize it so that to help the people feed. But I guess it's as good as mine. So it, it, it keeps me, it worries me. It keeps me away. All right. Thank you.
All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody that uh, joined us today. And there are so many people. Let me just announce that tomorrow uh, on okay. 90 Minutes. Mustafa. So, ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have the presidential, presidential candidates of uh, Action Alliance, uh, Major uh, Mustafa. We join us um, at um, the time changes today in America. So we are going to um, start at 10 10 30 a.m tomorrow instead of 11 30 in new york but it's the same in nigeria 4 30 p.m and um that's it i really want to thank everybody that joined us those that watched at home those that are on the comment section you guys are wonderful it's been um we set a new record today this is like seven hours i i, I thought they would cut us off at seven it's beyond what we paid for but cm thank you so much for joining us Thank, thank you. Thank you. For, for thank fathers, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Lata, thank you. Hecho, thank you. Alaro, thank you. Rohan, thank you. Thank you. Simba, thank you. thank you. Kene, thank you. And so many others that joined us. Thank and um, they are now here. We'll see you if you can join us tomorrow. And then next hey. week also, we'll see you. And thank good you good for good giving good us good 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 before, good before, before you come up. Oh, no. No, no, hold on, hold on. Now it's the CM. What, what do you want to say? <laughs> what I want to, you know, there was a, a message I sent to you. I said, uh, forefathers, Paul, I, and uh, who is the other chap? We wanted to do a mini se a seminar, if you any of the days, on how rich is how rich how rich is Nigeria really? Because last week during the after talk, we did a lot of analysis and found out that look, Nigeria. I mean, is it not California we said, or is it on New York? It's even richer than California. The whole uh, California is even richer. All right, richer. all right, all right. Let's let's do that after we're still live. And let me let me go off, and then we can do that. Okay, we can talk okay. about that. Yeah, yeah. Paul we're is, still live. Paul, I thought I, I thought you wanted Paul. something on air. Yeah. No, no. All right. Paul, Paul, is, Paul is not here. Yeah, I should have mentioned it. Uh,